Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck fucking cock! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Wednesday, May 31st. That is packed to the gills for championships. This sports program starts right now. Sports! Huge day for sports. Uh -huh. yeah. Not only because the American Gladiator documentary uh, part uh -huh. one was released last oh, night on yeah. ESPN. Hey, I'll tell you what. I was looking forward to learning about that. Six... Uh, 220 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. Bingo. Malibu and what he was up to. Mm -hmm. Hard times. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of those guys. For everybody. Hard times. Uh, I started, I started, I, I started dozing off a little bit in the middle of that thing, and it was another gladiator that I used to watch dominate mm -hmm. on the television, taking care of these average Joes who were coming in to try to steal the show, and they would be spearing them and looking like they were actual yep. Greek gods mm -hmm. out there. Yep. Oh my God, how are they on the the ring so much better than I could ever be? Look at this absolute stallion crew that are superhumans that we should all be trying to. Uh, that's Malibu there, too, in uh, L2. There. L2 is Malibu. He was a dog, okay? Malibu yeah. was oh, yeah. a little personality, too. Hey, he's not living the same American Gladiator life now, although he did look just as good. The teeth were fantastic. Yep. Mm -hmm. That American Gladiator documentary is not what I was thought it was going to be. Not at all. A little bit sadder than, uh, than <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Very that sad. was just part one. Maybe part two would be a little babyface turn. That's right. For oh. how great it was. Because mm -hmm. I'm hoping that American Gladiators will make a return at some point, but I do believe this documentary might work against that. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just for long-term effects, but we haven't got through it. But sports are still happening. We got the finals starting tomorrow. Here we go. For the NBA. And then we got the finals starting for hockey on Saturday. Uh, yes, yep. we do. And then we have every other game uh, happening, and obviously South Florida's a massive piece of it. We'll be covering it all as we cover all the NFL stories that are taking place in this beautiful offseason. The NFL never fucking stops. That's why the NFL is always up and to the right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And whenever it stops, you know, uh, I can't even project the time that that'll happen, and I don't no think idea. any of the NFL people are thinking that as well. We'll stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. But today we're talking about a couple other things. Mm, what's that? Baseball. What? what? Yeah. Yeah, baseball. What? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. We're, talk we're talking baseball. We got Alex Rodriguez on the program. Oh, yeah. A Rod. A Rod is on the program. Now, he I got a, you know, when you're dealing with somebody like A Rod, oh, yeah. you get a full yep. breakdown. Mm -hmm. Huge. Okay, here is approved titles, okay, for this guy. Okay. World Series champion. Obviously. What? C of A Rod. Court. Yep. Okay, that's approved. Yep, makes it's sense. Big. But we're dealing with a big fucking deal here. Oh, yeah. This guy obviously, uh, Known around the baseball community. He used to get good wood on the ball. Oh, All the time. Hitting bombs. He could fucking best. flip his hips, too, and do this whole oh, thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was so good in Seattle and Texas. And obviously goes to the big city, the big market, mm -hmm. Yankees. Yep. And he serves a one-year suspension for uh, taking juice. Yes. Which we all assumed everybody was doing. Yep. But certainly he was a big part of that whole story. He comes back every day. Gets booed out of the fucking building. Mm -hmm. Why? Now he's yeah. full baby face somehow. Yes, oh, yeah. Yes. What a ride this guy's life has been. I cannot wait to chat with him in about an hour and 25 minutes. And then in 15 minutes from now, we're talking uh, racing. Oh, okay. Really? Like F1? No, it's going to be tough to talk about it. That Monaco race is what it's normally like. And I don't know what you're all liking. Okay, I don't know what everybody's buying into. I guess just the cars. I like, I watch Jay Leno's car garage. Yeah. I watch the Pimp My Ride. Right. I guess this Hot Wheels thing is like Pimp My Ride, but with a Hot Wheels twist. Okay. With Came on last night after America's Got Talent. Oh. They're souping up cars, kind of, I just put a skate park in your trunk. I like that. Kind of happening. That's mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah, but it's on like prime time. It's a. Oh. I'm a big car guy. Is Love it, cars. Is exhibit hosting? Exhibit's not hosting. It's a. Uh, yeah. It's a. Uh, Simon Cow? It's a white. Uh, really? With a beard. The guy from The Voice? Little Dicky. Uh, it's not Little Dicky. He's also the host of Floors Lava. I remember oh, that guy, Brantledge Wood or something. Bill's this guy's number one fan. <laughs> 
What's your problem? Why do you immediately got to bury this? Because I didn't love the guy on Floor is Lava. I thought that was a good concept. It was a good show. And then I watched it, and I said, you know what? I don't like this guy. He's not the star of the mm. show, but he thinks he is. Yeah, but first season, it'll get better. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, oh, it'll boy. get better. The you're guy right. will crush it. I thought he was good last night was on he? it. He, I'd never seen this human before, though. Movie? I was very surprised that he had this gig, actually. I'm like, how the fuck did this guy get a hosting job mm -hmm. on NBC primetime? I thought he was pretty good. It's called Hot Wheels. It's, I think it's just called Hot Wheels. Mm. It's literally the old cars. They, I saw somebody put a Hemi in the trunk of, uh, I think, a Camaro last night. Ooh, so nice. They're souping up cars. Yeah. Pretty. Okay. It, it's a pretty... I enjoy, but I like cars. So you would think that, I guess, if you like cars, you just like watch racing. Is that why people like F1? Because they just like, that guy. Who's that Who's that guy? Who's it? Like fat I thought Kruk. his name was like Brantledge Wood or something. Rutledge some, Wood. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Rutledge, not yeah. Brantledge. I'm the, I don't know. I, I didn't know they were hosts either. I thought they were a part of the competition. I thought they were competing against each other. So this is the, this is a good, I think it's a good show. Okay. Saying all this just to say I like cars. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Guy, I like cars. Got a lot of them. Spent too much money on them. Mm -hmm. Whenever I said, hey, I'm going to get money, I want cars. Like yep. that is something that I want. I think Pac-Man pretty similar. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. But he's, I like houses and cars is what I was like. You know what? What do you, what do you want whenever you grow up? A big ass fucking house and a car. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm looking okay. for. Yeah. And then you, now you've seen my spending patterns. Few of these, few of those. Right. Couple of these, couple yeah. of those. Right. Go to a Meekum auction, overpay seventy thousand dollars for a what? Jeep. Yeah, just because you have a now you have a Jeep with a Hemi in it all of a sudden. So sure. it's like I like cars. That F one race was terrible. But what followed that F one race, and I assume other races are better. Okay. The Coca Cola six hundred. That was I'll go down to Smarty Arties on two eighty six. And I'll watch two people racing, Cruising USA, mm -hmm. and they don't even have actual cars there. Right. That race would be more fucking interesting than that Monaco race. Okay. <laughs> that bad. Especially if they're in the same race so that you can actually pass each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was like you were watching practice almost. Mm -hmm. And I assume it's because the track is too small, whatever. And uh, if you watch the Drive to Survive, you probably love all the people behind it. It was on the same day as the fuck the race, yes. which is the Indy 500. So you watch the Indy 500 following that F1 race, and I don't watch a lot of racing, but I was like, you know what, race day, I'm going to watch this Monaco race. I'm like, this is terrible. Almost made me think like, oh, I'm not going to like the Indy 500. Mm -hmm. Then you watch the Indy 500, it's fucking pff, wide open. We got people flipping upside down. We got yep. tires flying out of the place. We got people going 240 fucking miles an hour. I mean, it is <laughs> four wide. The guy that won, who's going to be joining us in about 10 minutes or so, Joseph Newgarden. Oh. On the final straightaway, he ran his dragon technique, which is like you're trying to make the person stay off of your ass. He goes all the way down into pit lane, like 500 yards before uh, maybe the finish line, and then cuts all the way back in front of this thing while the second place is trying to chase him down. Damn. Because they're all trying to like stay right on their tail. It was electrifying, and it was like this race is fucking fantastic. And I don't know how you watch that Monaco race in the morning, then you watch this race, and even think the two are comparable, but I guess F1 is considered oh, yeah, the creme de la creme. Yeah. Creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. In IndyCar, not so much. Mm -hmm. And even though the Indy 500 brings in 300,000 people to the city that we live in, and it's always electrifying, it's like, this Joseph Newgarden guy, I think, is a good champion for the IndyCar mm -hmm. like, series as a whole. Kid out of Tennessee, American dude, good personality, mm -hmm. attractive, properly jocked. Properly and he's a dog. Like he's dog. won their series a couple of years back and now he's in. So we're going to chance to chat with him. I'm, I'm very pumped to talk to him because I think, you know, and I haven't watched much IndyCar, haven't watched much F1. Sure. Just on one day, they competed IndyCar. Blew the fucking brakes. <clears throat> that's a big win. Off yeah. of F1. And yeah. I think that's a big deal. Monaco's like their Super Bowl. Is it? That's how it seemed like when they're talking about it, at least. All those yachts, everyone goes. It's like the the main event. They're gonna have to figure out how to like get cars to race each other. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that's yeah, time, <laughs> trial. time trial. Yeah, come on. And then you watch Coca Cola Six Hundred. You got Jimmy Johnson getting pit maneuvered. Yeah, by Ross Chastain. No, yeah. was it Ross? No, it was Chase, Chase Elliott. Elliott. Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott. Who was on the program, right? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. He's been suspended. Suspended. Yeah. They sent him in the sim bin. That's oh, bullshit. No. Bad guy racing. He's just got to win one race to make the playoffs, though. Yeah, but bro, 180 mile an hour doing a pit maneuver on people, that's not going to be well received by yeah, that's pretty Yeah, that's pretty dangerous. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let the boys race. Jimmy Johnson was not happy. He, he was holding an umbrella whenever he talked about it. Guy rear scooped me. I, I don't even. <laughs> this is certainly illegal. To a legend. This yeah. is to a fucking legend. Yeah. Certainly illegal, dude. It was, but that had action in it. Yeah. Right. You know? That F1 race. There was just nothing. There was nothing, dude. And they're going like, I guess they were going fast at some point because there were some straightaways. But they got like, it's a road course. Got to gear down. There's a lot of... Yeah. They're going like 
45 30 miles, miles an hour <laughs> around a bend. And I'm like, what are we? Don't love that. What are we watching here? I'd watch, I watch Zito play Mario Kart against some oh. people. Mm-hmm. So we got Joseph Newgarden in about nine minutes. Can't wait to chat with him. The talks table is here uh, at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Ty, I see you all yankied up today. Oh, yeah. Got to mm. be. Got to be. I love A Rod. I love A Rod. You're, are so you the, much. Did you really love him through the whole thing? Oh, yeah. There wasn't a lot of people that did, right? Oh, yeah. Yankee, most Yankees fans hated his guts big time because he kind of didn't perform that well in the playoffs. He did win a World Series with him. He won two MVPs with him. Um, but, you know, in terms of, like, you, you, when you look back, you realize, like, man, A-Rod was so fucking good. And the reason I really— Are you kind of a sellout right now saying this? Is it what no, people... no, I don't think so. I mean, maybe some people say that, but the thing that really did it for me is when he came to the Yankees, he kind of ingratiated himself right away because they were playing the Red Sox— Heated rival, hated rival for oh, you know yeah. hundred, hundred plus years, and he gets right into it. Fucking gets into a fight with the Red Sox catcher Jason Veritek. Like understood the the magna the magnitude of that rivalry and jumped right in. And a lot of people were saying you know like he doesn't really care. He's he's a baseball guy, so he cared about the history of that. And I mean he earned his pinstripes for me that day. And then on top of it, you know winning two MVPs, winning a World Series. That was the last time the Yankees won the World Series. A-Rod was on the team. He's become a baby face too, hasn't he? Big time. Yeah. yeah, not much of a fight, but yep. What's uh, that? He, he this just, still he, shot he, shows he at all? He mud. No, I mean, he slugged Veritek right in the face before this, but then, yeah, Veritek put his palms all over his head. Yeah. But, I mean, his mask hasn't moved, but, you know, a slug. Maybe. Quite a face wash. Yeah, I mean, quite a Veritek face wash in A-Rod's face. Fun. But what you're saying is he knew. Oh, yeah. What he was doing. Oh, yeah, because that happens a lot of times. You know, like a guy will either play for the Yankees or the Red Sox, and then they'll switch teams, and, like, you know, that's a big deal. That's like a you don't you do not do that kind of thing. But when guys come in, they don't always show, like, the same. It's like, uh, who gives a shit? You know, like, I'm making a bunch of money. I play for the Yankees or I play for the Red Sox. But you get a couple guys who really bought in and were like, you know what? No, fuck them. That's the Red Sox. We don't, we don't mess around with that. And you didn't think A-Rod would be that guy, but he was from the jump. All right, that's good to hear. Mm-hmm. And in post, he's gotten into the baseball coverage. He's like yeah. very good at the baseball coverage. Oh yeah, very good. Very Knows good. the baseball. Yeah, absolutely. See, I haven't followed his career much, although I know he's an owner of the Timberwolves. Mm-hmm. Yep. I know he's a big time real estate guy. He's got so much money. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. so, so much money. Yeah. He had success on baseball, but then I thought everybody on earth hated him in the baseball world there for a bit. That's why I'm so surprised he's back in the baseball media, and he's seemingly beloved by everybody. Yeah, this point? I think so. Well, and I think a lot of people realize after the fact now that, like, all the hatred he got for the steroids and the biogenesis stuff, like, I don't want to say it was bullshit, but they kind of put everything on him. Like, he was one of, like, 120-some guys who tested positive. I think they tested, like, 1,200 players, and he was one of them. But he was kind of the face of baseball at the time. He was the number one pick, like – unbelievable talent and a lot of people saying like hey you're good enough like you didn't need to do this but there were a bunch of guys who were unbelievable who kind of just skirted away from that and A-Rod kind of just got all the vitriol from everyone. I wonder what the mentals was like for him there. For a bit. You know, He's probably so pissed. Yeah. yeah. So you're telling me how many fucking people failed and I'm the, I'm on the cover, I'm mm-hmm. the only one? Well you're Alex Rodriguez it's a little bit different. He goes I get it but can we not say some other fucking names too? Because <laughs> yeah. remember wasn't there like a bait like oh there's more names on the list those will come out. They never really yeah, it's not- like the, the wave almost disappeared Appeared, and then those names came, and it wasn't really that big of a deal. Yeah. It was like A Rod actually took the blunt trauma of that entire thing for the entire sport, almost. Yeah. Kind of, because he was the only he was the only guy that was still playing. Like a bunch of those guys, you know, remember they went to Congress and were like mm-hmm. in in the courts and everything, and it was like Three McGuire Portland. and yeah. Rafael Palmero, mm-hmm. like guys who were unbelievable but had already retired. A Rod was still playing. And then obviously we saw the uh, the screwball thing with like Manny Ramirez, but he wasn't on the same level as A Rod. So A Rod really, really took it on the shins from a lot of people. That screwball doc. Yeah. Jeez. Unreal. Please. I mean, that was a Cocaine Cowboys documentary, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and put that thing together. Mm-hmm. Manny would cry at night, and then I'd have to call him and tell him it's yep. going to be okay. Tuck mm-hmm. him in. We slept in the same hotel room. Mm hmm. What are we, this seems like a weird. Are we talking about? <laughs> what are we, what are, we, is this a, are we talking about steroids here? What's going on? Learned a lot about the baseball culture. I, as a noob outsider, was like, all right, yeah, let's keep giving them steroids. I mean, they're hitting the ball further. Yeah. A-Rod was great at bat, but that's not good for everybody. Okay? Yeah. And that's not good for the players, which is all we care about. We'll talk to A-Rod about an hour and 15. I'm excited to get your thoughts on another story that kind of took place. One half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs is here and 14 year NFL corner Pac Man Jones back on this day. Appreciate you, Pac. Yeah. Pac, you hear about Aaron Rodgers and Gutekunst. Have you heard about this entire situation with the Packers? It has kind of become a conversation, mostly because when Aaron came on here and told the whole story about what happened, darkness, post-darkness, thoughts about retirement, 
coming back to play, conversations between the Packers and Aaron Rodgers, the way they were going, how they changed. I mean, that was huge. It was rippling news because everybody thought, you know, the way the Packers were going to move on from Aaron would go in a fashion. But the way it was kind of laid out was like, this is seemingly what Aaron was talking about, like had been happening for the last couple of decades to a lot of vets who have given a lot to the Green Bay Packers organization, have done a lot for the Green Bay Packers community, and also appreciate the Green Bay Packers as a whole and being a Green Bay Packer. It's almost like they're there's never really been a smooth, you know, communication line. So Aaron said that Gunther Kuntz's line, line of communication changed completely pre-darkness versus post-darkness. Right. Almost as if Gunther Kuntz was thinking to himself, all right, when this guy's fucking Amish, <laughs> mm-hmm. let's really think about what we want to do. And there let's have go. no fear of anything that could possibly happen because the person we're thinking about won't know. Right. What do you mean they won't know? They're actually in a fucking hole in Oregon with nothing. Yep. They, Nothing. Not even light. Not even a phone. The only time they hear any noise is when there's food coming. Uh-huh. 6 p.m. every single day. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing. Is, so let's really think about this. And allegedly, the way it sounded to me, and I might have been wrong with the way I was taking it, is post-darkness, before darkness, take your time. Whatever you want to do, we want you back. Post-darkness, nah. We don't want you. And it was there was no communication, basically, that took place. And Goon Goons came out and said, I tried to reach out to Aaron. It was impossible. We're moving on. Right, gave his kind of side of it. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people that are Packers fans are like, thank, thankful that Guth Koontz gave his side of it. Mm-hmm. Kind of, everybody kind of was like, all right, that could have happened. Right. And then we just kind of move on. Whatever. Because then there was the FaceTime thing that happened. Then Guth Koontz answers again. Then Aaron now does an interview with Matt Steinman, who is the Packers beat reporter for the Athletic. For the Athletic. Big deal. Steinman is oh, big yeah. deal in the entire Packers universe. The only reason why we know that is because every time he reports about what happens on Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, it does big numbers. Steinman has real say. So Aaron chatted with Schneidman, right? Yeah. And that article dropped today. Yeah, this morning. About the whole situation. Is this going to have any ripple effects in the Green Bay Packers world, or what came out of the interview? Uh, I don't know if it'll have ripple effects. I think it kind of everything played out the way we thought it kind of would. Like, we we knew that, hey, there's there's a lot of skeletons in this closet for both these guys. Like, they clearly didn't like each other, but Rodgers was still in Green Bay, so they had to make it work. Um, but, like, the big takeaway was, yeah, with all the stuff with um, Gudikin saying, like, hey, I tried, I tried, I tried to contact Contacting with him, I I couldn't I couldn't get uh, I couldn't get him on the line, you know, and so we had oh, to shit. make the decision to move the other way from there. And Rogers basically said like, "That's bullshit." Like anyone yeah. knows that Full of shit. where I live in California, like I have no service on my phone. Kind of what he told us, like I have no service on my phone. If you want to get in contact with me, like my close people know, hey, you have to Facetime me. He was like, so he he wants to make it sound like I ghosted him. He tried to reach out a bunch. He was like. That's not that's not the case. This is the life that I live. Exactly. He said people know like if I like you, we'll talk. And he kind of just said that like he's he's trying to do a, a version of revisionist history because they were ready to move on and now he's trying to make it sound like Rodgers was kind of the one who who planned this whole thing and kind of forced his way out and Rodgers basically said like you didn't like that we didn't communicate a bunch that we didn't talk a bunch because Rodgers did mention in the article too. Uh he said that after, uh, remember when he kind of went scorched earth right after he came back and signed the contract, he did that like 30 minute press conference and kind of laid out all of his grievances and all the issues he had with oh, yeah, everything yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Packers. He said that, you know, he like really challenged the front office, like, hey, I want to change the culture and we need better lines of communication here. And he said, Russ Ball, who's the VP of finance, I think, he said, I feel like he's the only one who really took that to heart. Like he he actually tried to, you know, he was he was around more, he was present more, like he was... He was willing to listen to what we were saying. He's like, I don't really feel like the other guys took that to heart at all. So they kind of, the the entire time, they wanted to move on, and now they're trying to package everything as like, oh, this was me forcing my way out, when in reality, like, they knew all through this season, especially with the Packers not making the playoffs, that their plan was to get him out of there and move on to Jordan Love anyway. Fascinating just learn more and more. It's all ugly, you know. It's yeah. bad. It, it, I, I think the reason why it's so important to set the correction right now for both sides Is because how the Brett Favre thing ended. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and how the Packers were. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. 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 We're good. How about it? Yeah. Are we sure? Yeah, we are. Yeah, no. We're We're allowed to talk about whatever, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Now's not the time. No. <laughs> no, no. But if anything else, right. every, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But when the Brett thing left, everybody kind of judged the pack for how ugly it all was. For sure. Mm-hmm. And fans got pissed off yep. about it. Yep. So them trying to be like, no, this guy wanted to leave, keep them baby face is certainly the right thing. And Aaron's like, I, I feel like I've built up. 
I got a lot of love for Green Bay. I've done a lot for Green Bay. I'd like to let you know, I didn't fucking just want out of here. It was very, it was a interesting thing that happens, I guess, whenever there's a lot of money and a lot of competition and egos and pride and legacies mm -hmm. on the table, which is certainly what this is for Gutekunst. Yeah. In, in pack, like, as we look back on this five years from now, if Aaron goes on to have success at the Jets and Jordan Love has success, it'll just be like what the, Col what the Colts and Broncos had. When Andrew yeah. Luck and True. Peyton Manning happened, it was like, yeah, it was probably the right decision for both sides. Now... Peyton's better than he ever fucking was. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Three more touchdowns than he ever played. Had a broken record and won a Super Bowl and everything like that. If he's on our team, we're probably doing that as well. Certainly not fun. It uh, does suck. Yeah, but Andrew tough. Luck had success. Yeah. So there's a chance that that takes place. We remember this for nothing. But the, all this drama and petty shit kind of coming out, I don't love it. Don't uh, love it. And I think it's going to be how you pronounce the shit. Um, just <laughs> be straight up, bro. <laughs> we, we've been listening to the bullshit since the, the uh, letter that he wrote. That was so weak for a guy that's done so much for an organization. That letter was like, all right, yeah, you know, we've been ready to move away from your ass. Boom, let's go. Yeah. There was no love or no nothing in that letter saying that he would have called or uh, had any feelings or anything in there. How about the Jets flying to Malibu? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. To meet with uh, Aaron. And Green Bay obviously did that the year before. Yeah. But when you're talking about moving on from a quarterback, you just paid hundred some million as one four MVPs and everything like that for you. You would think the conversation would happen, but hey, people hey. learn that they got cut on Twitter nowadays. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's a whole different world. It's a modern world. We all got to realize it. Good luck <laughs> to all parties in there. And uh, I can't wait to see what happens in New York and with Jordan Love. Speaking of new life and new parties, this guy got to experience a brand new party. Hell yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, although he has had a lot of success in the IndyCar Series, 2019 champion, he won his first Indy 500 this past weekend. And he did it in an electrifying fashion. Obviously, there was a red flag with two laps left. He was in second place, made a move, and then finished it off with a dragon technique where he almost ran into fucking pit lane Whew. before taking the checkered flag. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, your Indy 500 champion, American Joseph Newgar. Yeah! What's up, dude? Unreal. I love it. You, you, you're bringing back the memory so well to me, man. I love it. Hey, great to see you have success. Great to see you still crushing it. And great to see you again, man. How is life? You've been on a media tour, I assume, since you've won. You've been all over the place. Have you got to enjoy the fact that you're a fucking Indy 500 champion, Joseph? Uh, it's, it is incredible. But, you know, Pat, you know how special that race is. It's the hardest race in the world to win, and there's so much pressure put on it. You know, people, they, they build this event up and they say, if you don't win the Indy 500, then your career is a failure. I don't subscribe to that thesis, but that is the overall view for most people that watch IndyCar or motorsports. And so the weight, I just feel like has lifted off my shoulders. It's been amazing. It literally hit me a hundred feet before the start finish line. You know, I knew when it was going to happen, it just hit me like a ton of bricks, the emotion. I, I just can't describe it after, you know, trying for 12 years, it just made it more sweet. Okay, so you make that play, obviously, you know, to down the finish line. Well, the pass, you make the pass. Then you make that play to finish that whole thing. And I thought to myself, like, I guess it's smart because you're getting them off your air or whatever, and that's <laughs> oh, yeah. a slingshot that could happen. And I don't know enough about racing, but I think I comprehend uh, the whole situation, why you wouldn't want the person in second and why you would want to be in second for a restart, I guess, with two laps is like the desirable position or third. You want to be, you don't want to be in first pretty much is what they said. And you, whatever the case, you going all the way fucking down there and then almost hitting a wall on the way back. Like that is bananas to think about as you're about to break down about a hundred yards further because the weight of the world is kind of, are you just locked in? Are you thinking while you're driving? Like when you go to make that move, which is absurd, by the way, when you're about to win your first Indy 500, are you just locked in, blacked out, or how much is happening in your mind while you're doing all that? Because if you sneeze, you're dead. Mm -hmm. You accidentally sneeze. You're, you're running into a... For those that didn't watch, he drove... While he's about to win the race, finish line is here. He takes his car... Turns that motherfucker basically sideways, mm -hmm. goes right towards a wall with another wall this way, and then comes misses the wall, and then boom, he's the Indy 500 champion. In the second place is Ch pa Pato, I think. I think it was pa Pato. I believe who it was. Who was second? Ferrucci. Ferrucci. Uh, or Marcus Erickson was right behind me. Yeah, he was going to go back to back. Sorry, Erickson was going to go back to back. There was a lot of change up there. Ferrucci was up there. Santino, great hair. This fucking guy. I just learned of him. Oh, but yeah. you, you make this move where you're going <laughs> towards a wall, like you're you're in, you're a nut job, bro. Like, are you thinking about any of that, or what is the thoughts of being safe while making very aggressive plays? 
Well, look, I was I was not trying to wreck the car, but it, it certainly looked that way. I, I can tell you this: I went into this race with the mentality that I'm either I'm either winning the race or this car is not coming back. I'm going to put, put everything on the line. I, you have to. This is the only way to approach the Indy 500. It doesn't matter. You know, it sounds cheesy. It's the Ricky Bobby quote. You know, you know, you ain't first, you're last. But it's Indy. That's true. No one cares unless you win the race. So when I was in position there, coming off turn four. Erickson still had an amazing run on me and it it very easily if I didn't do anything aggressive he could have slipped back by me before the line so I said I'm going to do as aggressive as a move as possible I did go into the pit lane entry um and then swerved back out and just tried to do anything to distract him it's my job to understand the rules and what I did was fully legal okay. a lot of people didn't like it and I understand that but it was legal Oh, people didn't like it. Who didn't like? It? I lo I thought you were a psycho. I, I, I didn't like dislike it though. Well, for what you, for what you said, you know, it's the safety aspect of it. You say, hey, you're about to enter the pitch. You shouldn't be able to do that. And in a lot of tracks, that gets enforced. That line where if you commit to the pit lane like that, you have to pit. You're not allowed to come back on the track. Um, here, they don't enforce that, and I knew that. So I was going to take as much room away from Erickson to get that slipstream and and you know try and beat him to the line. I mean, it's the Indy 500. You have to do anything to win it. Okay, so let's talk about the Indy 500. And you said that you don't agree with the thesis, but it is certainly one that is out there that if you don't win the Indy 500, were you even an IndyCar racer? Hmm. It is kind of a conversation, especially every Indy 500, the amount of celebration that the former champions get every single year forever, I feel like is a massive piece of it. Why is the Indy 500 the biggest, 107 times running? Is it the fans? Is it, is it just all everything that encompasses it? And what did this year mean winning it, obviously? Yeah, I think it's, you know, it's the whole deal that it's the biggest sporting event in the world for a single day. You know, there's 300 plus thousand people there and it's this like mythical mountain that everybody's trying to climb in motorsports. But I, I, I don't subscribe to the thesis that you, you have to win this race to have a successful racing career. It's weird. It's different than football in that, you know, you guys, when, when you're in when you're in season, you have a whole championship run up to the Super Bowl and you hope to make it into the playoffs and make it all the way to the Super Bowl and then ultimately win that. Whereas for us, our championship is a little is is different in that our biggest race is the sixth race of the year. It's not, you know, I've, I've got no problem with that. It's just a different structure to it. So even now that I won the biggest race on the calendar, I'm still trying to chase after a championship for the rest of the year. And I find the championship still to be a little more difficult in a lot of ways in that you got to be perfect throughout the whole season. You got to be more diverse in the way that you build race cars and then you you excel at tracks it's just that Indy it's only one chance every year to win this pressure cooker environment race and so I'm not taking anything away from that I'm the biggest Indy 500 fan that you will find but they're just kind of different categories and I don't like that people want to say you have to win that one event to be successful well I don't like the people say it but people do say it and you fucking want it bro. hell yeah <laughs> All right, so that's all. That's all. That's all that Done matters. Deal. Done deal. Now, in the in the hierarchy of racing, and obviously, when I moved to Indianapolis, I learned about racing as a whole. I didn't really grow up with much racing in my life, whether it be sprint, dirt, what NASCAR, what, what? everything. You know, drag, whatever it is, IndyCar. I didn't really know about F1 except for some of the drivers that I had talked to and had some beers with. Maybe it got brought up in conversation that they were talking about, and I kind of learned of it. Then this drive to survive thing happens, and almost takes like it takes off everywhere. I don't know if you saw this. They raced their Monaco the morning of you guys doing the Indy 500. Their race was terrible, Joe. It was, <laughs> I am not an F1, I'm not like, a, I don't, I'm not an avid race car watcher thing, you know, but I tried to watch their race and it's on the same day as the Indy 500. It was a bad race, naturally a bad race. How do the IndyCar people feel about the growth of F1? And what do you think about IndyCar's current status as a sport in Americana? Still 330,000 people coming to a race. Yeah. That is massive business. Ton. But in the whole hierarchy of racing, how do you feel about where IndyCar is right now, Joe? Yeah, I mean, seriously, I think our trajectory is good. You know, we are trending up where everything – you know, especially when you look at TV landscape, everything's kind of trending down. You know, the, the audience is moving to different parts. But I think IndyCar is on the rise again. And for me as a race car driver, I mean this. It, it is the most competitive form of motorsports. It's where I would want to race because me as an athlete racer, I make more of a difference with my skill set, with the way I interact with my team. That makes more of a difference in IndyCar racing than it does in Formula One. And that's not to take away from Formula One. 
Formula One, they, they talk about it as the pinnacle of motorsports, and it's really the pinnacle of motorsports engineering. It's a manufacturer's championship. It's about who has the best car. And when you show up with the best car, then you're expected to win. In IndyCar, I'm telling you, anybody can win the Indy 500 when you're in that race. You can be on the top team or the bottom team. It doesn't matter. You can make a huge difference. And so when you're a competitive person, I want to get paid well because I'm excellent at what I do. And when you drive an Indy car, you can prove your excellence. And and as a competitor, that's essential mm. to everything you do. There's some bars right there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there was some yeah. real – that was a great answer for that entire thing. Speaking of being able to win in, like, competitive juices, Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Joseph, obviously you know what you're getting into when you're driving any car, like how dangerous it is and, and what could happen out there. But – how do you keep your cool and kind of like maintain just like a, a level mentality when you see all these crashes happening? Like, does that make you think at all? Like, oh, I need to change how I'm racing or like, does that even make you like think about your mortality a little bit while you're driving? Like, how do you balance that when you see all this kind of chaos happening around you? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and honestly, you live in a duality as a driver in that, you know, on one track of your mind, you're com- you have complete care for everyone around you. I genuinely mean that. There's like a brotherhood within this sport in that you've got to take care of, you know, your fellow racer just because it, it there is so there's such high risk. When you're running an Indy car at 240 plus miles an hour at Indianapolis, disaster can happen. It's not just this, you know, sport that doesn't have any risk to it. I think that's what makes it exciting, but you've got to run with a little bit of care to your competitor. So when you see accidents like that, the first thing you think is, I hope everybody's okay. You really compare, you know, you care for your competitor. But that duality, on the other side, I also think, well, then I just make some positions up. I don't have to worry about these people anymore. I just yeah. gain spots. Yeah. So it's it's a really weird thought process that you have. Um, but that's, you know, that's sport. you you got to stay locked in. I can tell you at the end of this race, too, it's hard to not get emotional. If you're in a position to win it, like those red flags, I was sitting there and there's 330,000 plus people like like Pat's talking about and like it's hard to not get overwhelmed. You're living in your Super Bowl moment and you've just got to stay locked in. So it's a lot of work, you know, everybody you have to excel at that naturally otherwise you wouldn't survive at this level. Um, but it's hard for it to not, you know, get the most of you. A lot of conversations about those red flags, Joseph. And then I heard, I forget who the commentator was, which one it was, but they're basically like, the Indy 500 owes you nothing, is what they're like. A lot of people are like, ah, oh, they should have won. They, they, this should be a yellow flag ending or whatever. And whenever they did the red flag finish or whatever for the two two laps left or whatever, they're like, the Indy 500 owes you. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got to go win this thing. Like, I respected that. I appreciated it. And I thought it was an electrifying finish. Now, there was obviously what, 198 other laps that took place? But people are going to watch those final mm-hmm. two laps mm-hmm. always, forever, you know what I mean? And the moves that both you made and Erickson made and everybody made in those final two laps, that was good racing. Oh, There's people that weren't happy about that, though, Joe. Did you know that in your – were you expecting a red flag with two laps left, or did you think there was a chance it would end on a caution? Well, I was hoping we'd get a red flag. You know, the, the restart prior to that, we had a wreck coming to the restart, so we didn't even really get going again. And I couldn't imagine the negative impact that the fans at that place would have had if we just circulated for four more laps and finished on kind of a false restart. You know, for me, that would have been super disappointing. Um, so I was glad they gave us a shootout. You know, IndyCar has really prioritized trying to finish the race under green. And I can tell you this, when you win in that fashion – it means a heck of a lot more. I've won races under yellow. There's nothing wrong with that. In some situations, it has to end that way um, just because there's no way to restart the race. But if you can win under green flag, it's and, and with the way that we had to race with one lap to go, it's just that's what people showed up for. That's why they stuck around after the, after the fact. They want to see a great shootout to end the race. So I think IndyCar made the right call on it. Maybe it's just like the Indy 5. Oh, you know, that'd be awesome. Because the track is two and a half miles, right? Yeah. Right, right, two and a half miles. So we just we start two laps. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Boom. Mm-hmm. So Send the it. entire build up, I want to hear back home again <laughs> in India. I want to do the whole the whole thing. Mm-hmm. The whole thing. And then two Boom. laps. Yeah. See you at the finish. <laughs> in and out. It was I don't want every race to end like that. Because obviously, I mean to get a red flag, something bad has mm. to happen. And in, you guys are going, how fast? Two, four, how fast are you going to race? Because I know trials were like 240, or qualities people are going like 240 fucking miles an hour. Oh. How, fastest of all time. How fast are we going in a race? Yeah, basically. I mean, you're, you know, in the tow, like you're talking about, you'll pick up 10, 15 miles per hour. So, yeah, top speed, you, your top gear is 238, 240 miles per hour. <laughs> Damn. Jesus. 
You like you you get up. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Who the, Scott Dixon was that? How many years ago? Scott Dixon went flying, right? I mean, his car actually. Yeah, he turn one came on the inside wall. Man, he was very lucky if that would have landed a little bit differently. But yeah, he was probably twenty foot in the air when he launched in turn one. So what are you? You're a psychopath? You think all you all you people that strap yourselves to rockets? Like how how do you? It's uh, it blows my mind. I I hate heights. I hate flying. You know, they took me up in the Empire State Building to the very top yesterday, and I, I hated being up there. But I'm so comfortable driving a race car, you know, in concrete walls with all my other competitors at 240. Like I don't mind that one bit. But there's just like a screw loose somewhere. You know, it's the same as anybody. Like football players have this screw loose too, just in a different way. But you gotta you gotta be built for your sport. Yeah, not me. I mean, that's why I chose the kickballs instead of everything else. <laughs> Last question here for you from Connor. Yeah, Joe, were you expecting to go into the stands after you won, or was it one of those things where, like you mentioned, you had a lot of emotion going on, and then you looked around and saw everyone having a great time in the stands and said, fuck it, I'm going to go up there and party with them? Dude, I've been planning that ever since I was a rookie 12 years ago. I, you know, I, I've a, I'm a huge fan of the race. I've seen it run so many years. It's been an honor. And dude, it's a huge privilege just to be in this thing as a driver. I said, if I'm lucky enough to win it, I'm going in the damn crowd. And I've seen Elio climb the fence. I said, I'm going through the fence. I want to be in the energy. And so when I crossed the finish line, I knew exactly where I was parking that car. I was going right to the start finish line. I knew where the access point was. I just, I never thought I'd have the opportunity to do it. And I promised myself if I get there, I'm, I want to feel it. And the only thing that went different, and I, in my mind, I was like, you know, this is going to be amazing. I'll go celebrate with everybody. I'm going to, I'm going to run to the top of the, the stadium. Yeah. And I quickly realized when I got on the other side that this, this got a little out of hand. You know, could Quick. I die out here? Could I get suffocated? And so I celebrated for like 30 seconds and I had to get out of there. But it is incredible. I mean, you can't describe the Indy 500 atmosphere wise. Helmet on. See humans around you. Yeah. So many. You know, and they're all standing taller than you. So you're just staring at everybody's uh -huh. chest. Yeah, I mean it was it was obviously legendary. You weren't gonna make it past the fourth step. No shot of it. Congratulations on a big win. I know you have a busy day. Thank you for stopping by and enjoy the hell out of this year as the champion. Pat, boys, thanks so much for the time. Love to see you in studio. Keep up the great work. Hey, appreciate you, man. Take care, Joe. Joseph Newgard. Yeah. They're giving us the uh yeah yeah gotta go he's yeah, probably gonna yeah go. clean it's it up clown i assume he's got a lot of interviews does he i don't, I I don't seen know anything yeah. he's done no me either, yeah, what do you do no offense <laughs> empire empire state building there it is he, took him up. he rang the bell at the nasdaq thing yeah that's I right saw that. that's what, cool. why do people do that bruce you're a suit why why is that a thing because they act like it's a big thing but every human i've ever known that has really done anything in New York has basically done it, right? Isn't this, because there's 300, how many days is it on? Um, 200, 100? The, the, not the, the federal holidays they take off, so like Memorial Day, they were they were off then. They um, got somebody banging that thing every single day because then all of a sudden that dilutes it a little bit. Every day, it's the open open the market, 9.30 a.m. every morning. And what does that do? You get like a big media, put because they, every time somebody does that, I go like, that's cool. A lot of it, uh, I don't know I if don't they- I don't know what happens <laughs> yeah. though. I don't know if it's the closing bell or the opening, but a lot of it's like if you IPO that day, like WeWork, you kind of take over the stock exchange, and then it's Steve like Steve, yeah, yeah, hype up the stock, get it pumping. Got it. Okay, so All maybe IndyCar jazz. has a stock or something like that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, they probably sponsor. Do. Maybe one of his sponsors has a stock. Yeah. He's yeah. over there because he's doing a full media run. I, I'm, yeah. I haven't seen any of it though. Just that, right here. Yeah, and, and it was awesome. He's. Gr See how fucking handsome he is. He's, he's, good, he's good for Andy Carr. He's like, yeah. he's like if you mixed uh, Christian McCaffrey with Hangman. Yeah, he does. Well have, said. Yeah, yeah, that's a well great said. analysis. Thank yeah. you. <sighs> and Hangman and him, too. Both love Rockets. This is your savior speaking. Yeah. Oh, my God, what a movie. <laughs> Shout out Hangman. Shout out Hangman. Mm -hmm. Imagine he's not there ready. I know. Tom. Yeah, Mavs Rooster. Done. Yeah. Both that. done. Never to act hey. again. Aaron Rodgers ain't able to go see T Swift. No, no he's not. Because nope. Rooster's. Over the ocean somewhere. That's right. Yeah. South China Sea or wherever it was. Dead. Mm-hmm. Speaking well, there of, was no... did you see? Oh, yeah. See Spe the, yeah, speaking yeah. of fifth generation fighters. There's video coming out <laughs> of a Chinese yeah. fighter pilot doing a fucking Top Gun Maverick move uh, mm -hmm. in front of one of our surveillance planes that we got flying over. I would assume they think their airspace. Yeah, yeah. North China Sea or something. Bro, this plane turns that some bitch sideways. And then 
does a stare like you're watching fucking Maverick. Yeah, yeah. it was sweet. Does every country have these things? What are we? I sure hope so. What I saw was a, a fighter pilot do. who thought better and thought, I don't want to do what I thought was a good idea to do because if I do that, boy, oh boy, am I in fucking trouble. So you think that surveillance plane? He, I think the fighter pilot walked up to a bully and said, ah, I better think twice about doing that. Uh, out of there. So you think it was like a little dance, like, look what I can do. Like, one, almost wanted to, like, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Bow to your sensei. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I hope it was like an America's Got Talent where mm -hmm. they viewed, oh, you guys were surveying things? So the, this is a stage then, and they just wanted to showcase what was going on. I, I talked they, to a man recently. I can't, I'm not going to say his name. Both the first and last name have four letters in it. Uh, he said as of right now, He's got no worries. So if he's got no worries, I got no worries. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with you, Tony. Oh, Jack Carr. Maybe. I didn't. Bro, look yeah. at this video. Let's go back to the beginning of this thing. Put it on full screen, was too. It's rumbling. This yeah, I mean, is, we should, this is uh, who knows who shot this. We'd like to give credit. Please don't put a strike. So this is just like in Top Gun whenever we're waving, doing, or putting. Look at this fucker. Uh -huh. Fuck up. Turn that thing sideways. What do you think you're doing? What, bro? That's happening up there? We also don't know. There is a chance that TC You're right. is in a fighter jet above this, and that thing, that guy's, oh, shit, I got to fucking get out of here. We also yeah. don't know if that's TC. It could be TC. True. You know, Mission Impossible, are they still filming? Or? It was international airspace. Okay. Oh, so, so everyone good. can So be we're dancing there. a little bit. Up yeah. There. yeah, we're dancing. Yeah. All right. No big deal. Well, do -si -do. We shouldn't worry about that at all. Oh, yeah. That don't... hits my feet on the internet, though. Oh my, oh my God. God. <laughs> Bad news. I'd watch this and man, we're gonna have to shoot flares. I mean, we're gonna <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have flare. How, yeah. many, how many flares do we got in this entire thing? I thought I was in a movie right Well, now. and that our plane or whatever, whoever was filming on our side of the plane, we didn't did not look as cool uh, as what they were doing too. So that was the big one. Yeah, we got our basic ass surveillance Bingo. plane mm -hmm. up there. Just yeah, Wright Brothers. Things like a hawker up there. Yeah. And they're zooming by. And then they're just dancing. And then that person, who was ever flying that plane? Mm -hmm. They're landing on a carrier or whatever. Wait till you hear about what I. They got nothing. Yeah. I just fuck in. <laughs> yeah, I turned. I did our little whirly bird, <laughs> and then gave a. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Survey this bitch, and then I'm out. They when'd you do that? Through. Four minutes ago. <laughs> just four minutes ago. <laughs> They're up there. Well, should we send more up there? They. We probably landed immediately after, right? I hope. Turn around. Go back. Because you never know. We're from the U.S. of A. Yeah. Well, what we, is it? What, well, is, yeah, what look, is that? Look, we run I, towards the fire. No. I what are you talking about? Sounds no, like communist corner. Fight zone. If you're in North China and you're driving it was a the South China Sea. Oh, excuse me, South China, and you're flying a security drone, security plane, and you see a fighter jet from China <laughs> fly in front of you. No, you don't want. Oh, four you're saying more. you brought a rock to a gunfight? Bingo! You don't want. You're not bringing a security plane. Well, to, we didn't now, run. if they called, if they called TC, <laughs> exactly, scramble the jet. Yeah, TC, that, that'd be one Rooster, thing. Hangman, they're on ready five. To be clear, I don't think our surveillance uh, plane could run from said. No, no, probably not. Even not. Close. No, no. Probably not. Uh, we kind of like. A, is this a? Is this a brown bear? Is this a black bear? Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to act dead? Exactly. Are we supposed to run towards it? Ah, Make yourself big. Ah, yeah. Flop the wings out, maybe. I think they were trying to assess that. Mm -hmm. What type of bear is this out here? <laughs> Happy everybody seems to be okay, though. Yeah. Yeah. And congrats to technology, even though it's not ours, being able to certainly do what they do in the movies. Yeah. So. UFO front has been pretty quiet. Actually, there was supposed to be a briefing at 10.30 a.m. today, I believe. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was I was tagged in it by someone on Twitter. Mike Gallagher? Bro, he yeah. sounded so professional. Right? <laughs> yeah. Did he uh, not? It was supposed to be a briefing. The NASA's UFO research team to brief the public on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m., according to the Wall Street Journal. So that was this morning. I all right, let's all about. keep our eyes peeled. That's right. Okay. okay. But, <laughs> but if I'm seeing that plane do that, and they're telling me that that TikTok thing that would be pulling like 10,000 Gs going however fast it would be going. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that might be international mm -hmm. aircraft or whatever. It's like, well, if they got that, do, do we? Do we? Yeah. Do we got that? That's bad news if we don't. I'm assuming we do. Assuming we got that. This video is 17 minutes, so. Uh, I'm sure yeah, we'll they said a lot. Let's go to some sports <laughs> news. Shout out to Joseph Newgarden winning that whole thing. Let's keep an eye out for the aliens. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Eyes to the sky. Yep. We're sports people, but also. If extraterrestrials start walking around, let's fucking keep everybody informed. You see something, say, say something. something. Amen. Well, say, we, ain't that right, Pac? See maybe some. we could use a good say alien some. attack. What's that? We could use Tony. a good alien attack so that us. Tony. Tony, what the oh hell's wrong with us? So that us. You're saying off. a lot of things, Tony. I'm saying it will unite the world. We don't have to worry about the Chinese fighter jets anymore because we're fighting together. Yeah, you're right. 
You're 100 percent right. Thank you. I don't. But we don't need so. to we're lose not, anybody. Yeah, yeah, we're not sure. I that's don't a battle. We can win. You know what we need? We need one motivational speech from one great motivational speaker. Who's yeah. that? Michael Lombardi, Gary V, the president from Men in Black, not Men in Black, Independence, Independence Day. Day, Bill Pullman. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are there any unifiers out there though? No. I, no. Honestly, is there any? I, I don't even know if an Charles Barkley attack would do it. The Charles. Rock. He's the only he, one. He might. I think you're right. <laughs> yes. I mean, we do have one unifier that would help, especially in that situation. You know, Joe Cena. He could come in and basically unite two of the strongest countries. Yeah. In the world. Concur. Well, yeah. yeah. Him he and the can Rock. speak fluent both Mandarin. Mandarin. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cena and the Rock in the middle of a ring, and they're both cut in promo. Like, so basically, the like, Rock yeah. has a United States shirt on, like we had the Heat one on whenever mm -hmm. Cole was wearing the Celtics. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then John's wearing the China tank top. No, I think yeah. he's U.S. too because he did announce the killing of a Bin Laden. Yeah. So he's, he's known as split jerseys like Kelsey's mom was wearing. Yeah. Or like the inside of his. I think they're both, in this situation, I think they're both wearing world uniforms. Well, you know, then they're a tag team? Well, if he wants some cheap heat, though, Cena could do like the old Sting wolf pack and rip the NWO shirt, and he's got a, a Chinese singlet on it. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's coming hit, down from the Raptors. From the yes. Raptors. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. He's actually getting dropped in from that plane. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cena hops out the bottom of it like that plane's taking a shit. Yep. <laughs> Boom. And he. All right. That'd be sweet. Anyways, we want everybody to come together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's all make the world a better place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's all have best intentions for everybody all the time. Exactly. That's what we would like. Yes. Yes. And let's just assume that everybody else feels the exact same way and that love is everywhere. It's not that Especially hard. Especially in America. It's not that hard. Hell love. yeah. Love. Yeah. Let's have a good time. So I don't look too deep into things because then you start getting real miserable and scared about everything. Yep, but definitely. So let's yeah. just live in our own world. Shout out mm -hmm. to the Island Boys. Stay in your lane. They are not. Oh my God. The Island Boys were not with that's F State. Not that's true. not them. Boy, oh boy. All right. That was them. Yeah, no, they, they came out and said it's, it's not that's them. Why oh, named, really? That's why they're named the uh, Island Boys. Unless it's a, a, a good AI photo, it looked just like them to me. Yeah, you're telling me the two kids known as the Island Boys didn't want people to know. Oh, this is cute. You guys are Maury Povich. You guys are guessing who's the dad because of pictures of children. Look at them. They look. look exactly like the Island Boys without tattoos Hold and on. weird fucking hair. Like Tom Come Brady. on. Anyways, there, this is a real story happening in yep. the current moment. <laughs> the Island Boys. <laughs> they took over the internet. Everybody quickly hated them immediately afterwards. Yep. <laughs> they be, found themselves as heels everywhere. That's how it goes. They did not. It, bingo. Yeah, That's how the internet the goes. Picture. They're getting booed out of arenas. <laughs> uh -huh. Haven't heard from them in about a year or so. No. No. They did drop an album, and now they're potentially... <laughs> from Epstein Island Boys <laughs> is what the internet was saying. I mean, if they wanted to kind of double up on that success, just a quick remix, like, I'm, I'm going to just smooch Jeff's dong. Like, if they just did something like that, <laughs> Can't say that would be that would sick. Be it would be. They could do a whole album. Strike the worst. while the iron top. <laughs> yeah. Hey, real quick, how come we have <laughs> not learned, how come we have not learned anything about oh this? This is like the worst God. human of all time, they're saying. One of the worst, like, of oh, all yeah. time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Believe me, conspiracy Twitter, conspiracy Twitter's been very hot. About the, you know, the lists and all these things and how they're... Yeah, I know Aaron like, brought hey. it up in our fucking interview. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. We got 490-some thousand people looking, hey, you're so... Uh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, is that real? We don't... We have no idea. If, anyways, the Island Boys are coming out saying that is not, not that, true. Which is good. Although that remix has likes. I mean, they can certainly get some quick clicks if they like. Right. And maybe Babyface, too, because if they were... Obviously, some terror. We hope everybody, once again, we hope everybody's all right. Yep. AJ will know more. Bingo. Can't wait for him to join us in about 11 minutes. Got a good question about uh, David Bakhtiari for mm -hmm. AJ Hawk. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that. Uh, the Vikings have paid off their debt on U.S. Uh, Bank Stadium 23 years early. We'll save the Minnesota taxpayers $226 million in an interest loan. Wow. Wow. Man. Wow. That's very nice of the Minnesota Vikings obviously doing that. Good for business for them, too, because now they outright own the stadium. So any events that take place there, they receive every single dollar. Don't have to split it with anybody, I would assume, because that's how public funding goes. Yeah. Well, if we publicly fund something, then we're going to want a piece of it. That's just how it goes. If our money's in there, then we're going to make money back off of yeah. that thing. The Indianapolis Colts do not own this stadium. The city of Indianapolis does. So whenever there's a potential neutral field AFC championship game that needs to be scheduled. Mm -hmm. And there's also a volleyball tournament in Lucas Oil Stadium. Of course. It's not the Colts voting on whether or not it's the AFC championship or a volleyball tournament. It's the actual city of Indianapolis voting on whether or not it's a volleyball tournament or the AFC championship game. We all saw how that went. Mm -hmm. Indianapolis voted for the volleyball game, even though the neutral site game never took place. It would not have happened in Indianapolis, where it allegedly could have taken place, which would have been really cool for season Very ticket holders cool. Very. and everything like that.
like that. But Indianapolis didn't have that thought. Indianapolis thought to themselves, are the Colts going to be the AFC Championship game in the next few years? Maybe. But we do know this fucking volleyball tournament is going to be here every single year for at least the foreseeable future. And there's 40,000 people coming to the city. So they make that decision in their eyes. That is the good one. Where now the Minnesota Vikings get to make every single decision about their building. And I would assume that's going to end up being very good for them business-wise. I hope everybody starts doing this, Pac-Man. Especially with how much money is being dumped into the NFL. You can get rid of your debts quick. And if you think about business, getting rid of your debt means a payment out being taken away. Now you get to keep all that money. I love what they're doing here, Pac-Man. Yeah, and that means business is booming for the Vikings. Mm -hmm. And another thing, for Minnesota, le uh, weed is legal. So congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. It's a, it's a great day. Today? Yeah. 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 They passed today. today. Congratulations, today. Minnesota. How about yeah. it? There he is. <laughs> Mr. Minnesota. There he is. There he is. That's the guy. <laughs> The governor of Minnesota mm. signed a marijuana legislation bill into law. Minnesota becomes the 23rd state to end cannabis prohibition. Hell yeah. Way to go, guy. How about it? Good move, big man. This guy fucking said he'd do it, and he did. And he did. He did it. Didn't he? Yes, he falls he did. through. Tim. Tim Walls uh, yeah, said, big walls. Let, me, let me figure this thing out. I'm going to break down these walls. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm Tim Walls. Mm -hmm. The walls that I'm speaking about right now, cannabis prohibition. Because if you go back to the early days of cannabis prohibition, it was legal, legal, legal. Then he couldn't take it across state lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that became the big problem. And then they started cracking down on in-state. And then all of a sudden we lose out on a natural plant that has a lot of benefits for a lot of people on it. Yes. All because there's potentially a political agenda behind it. Nope, I don't want to get into it. Definitely. Don't know anything about it. I think you can say Just watch some documentaries about it, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But now that we're getting more science and studies, and obviously people are seeing the effect of some pharma stuff, not all pharma stuff, hell, I take Advil PM every single night. That's right. Yeah. I know that there's some good out there. I ain't. Mm -hmm. It's like you're crazy. But there's also a lot of things that happen and take place where maybe there's a natural ailment that's been around from our earth for a long time that can kind of soothe some of these issues that we have in society. And if we regulate it right, monitor it right, we can also profit from it. Holy yeah. shit. Whoa. Whoa. Congratulations to Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. What a win. Fun fact, that guy was actually uh, Ragnar the Viking who, ran out, who rode out on the motorcycle for Vikings games before he became the governor. Well... They would say that Ragnar, the original Viking, mm -hmm. was a poor negotiator. Yes. Yeah. This feels like this particular move would take a good negotiator, so it appears as if he got Ragnar got a lot better at negotiating. Like Rainwater. Well, Rainwater needs to get a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, Rainwater's, you know, he's on the ropes. Rainwater's the guy in Indiana that's trying to do it. Mr. Walls. Big Walls. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Walls, dude. Yep. Mm -hmm. But he ain't ever going to get voted in, I don't, I don't think, with the Hawaiian shirt he wore last year during the gubernatorial debates. <laughs> yeah, no But chance. you talk about uh, that and also $226 million not having to come out of taxes. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a big money day for Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. yeah. huge. And I think they, um, the NFLPA thing with the facilities and everything, like they just built a brand new, beautiful uh, like practice facility and everything. So things are really looking up for the Vikings. Something just happened with the NFL and $41 million in the NFL PA. You sent something. Was that yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw a headline. I, I was up this morning. Tone was up this morning. It was like 5-something a.m. Group text gets active all of a sudden. It's Tone Diggs sending shit in. And then one of the things he said is the NFL, the NFL PA, in a payment of $41.3 million due to crypto collapses is still yeah. due or on the books for somebody. I don't know exactly what it was, but I saw you were diving into so, it at 5.30 a.m. So, so, so this must, must mean something, Tony. Well, the baby's about to wake up. So I'm, I wake up just so I could wake, like, open my eyes for like 15 minutes before I'm right into it. You know? Smart. I'm at the stage where we're still up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And wife kicking ass right now. Um, but the night. headline, the headline caught my eye, eye that the NFLPA lost or hasn't received $41 million yet because of the NFTs and, and all that, that whole crash. So in my head was, I fucking hate NFTs. What? The NFL PA, we don't know if we love them. So I, I sent in the headline and then I said, well, we do know. I don't know about you. <laughs> I, I do know. And then we started, I, then I started reading the article and it got a bit deep and in the muddy waters that I wasn't able to swim through. Um, so, so that's it's what lost out on is, is basically sounds like they're not being able to collect on it because uh, it vanished with Tom Brady's FTX. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I, I think that this was more like remember when NBA Top Shot was coming to the NFL? We still got his eye on. Yeah. I think oh, yeah, we had that person on our yeah. show. Remember yeah. how Dapper, smart they were? Dapper yeah. Labs. Oh, my God, he was so smart. Dapper Labs, that's what it was. <laughs> Dapper was... Labs fucked over the NFLPA for 40 million. What? Is that I... what you're saying? Yes, yeah. What? 
What? Allegedly? Wow. Allegedly. 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 That Allegedly. company Allegedly. or just like that idea? That guy? Because, yeah. I mean, when we were talking to him, I was. So it was one team <laughs> partners. Didn't have all the answers. It was one team partners. They were expected to collect or, or expected around 60 mil from Dapper and DraftKings. Of that, 41 mil would have gone to the NFLPA. And one team, the kind of third party, was unable to collect. Oh, so the projected yeah. numbers. This is all off projected numbers, not guaranteed numbers. Yeah, expected around 60 million. Hey, can oh. we uh, 4X those living pluses? Yeah, right. yeah exactly. Yeah, need to, uh, right? To get these people yeah, to really yeah. buy in here. Well, Tony 40, said. 40, 60 million, yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah, why not? Projected, projected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tony yeah, Tom said. Williamson just went for 150 bucks. Sorry, Connor, go ahead. No, no, my bad. Uh, uh, speaking of. 5x in numbers. Tony sent in something yesterday where people weren't 5x in numbers anymore. It looked like what I do. Where at? Uh, it was you know one of the one of the places out there that has sports talk on it. Oh, uh -huh. gotcha, 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 gotcha. I don't remember. I don't know either. Numbers are interesting right now. Though. Oh yeah, you got to scroll up. I think it was during the show yesterday or right after. Oh. The numbers are oh, incredibly yeah, gotcha, interesting. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. gotcha. Especially, oh, was it like the best day in history? Today? Especially time frames. Yeah, it was every day is the best day in history for everybody somehow. Exactly. I don't yeah. know how it works. <laughs> I don't know how it works. We're trying to figure it out though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd like to let everybody know. We are trying to figure out how everybody has their best day they've ever had all the time every day. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. That is yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah, it is nuts. Mm -hmm. It's a wild time. Twenty twenty three is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Seems like every day somebody's awesome. Somebody's doing better Never than they've ever done. Projections are always up oh. and to the right. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how that whole thing works. Uh, there was another headline. That had some more numbers in it about us. Oh, yeah, you're right. The break. <laughs> Did they nail it? I didn't see this one. What was my answer? They, it was in the article. Uh, um, interesting, I believe. It was, yeah, interesting. Well, numbers, numbers are interesting, I believe yeah. you said. Interesting number. There it is. Keep shooting. Keep shooting. Mm -hmm. He'll find his cheese. Yeah, darts on the board. Andrew Marshawn. Pat McAfee opens up about his $85 million ESPN leap. Huh. He asked me. He's hearing that that's the number. Can you confirm? And I said, interesting number. <laughs> I'll never talk about the actual numbers. Not my thing. But I do appreciate your interest in our show. And then I went on to answer all of his other things. Mm -hmm. Then the headline is... <laughs> Confirmed. Yep. It's fucking good. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a wild. Oh, one. yeah. So he took interesting number as, yep. Yep. That's the number. Interesting yes. number. Because <laughs> I am interested in how, like, these numbers, because last week it was 10. Right. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yep. Everybody What's reporting. What's the saying? Grenades, not horseshoes. Is that, does that apply here? I don't that, know. I, I think don't, that is the I same, don't, though. I, I think they're just guessing. I believe there is, yeah. like, quite a. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. This is interesting, though, that this has become a focal point of the conversation around our business. Mm -hmm. But it is also a focal point around my negotiation abilities and my business sense and my business smarts. So, like, when $10 million was talked about, I was like, all right, a little disrespectful. <clears throat> Just a little. little yeah. little disrespectful here. But also, it's not my job to tell people what we're making. No. It's our job to earn more than what we are getting paid mm -hmm. what? so we can be good business partners. Exactly. And when you're good business partners with people... Guess what happens with the next one? It's bigger. It's bigger. Yeah. 18. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe 10.5. Boom. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Power two's on the other side. Just keep throwing darts at the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. It is. Imagine really. if that was your gig. Pew. Headline. Mm -hmm. Headline of the thing. That's Marshawn, baby. He could do it like five more times and get so many clicks from that. Exactly. Every time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's and smart. Every, and he will. For real this time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that being the title of the story. Insiders. That's a wild thing. So unless somebody on that side, which I don't, there's only a few of us, I think. Right. right. That would be a interesting, bro. This is a weird life I'm living right now. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy world we live talking. Everyone's talking. Everyone's mm -hmm. talking. Our people killing us. Mm -hmm. Those people judging. Mm-hmm. Just wait until it actually happens, and yeah. a whole nother crew of people are going to hate us. That's yep. right. Those people are sharpening their axes. Right? <laughs> Five years, ten years from now, though, we'll look back on it and we'll say, hell yeah. Hell yeah. You sure yeah. about that? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think oh, it's no, Tim, I think, Tim Robinson. I think it's going to be, oh, yeah, you think that's going <laughs> to yeah. be our? Yeah. We should just gift that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Five years from now to everyone. I'll put that in the draft right now. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah.
I'm going to draft all, all of those of tweets right Answer now. all of them. Yes. And then just have them sitting in there yeah. and just... I'm thinking you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pumped for it. The Me more too. we learn, I have like meetings, obviously, and we have introductories and learning about stuff. And it's not an indoctrination. It's just like a, hey, here's everything that is available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's how you can explore the space of what ESPN has. Right. They have rights to everything. Mm -hmm. Every sport. Yes. Access to every team. Any of them. I got a text yesterday from um, somebody over there at ESPN, pretty high up. And they're like, lacrosse talk was sick today. Remember, anything you need at any school for <laughs> anything of that. All good. You can have you. I mean, if you want to commentate a game, we can fucking have. Anything you want to do with lacrosse is good. It's like every day there's a new one of those where it's like. Anything you want to do here, you're good. We are open to any ideas. Mm -hmm. It would be great to have them, actually. It's like, man. And you guys will set all that shit up? Yep. Yeah, that's what we do. It's like, okay, man. Sounds good. That's a lot better than Arlen. Yeah. Well, uh, I need sweet. to get a box truck. need to get hotels. <laughs> yeah. need to get internet. need to get a stage. need to get seats. need to get mics. need to get wires. <laughs> need to get Connor, you're going to have to drive 24 hours. Yep. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, so we, we don't have to do any of that shit. And you guys will handle that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We have people that want to do that type of stuff. It's like, oh, nice. man. Okay. That makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Are we definitely going to be on the air? Uh, yeah, we will certainly make sure that we're on the air. Okay. Whew. Okay. That's a whole another thing. So we just show up, and there's Mike friends there. Yeah. Whoa. Holy shit! Shit! That's awesome. Is now this how it with always gas. works? Is this how like people that have billion dollar operations <laughs> yeah. helping them? Is this how it goes? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking it does. does. Yeah, that's gonna be a little bit of assistance, I think. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be a good time. Hopefully, yeah. we'll be able to explore the space and do it right. And I think five, ten years from now, whenever we do, people will look back on all this and say, "What a joke." Mm -hmm. But I do appreciate all the interest and everything that's happening because I believe whenever you're getting ten hours of it, I just started thinking of this yesterday. We're getting 10 hours on ESPN a week. Yeah. That's a lot of time. That is bro. a lot. Awesome. Yeah, it is. That's a lot of fucking time on ESPN. Yeah. That's how Marshawn said. Nobody will confirm whether or not it's on ESPN. Okay. Yeah. We're going to pick up to go to ESPN News. Watch the video. <laughs> what is the... You literally <laughs> say it in the video. We will be on ESPN. ESPN. Yeah. Uh, Marshawn is like... I mean, he's been... He and I have been in contact, and I've sent him stuff, but like, I'll say things to him, and it's like, he just feels like... Nah, that's not that's right. That right. doesn't fit. <laughs> nah, that's not he, he not spicy not, enough. He must not know. Like, he's always like, yo, I'm literally the person that was, I guess he's not used to that, but it's like, yeah, we're going to ESPN News mm -hmm. for 10 mm -hmm. hours. It's going to be fun. That's what we're doing. Bring back ESPN Classics. <laughs> Let's get to a break, bro. Let's get to a break. I can't start talking about it because I get so excited about it, and then I immediately want to dunk in everybody's face because mm -hmm. that's like uh, kind of who I am, but it's not. that's not what we are. No. Not oh, we're wow. good times. <laughs> Never have been. We're good times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sports. What? Sports. All of the sports. Yeah, and all the other stuff. What's up, buddy? Didn't ESPN's PR tweet that it was on ESPN? Everybody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but if that doesn't fit, yeah. you know, the book, then he's right. not putting it in. That's not a right. juicy piece of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Let's get to a break. No, I go. We got a juicy piece of cheese with David Bakhtiari. We need A.J. Hawk mm -hmm. to analyze. Mm -hmm. He's jumped in the flip the turf conversation. I personally do not believe that the video has done any good for people to that. No. Don't want to put grass in. Oh, no. Namely I, the owners. I appreciate his angle, mm -hmm. but Western. I'm not sure it's going to help get the grass. But I need A.J. Hawk, good friend of Bakhtiari's, to explain to me how this will help. Because I like that more players are getting on board with this entire thing. Everybody wants grass. Let's actually do something about it. You know, a lot of people talk about situations, but they don't want to do anything and change it. Like, that is a real thing. So this, you know, the player's actually stepping up and saying, hey, we want to do this. We have answers on how to do this. This is what we would like to happen. That's good initiative. I think we need a different angle for some of these videos. We'll talk about that and more on the other side. Plus your phone calls on the 5 Energy phone line, 1-833-432-3663. da doom Alex Rodriguez joins us in 25 minutes as well. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take five. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some massive news. Our show is going to be entering its next phase. In doing so, we must say thank you to AJ Hawk for all of his time and contributions to the program. I'm sure I had a jolly good time, fellas. I'll see you later. 
I'd also like to announce that the toxic table will no longer be toxic. No, no, instead, there'll be the suit and tie table. Suit, yeah! We're not done. Tone Diggs, who grew up on the same exact street as me, will still be talking about gambling, but not on my show anymore. No, no, only on Hammer Don. Hell yeah! Yeehaw, buddy! And last but not least, our show will be moving into a block format. So the boys in the back will have their hands full with the A block, the B block, the C block, and the D block every damn day. Darn right. right. That was a lot. We ain't changing a damn thing. That was literally the starter for every conversation with everybody this up to something season. Dead middle, probably, yeah, of up to something mm -hmm. season right now. And I must say, it was a wild up to something season this year. Everything's moving and escalating quickly, and the only reason it happens is because you people watch. It ended with four significant offers from four great platforms slash networks that were all represented by fantastic human beings. It was truly an honor getting to talk and meet with everybody from everywhere. I appreciate you all. I think I relayed that message enough for you to understand that all. A lot of massive news coming out of this particular operation, hey. and it's the biggest. This is, this is, this is big. Hey. What I discovered in these negotiations that I represented us in is that our show is what a lot of these suit folk are now viewing as the future of daily sports talk. I think that's a really cool thing. A few years back, none of these networks would even give me a meeting. Now, we're the tip of the spear of what sports media needs to be in its next chapter. I'm honored that what the boys, our fans, and I have created has been studied, accepted, and ultimately seemingly appreciated by these multi-billion dollar networks with hundreds, if not thousands, of employees. It only happens because of all you motherfuckers that watch and follow along. With that being said, the rumors were accurate, but they didn't tell the entire tale. Beginning this fall, our show will be live on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ESPN's YouTube all at the same damn time. <laughs> It'll be Get Up, First Take, then our program on ESPN and ESPN Plus, and our show will be live on ESPN's YouTube as well. I wouldn't agree to a deal if we couldn't continue to hang out every day with the YouTube community. This show will always remain free to people. Just know that this YouTube thing here, this will always exist. It was actually a sticking point in some conversations with some networks. And now, our show will also be on in every airport, cafe, restaurant, house, etc., with the incomparable power of ESPN. Out of respect for that, we have decided that we won't be saying fuck nearly as much, but every other word is good to go. Shout out Michael Jordan in The Last Dance. They had a lot of success. He said fuck all the time. We won't be doing that because it's middle of the day, but everything else will be good. This guy's a loose cannon. Yeah. This part's important, though, for folks who were speaking out of pocket and rather disrespectful last week. Relax. We will still have full creative control of the program. I will never ever sacrifice this show for anything. Why would ESPN want to license our show and then change it entirely? That would make no sense. Why would I want to go to a place and have to change the program entirely? That makes no sense. We're too dumb to change. Jimmy Pataro and I have had incredible conversations about what ESPN can look like tomorrow and how it doesn't have to be what it looked like yesterday or even today. The program will never lose its soul. The toxic table is still going to be. AJ Hawk ain't going anywhere. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. And my intention was to play for the New York Jets. In the trenches, everything DB, Coach P's keys. Our show is still our show, just with a bit more reach and access due to partnering with the worldwide leader. In closing, we are insanely honored that Paisano, Jimmy Pataro, brand new president of content, Burke Magnus, and Bob Father, shout out Bob Iger, are blessing us with this opportunity to be a part of the next chapter of the ESPN family. We do not take that lightly. We're gonna work our asses off to make sure this is a success, not only because of those fine gentlemen's faith in us, but also so that other shows, just like ours, can see these same types of opportunities in the future. ESPN will still have its debates and super serious and riveting analysis. Who is on crack? 
But all parties involved agree that the time has come for a bunch of sports stooges in a Thunderdome in Indiana yeah! to sprinkle in some fun and some celebration of sport as well. I'm back in this saddle tomorrow. I can't wait to see you all. I will answer any more questions that potentially come in the next 24 hours. Let's continue to do some historic shit together this fall. Let's change the game forever. Cheers and thank you all. I am eternally grateful. Hey. Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! What the fuck are you doing? Fuck Boston! Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. To our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this winter Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. Hour two of the program starts right now. Sports are awesome. As is the toxic table at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt, who looks like Yankee Doodle Dandy today. <laughs> yeah. That's because we got Alex Rodriguez joining us early, eight minutes from now. Oh, nice. We moved it up ten minutes. We appreciate his Thank team you. and his people making a little bit more time for a good conversation on this glorious Wednesday with maybe one half of the hammer, Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs. You look good today, Ty. Thank you. Good color scheme, good beard, good cut, good, good cap. Yeah, great, great cap. cap. Good cap, pal. Kind of like Bruce's. The earth tones go... Excuse me, what? Kind of like Bruce's. Bruce's there's only room. It looks there's like only room for one similar. fucking cowboy in this time. Well, no, it, Bruce got a cowboy. He said, "You know what? I think I might try and take a shot at Tony's throne." In yeah. Nashville? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I learned the two steps. I so. saw you dosy doing down there. Was that your sister that was on the Instagram story with you? Yep. Yeah. She seemed to be much better than you were. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're a bit of a competition, but she she did end up winning. It is tough to do all. Yeah, four. yeah. I only oh, seen yeah. I only yeah. seen yeah. ten yeah. seconds uh -huh. of doing competition. All four walls is the tough part to me. Like doing a full song of the two. Step I found a bit much. So it's the electric slide with an extra kick. I Basically, believe yeah, is yeah. one of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different ones, yep. but We've... I have found myself on a couple dance floors where there need to be a little two-step, a little square dance. Like Kurt Warner. It bingo. Yeah. And there's a couple times I have succeeded. Down in Blacksburg, Virginia. Roanoke. Roanoke, Virginia. Yep. Outside of Blacksburg, Blacksburg Virginia, <laughs> where Virginia Tech yep. is. We found ourselves in an actual saloon. <laughs> actual saloon. Double fucking doors. Nice. Middle oh, yeah. of the hills. Hell yeah. It was fantastic. Copperhead Road came on. Ooh. And everybody that lived in the fucking town came busting through those saloon doors, I'd say. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Straight to the dance floor. And we're talking whole town dancing to Copperhead Road. Crushing. <laughs> One of the greatest experiences I've been a part of That's... came out of nowhere. It wasn't until about... Three, three verses, uh, maybe three courses in that I kind of got it. But once mm -hmm. I got the hang yeah. of it, it was an electrifying evening. And they it, told us they have, like, rehearsal night for the Tuesdays, yeah. yeah. Tuesdays and Wednesdays are rehearsal, learn the dances. Thursday, we got team photos. Saturday, Friday <laughs> night, uh -huh. when the noobs come in, yep. show time. Game Game up. Show time. It was awesome. Need to do more of that. Need to send this guy there one time. 14-year NFL vet. I assume a guy that can pick it up pretty quickly. I was watching him TikTok dance there at the beginning of TikTok, crushing every single one of them. Of course. Obviously, he's a rap icon, Pac-Man Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Pac -Man. Pac -Man. Pac you look super cool today. Obviously, yeah. Is that a onesie? Your face right now. It's not a onesie. What are you? What is your what problem? It just looks like it from here. Does oh. Ty can attest. It looks like it's just one big thing. It's sex fifth, bro. Oh. 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 Sorry. I don't oh. know what that means. What does that mean? It means it costs a lot of money. Oh, geez. That's, that means it's Sorry. not a onesie. <laughs> that also means for adults. Uh, joining us now is a man who is a Super Bowl champion. What? He's a college football national champion. What? He's Whoa. a Ryder Cup winner, but not a champion. Correct. He's Come the on. current champion of Ohio and the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, former teammate of David Bakhtiar, A.J. Hawk. Yeah! Bach and Hawk, how you doing, pal? <laughs> Doing great, pal. How are you? <laughs> Good. Bach and Hawk was a great, great combination in the uh, in the locker room, I'd assume, and 
You and he are obviously very tight. Let's dive right. Your tan looks impeccable today. Holy shit. I Whoa. Know. I've been everywhere, man. I, Johnny, I'm dying. It's so, it's so hot outside, man. Like, hot, I'm outside. It's not, it's not Jason for me. Are you popping top off when you go outside immediately upon entering the sun? Top goes off? No. I need to. I mean, I get really fried then if I do that because I my chest and like I, I never get sun for my the rest of my body. It's just neck and arms. Yeah, your neck is barbecue. Dude, neck is bad. Yeah, but the tan you're about to have in like 24 to 48 hours. Oh, so sweet. It's about to be so good. Yeah. For I've sure. made a decision this past trip to the sun that I went to after the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Literally travel right to the sun. Yep. Even when there's cloud there, the sun is very prevalent. Yeah. I said, new me, I'm just getting burnt. I'm just fucking I'm eating it. Yeah. It's not good. Obviously put on skin, Sun, sunscreen, sunscreen yeah. and I will have to deal with this later. But I am no longer going to live in fear of the sun. I've decided that I am going to seek the sun Man. and get some... What's that? That is bold. The sun is a big, yeah. tough son of a bitch. I never quits. Yeah, I wouldn't just I wouldn't just seek it out. I, Has I would, never relented. It's only no. getting bigger. It's never lost. Still. The sun is never really yeah, lost. Yeah, sun is undefeated. Yeah. Forever. Pound for pound. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The dog of dogs. Because no. yeah. that's yeah. the people living the on sun. Mercury. The sun. I agree, but there's no, yeah. sun. there's no sun. Good call. In Indiana for like six months. I know it's yeah. tough. It so is. it's True. tough for me not to want to go on like a bender. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Sun bender. That's yeah. the new me. Yeah. Go on the bender, but protect yourself. I, see, do you do you put on sunscreen? I put on sunscreen and I wear long sleeves. I'm not. Do you get darker? That, yes, I do. How, how like, like visibly different? Do you get yes. burnt? Pack? Does it hurt? Yeah, you get burnt? yeah. I get burnt. Yeah. Everybody get burnt. It don't matter if you black, white, whatever you is. You're gonna get your ass burnt if you stay in the sun. <laughs> exactly. I, I agree, but there was and it hurts. I forget. Oh, yeah. Bad. Head, Sucks. Have you skint up your nose? Skint up. Um, yeah. It's no fun in that. Why would Sun. you just say fucking? I'm just gonna take it. Yeah, because 24 hours later, 40, <laughs> tan is 48 hours fun. later, like my tan is gonna be so righteous. Sun you gotta, poisoning. You gotta be careful though. Now you got the jet ski because you'll get that, you know, that double glean off oh, yeah. the water yep. too, and that'll like turn it. Skin. Skin. Yeah, but you gotta wear that stupid fucking. Uh, you, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Super, yeah. Man. Well, you, need a, you need to find a cooler I am vest. I'm so mad about that thing. What's that? You need to find a cooler vest than like a camo you know, one. Profile yeah, go, vest. You should just get body on. I told AJ, and why am Low I wearing brown. this thing? I'm new to I'm new to lakes. Yeah, you got a skinny, do you have a skinny one? I have a motorcycle. I don't have to wear a helmet. Okay. But in my car, I have to wear a seatbelt. All right. Okay. Make it make sense. Everybody do their own thing. You're right for my safety. Thank you. Then I get on this jet ski. It's like, got to have a thing on. It's like, okay. Now I got to go buy one of these things. Mm -hmm. Buy it, put it on. It's like, what, this for if I go in the water, I'm not going to die? If you get knocked out, if you get knocked yeah. out cold and you fall in the water, it'll keep right. you afloat. Oh shit! I didn't you need think that. about that. Yeah, you definitely need that. Need that. <laughs> oh, you need it. And I don't float at all. Yeah. What did you think I, it was for? <laughs> I didn't think well, like, this life for style. Obviously, like I thought people just fall off. Like, yo, I'm not gonna fall off this thing. I didn't even think about hitting like, my if, face off of the thing. Yeah. Yeah. If some hit you, yeah. you hit the front front of it, you. Listen, fall not off. everyone is a great boat driver yeah. out there, and there's a lot of people boozed up because you are allowed to drink in boat, but. That is not true. Is that real? That yeah. is not That's true. not you true. Can't be drunk. You can't be legally drunk, but you can have drinks. Yes. No. You get yeah. a boo. Well, you can have four or Congress. five. Huh? What? In Wisconsin, that was the rule back when I lived there. No, you're not allowed to buoy, dude. You, you can't serious. be driving said, drunk really? out on really? my water. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, they patrol. <laughs> no more. way. That's what they're worried about. Like, fuck, is McAfee out here? I don't want to get oh. pulled over. There he goes. They got these water cops that come by. I watch them. Yeah. They got good boats. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Commission? Oh, yeah. Hey, these, the cops. You doing, a, you, you doing a ride along with them and patrolling the, <laughs> the cities with them, giving breathalyzers out? I just let them know, like, you know how the Navy has. There's no dope on here. There's no dope on this. <laughs> No, no, there's no dope on mine or on yours, I don't think, but we will confiscate it mm -hmm. if we have to. But you know how the Navy has those dolphins that mm -hmm. are swimming around them all? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's me on the jet ski yep. around <laughs> the water cops. Right. Yeah. DNR. Right. You know what I mean? DNR, yeah. whatever it is. Thank you, the water cops. They uh, they they appear to be properly jocked, too. <laughs> yeah, they're ready it. to go. These dudes are properly jacked, sunglasses on, mm -hmm. and their boats seem to be more sturdy than everybody oh, else's yeah. boat. Mm -hmm. It is. They, they go. They, they did it right. They're on the water all day. That's their job. They they have the best wow. one out of all of them. They got triple things in the back of that boat though. Oh yeah, yeah. couple of engines. They're going. They don't fuck around. Six hundred horsepower. Peace. Is there yeah. a fucking high speed chase that's gonna happen on this goddamn lake? Why Could do be. they need? Maybe oh, could be you yeah. out running the law at some exactly. point. Exactly. Yeah. That's why they have them. They might ask you to bring your, your jet ski and chase somebody smuggling drugs. Every boat. Listen, I'm ready. Okay, for my waters. <laughs> not much, my not much drugs. For my lake that I'm patrolling out there. Mm -hmm. Not many drugs left to smuggle after that soccer player. Every, 
What happened? Oh, right, right. <laughs> this guy yesterday he got reported he was smuggling like $75 million worth of cocaine. Yeah, yeah, so what's going on with soccer? They had a guy shaving points a couple weeks yeah, ago. Uh-huh. And now we got Soccer's a, always a good time. Yeah, then we got a full-time, big-time narco. Fuck, yeah. Right. A big-time narco. Weapon. Former Netherlands winger uh, Quincy Proms is prosecuted for importing more than 1,300 kilos of cocaine. Value of 75 million euro. Yeah. So, wow. Shout out to 90 million yeah. American. <laughs> yeah. uh, More powerful, right. huh? That is. Did inc- he smuggle it on a tanker or something? Like, I want to know how they caught him and where this was. I assume it's over a period of time, right? Does Dutch have those little boats? What if he had one of those like semi-submersible subs that they build in the jungles and drive them over that they just the top sticks out? Yeah, I mean he might. Would he be able to have 75, 90 million dollars worth of stuff in one of those? Probably, huh? Yeah, probably. Yeah, maybe. What is that? 13 kilos. Yeah, that's a lot of room. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Minnie might not might not get the job done. And all these imp, uh, drug smuggling documentaries I've watched, mm-hmm. it's always a lot of trips, mm-hmm. right? A lot yeah. of boats, a lot of subs. We're dropping Planes. shit in the middle of the ocean if we're about to get caught. Exactly. We're 28 not pounds. 20, oh, so they could definitely. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. That, definitely. That's definitely. Uh, I, 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 weight-wise, for sure. I just mean like <laughs> space, like actual volume. Oh, no, that's volume. no problem. They, get, they can figure out something. Fact, man, don't be too comfortable. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> don't, they, don't, they don't that's be, not too much to hide, but that's that's a dumb thing to do. But I'm just being. Who was that? Sam Hurd, right? He was the yeah, NFL's yeah. best version mm-hmm, of yep. that. Mm-hmm. Well, and then. Hey, he was really doing it. He walked right out of a, a restaurant in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> they said he's right out of front of a five star restaurant in Chicago while being on the Bears with a kilo of cocaine in a suitcase or yep. whatever. Middle of broad daylight. I think his car got valeted. Drive a car, puts it in there. Boom. Now I got to go practice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just casual. Right. Yeah. Just casual. A lot, a lot of confidence by Sam Hurd, I would say. Like, dog, dude. Yeah. Absolute dog. dog. Think about the amount of, like, when you got that much money in that particular world that doesn't really have a lot of rules. You gotta be looking over your fucking shoulder at all times. Oh yeah. All th- with people that you employ, with people that you're against, everybody, like, there's not a lot of rules over there. And, you know, there's been a lot of examples of, you know, death, death, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. dead. Yeah. A lot of it. Like, dead, dead. Oh, dead. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, not just one shot dead. Like, no, like, yeah. cut your tongue out. Yeah. yeah. We'd like you to be the deadest person of all time. Yeah. Fingernails off. And then he's just rolling right into like special teams meeting. All right, I got R2. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Crazy. yeah. You know what I mean? That's bananas. Yeah. To me. Crazy. I would like to talk to him. You think guys on the team had any idea? He gets out I was, He was my teammate in Dallas. And when I seen that pop up, I'm like, so you had no I idea any of this? Was- never in my life would have thought Sam was out here fucking cocaine cowboy. Moving, moving, yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable teammate, one of like quiet, quiet guy. Like, yeah, don't tell him about, about his business. I don't yeah. know. It makes sense. He was quiet. That, that's why Smart. he didn't. That's why he didn't let anybody else help him. They were like, uh, Smart. Yeah. send us to who the. That's me, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but who have you been in? Uh, nobody. They've been in contact know. with me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're finding other people that are pointing their fingers up to me. It's like. <laughs> Beast. When he gets out of jail, I would like to talk to him. Yeah. I would like to oh, talk yeah. to him. Don't love that drug dealers happen. Don't love the drug affects sure. you know people's lives. I've had a lot of friends, obviously, but the fascination with the humans that have the capability of being able to do that and then to do something else at a very high level in the <laughs> fucking NFL. Yeah, would love to hear just the human that he. Not saying other people should do this. This should not be a goal. No, do no. not. This should never not happen again. This. But would love to talk to this guy. You gotta have come back story. story. What do you we tell him? He can make a ton of money. Going around giving speeches, telling his story, saying how he's turned turned his life around, what prison did for him, and but he could also go into very a lot if, of detail about how he got into it, what he was doing, and I think it'd be very interesting. Comeback story, obviously awesome. What if he just says, "Yeah, I mean, I just knew I could do it better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna do it again, but because I just went to jail for probably it. not." But he was yeah. released January 31st oh. of this oh. year. Yeah, oh, let's go, let's go, Sam. Go. Sam. 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 Yeah. Former teammate of yours, Pac-Man Jones. That's yeah. right. A lot of us big fans. We're going to get sent. The comeback story. Mm-hmm. We think. Mm-hmm. He's just out. Yeah. He's just good. Yeah, I remember this during the season. That's what it says. Yeah. He, he got. Uh, How long is he in jail? Up. Long time. Eight, he nine? was sent to a residential reentry management facility, whatever that is. So he's not out yet. So probably how long? 60 days, 100 days, probably. So Back, I, please. Jeez Louise. Uh, but now uh, he probably. No, I know. He's probably close, though. <laughs> February. He's, very, he's really close if he had a halfway, halfway. Yeah. There we go, Sam. He's actually definitely out if it was if he started then, because that's all February, all March, all April, all May. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is not Sam Hurd. <laughs> oh shit. It, just lost him. Oh uh, no. So it, is it Sam? Not Sam. Sam, we did not lose Sam. Okay. 
we're dealing with some technical difficulties. Mm. Anybody home? Someone just knock? Yeah, that was a... Oh, that was you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, thought that sweet. was us knocking on. <laughs> yeah. Hello? I was excited to hear if the door was going to get open. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a World Series champion, a multi-time MVP, an absolute stallion, a man who has literally rode the waves of life to the epic highs in the wild lows and now has found himself an owner of a team in the NBA, <laughs> a media member in the baseball, and a real estate mogul. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Rodriguez. Yeah! How are you? <laughs> What's up, Pat? How you doing, man? Dude, I'm great. Thank you for coming on the show. Obviously, you're an icon, a legend, one of the biggest names in the history of America's pastime. So thank you for taking time. You look great, A-Rod. You look great. <laughs> I'm going to take off my jacket just so I feel more comfortable. Hold on. What are... are you jocked? Are you still jocked? Yeah, still jocked. Yep. Still jocked. I wish I had a tanta. And Pat, I got to say that I'm honored to be on your show, but you must be disappointed because I'm like, a Rod, two point, but the, like not the, <laughs> the the big star. A Rod is Rogers. So I'm like number two now. Oh yeah, so, you know because AJ. I'm, I'm in a good, uh, you need uh, to know this though. Like AJ, whenever you know, I was just learning of the Aaron Rodgers. He would just casually call him A Rod in conversation, and every time it was said, I thought of you. I'm like, fuck, Alex Rodriguez. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I did not know that Aaron Rodgers was called A Rod, and then now it makes so much sense, and I call him A Rod. So I guess we are. Be something just crashed. I mean, something just. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I did. I did play a little football uh, in in high school. I was number thirteen, trying to be like Dan Marino in Miami. Everyone tries to be like Dan, but I wish I can throw the ball like my man Aaron Rodgers. He is awesome. I'm a huge fan of his. Okay, so let's dive into that. You're at uh, Seattle and then Texas, then you come to New York, the big city, the big lights, and obviously we've learned of your story, the decision you made, why you made it, the pressures you felt. I couldn't even imagine what it would have been like coming to New York, especially as an established superstar with a lot of expectation. Aaron is having to do the same thing. What is he going to experience, and how do you think he's going to get through it? Well, first of all, I mean, he's so much more mature than I was. Uh, you know, he, he's very, very, very smart. Um, and he, he's already a GOAT, right? He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, hopefully he can do some great things for the Jets. I know New York is thrilled to have him. Uh, but I think he's going to be just fine. He's, he's going to – and by the way, I love the way he's leaning into it. He's having fun. He's at concerts. He's at Knicks games. That's exactly what New York wants to do. And you just got to go out and perform and have fun and be yourself. Okay. Yeah, he is. He's definitely having fun right now. And we see he's in, like, the honeymoon phase. I feel like he's sitting courtside at all these games. Everyone loves him. Teammates love him. How do you think people react if they don't win a bunch of games, A-Rod? <laughs> well, I mean, look, I mean, the Jets, it's its really nothing to lose, right? I mean, he can be Joe Namath 2.0. And the fact is that we can lift the New York Jets to heights. I mean, the Jets fans, and Pat, you know this, right? Like, they're ready to go. I mean, they've suffered a lot. They're great fans. They're smart. They're passionate. And now they have their guy, which is awesome. Yeah, I've enjoyed watching them kind of take him in because I think a couple years ago he had some thoughts and opinions and did some stuff that maybe a lot of people on the East Coast did not really appreciate, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you know? Owners of and now it's like, hey, yeah, and owners of the team mm -hmm. we're not very grateful for. Now it's like, welcome to the city. Have a, we got a hippie out here now. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're our hippie now. Let's kind of do this thing. I'm excited to see the success, and I'm excited to see your success as well, A-Rod. And, I mean, let's just dive right into it. I um, I am not a – I didn't play baseball growing up. I did play in the farm league, though. That's right, you did. Thir 333 on base percentage. Guy <laughs> overthrew first base after mm -hmm. I made contact. No big deal. Uh, broke my thumb and pulled my hamstring. <laughs> tough sport. Tough sport. But I haven't been in the baseball world. But obviously I knew about you because you're a superstar of the baseball world. As you're going through your entire run as the MLB star that you are, and then everything kind of collapses there. As you were made the face, and we talked about this earlier, you were made the face of something that like hundreds of other people were also a part of. And now we know that with like kind of looking back on it. But at the time, it was like, this guy is the reason that baseball has a bad uh, uh, reputation. This guy's been cheating. Fuck this guy. Everybody was saying that, A-Rod. Like, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Did you? How did you end up coming back from that? I think I, as somebody not... That mentally, I would have been devastated and broken from that. How did you bounce back to where you are now? I feel like this is one of the biggest climbs in like the court of public opinion's eyes. For sure. Maybe of all, I don't want to say all time, but maybe of all time from where you were to now. Like mentally, did you ever, was there ever any doubt like you were going to be back ever or you know anything like that? 
Pat, I got to tell you, everything you just mentioned, and look, AJ, you, you guys have both been, you know, athletes, you know, you both have been in the limelight. And, you know, I think, Pat, you may be accurate. It might be one of the biggest falls of all time because I played for the great New York Yankees, for the great George Steinbrenner. Uh, I was the highest paid player in the game. I played with one of the great icons uh, in Derek Jeter, uh, Mariano Rivera, Andy Pettit. So I felt all those things, depression. I felt... Um, you know, like a pariah and uh, to do it in the biggest stage and to fall from, I mean, you know, I was a first ballot hall of famer. I mean, I, I was probably that five, six years ago be before I got in trouble. And to think, I remember I was sent emails, Pat and AJ, and uh, people wouldn't write back to me. It was, it was terrible. It was like, and, and here's what I think why I came back. Uh, my biggest guess is uh, I looked in the mirror and basically said is, I have no one to blame but the guy I'm looking at and taking full accountability, uh, serving a suspension cost me probably over $50 million. Uh, I lost the respect of my fans, my teammates, my mom, my daughters, let them down. And I think when you face reality and you can come back and man up, um, I was fortunate to get a break. I, I heard your intro where uh, I came back and uh, at 40 years old, two knee surgeries, two hip surgeries, uh, no one thought I would even make the team. And at 40, 41 years old, I hit 33 home runs, what? led the yeah. team back to the playoffs. And, you know, it was, thank God for me, a happy ending. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. There had to be some tough times in there, though. You should be proud of yourself there, yeah. dude. Yeah. Okay, obviously you're rich and you live good and everything like that, <laughs> but you're a human. You are too, by the way. Yeah, I want to say congrats to you. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I'm trying to, you know, we'll see. Yeah, let's take it easy. There's numbers being reported. They're not right. But nonetheless, like, you're a human at the end of the day who has, like, emotions and feelings. Even the people that are, like, the biggest narcissist of all time, yeah. somewhere there is a feeling of being a human yeah. in there. And I'm not saying you're that. I'm just saying humans in whole, uh, however people view you, however people view you or did view you, it's like, at the end of the day, a human is in there. And with all the, it felt like everybody for you to fucking come back out of there, like it's very inspirational, dude. Like you should be incredibly proud of it, honestly. AJ, go ahead, pal. Did you uh, did you have any idea, I guess, at how how good you would be on TV analyzing the game of baseball? Like I, I know Pete Rose isn't there anymore. When you and Pete would go back and forth talking about what you're looking mm -hmm. at when you're hitting at the plate, like that was awesome. Like made me feel like I was learning so much, especially and also I could see how passionate you and Pete both are like about the game of baseball and how you're still fans now. Like, is that something you thought you might get into while you were still playing? Yeah, yeah great question, AJ. You know, I think this is where I am a little bit like uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, the, the real A-Rod, is that uh, he's a football geek. I'm a baseball geek. I mean, I love the game. I study it. Uh, I remember when I played, I, I would come home uh, in my, my apartment in New York, and I would go and put four or five games, all the West Coast games, the Dodgers, the Padres, the Oakland A's, um, the Anaheim Angels. And I was just studying – because I knew that, you know, the next week or two, I'll be playing those teams. And I just love the game. Then the question became about TV is, you know, can I articulate uh, a compelling story, uh, taking a complex subject and make it like commercial and digestible? And, and Pat and AJ, you guys both do a fantastic job. Nah. But it's not a given. It's not a layup. And I, I worked hard at it. I have an incredible crew with Fox, uh, with Kevin Burkhardt, Poppy, and now the great Derek Jeter is going to join us. All right, there you go, Pat. I like that. Let me see that stroke. Come on. Well, th Come on, there's man. a big Come conversation on, take a few about cuts, this, A-Rod. <laughs> there's a big deal. So I didn't play baseball. Sure. All right. Yeah, we're not sure. We're not sure <laughs> what I am. I played in that farm league game, righty. But the only I didn't even step into a, like a, what cage. are those? I didn't yeah. even step into a cage before this game. The only thing we did is Ty Schmidt here, who's, the biggest Yankee fan I've ever met, who is very excited. Had a boy time. Yeah, yeah. He loves you. He's a he's you and him are about to have a great conversation, <laughs> but he played college baseball and baseball and everything like that. So I, the, my only preparation for this farm league game was he was throwing me hockey balls, yep. like deck hockey balls, and they were moving, I think like 70, 80 miles mm -hmm. an hour or whatever. And I was making contact with him. And it happened like 20 times. And then boom, we're in a batter's box against a pitcher that got drafted to the fucking Brewers. Yeah, that's something right. Something like that. And his farm league throwing 92. <laughs> Or whatever, but I batted righty because I played hockey growing up, righty. So I just assumed it was. But then immediately after like the game, I started like just like I'm like, man, it feels a lot more natural. <laughs> you know what I mean? It feels a lot more natural because I think when I was a kid, the only thing I knew about baseball was Ken Griffey Jr.'s swing. 
So like I think yeah. there was I think there was an era where I was doing the Ken Griffey Jr. swing, you know, where you kind of let it go. So I think I'm supposed to be a fucking lefty, a Rod. <laughs> and my, I, I think I'm supposed to be a lefty, but I'll never actually find out the answer. But I was watching, AJ brought up you and Pete Rose. There was one uh, segment that I watched where you guys were actually in the batter's box with the plate there, and I know nothing about baseball. I enjoy watching the World Series. And when they go to that fucking farm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Field of Dreams, baby. Yeah, the Field of Dreams one. That one's awesome. Like the special events, I think baseball does very yeah. well. I think it does very well. But I was, Pete Rose was like, well, if... I'm a little bit slow on the ball uh, on a day. I'm just going to move back, he said. And he said, if I'm a little bit fast, I'm going to move up. If I feel like I'm getting jammed, I'm just going to move back. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. That is like, I didn't even think about that being the actual thing. And then you added in, yeah, and also if the pitcher's doing this. So what AJ said there, I would like to echo the sentiment. When you two started talking about it, me as somebody who didn't know baseball, felt as if I was getting like a 101, 201, 301, what? and a 401 all at the same time. Because I think what people forget is, like you're shoot one of the most talented fucking hitters in the history of the game, right, A-Rod? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell sure. yeah. How, wait, whole life, you just bomb balls? Is that real? No, you know, I, I was a little bit of a slow starter, but you know, it's interesting, AJ and Pat, you guys mentioned that piece. We, we thought the cameras were off, right? And we were just having a real conversation. And I was asking questions that I was actually intrigued. But if you think about Pete Rose, he's a living legend. Whether you like him or not, numbers don't lie. He's the greatest base hit hitter of all time. But to think about it, it would be like watching Da Vinci, you know, uh, write or paint and, and, and Picasso paint. And uh, he's a modern day legend. And, you know, if any kids out there that wants to learn about hitting, you should watch that YouTube clip. I think it got like 25, 30 million views like in 24 hours. <laughs> so but it was all about Pete Rose and him talking about his approach, what to think, the mental approach, choking up, righty, lefty. I was fascinated. And then they said, hey, by the way, guys, we recorded this. We're going to launch it. And I'm telling you, 24 hours, it did like 20 million views. And that tells you a lot about who Pete Rose is. Yeah, and what state of baseball and what people are interested in. And obviously, you're acting like you're just asking the questions. You're asking great questions because you're fucking also, you know, yeah. one of the greatest hitters of all time. That's a great piece of uh, content. Hope you continue to crush the media game forever. Ty Schmidt absolutely loves you. Has a question for you. Yeah, A-Rod, you mentioned it. Still first, uh, first ballot Hall of Fame in my book. No question about that. I never really understood the kind of vitriol you got from Yankees fans. Fans, you're still one of my favorite Yankees of all time, and I'm glad watching the uh, like your media run, how people have kind of got to see that, and, and it's come around a little bit. But I'm curious, you said you're a baseball geek. Do you like the new rules they've instituted this year, like the the pitch clock and and you know getting rid of the shift and all that kind of stuff? Because I still watch baseball all the time, but we talk about it, you know, like with the rise of the NFL. Do you think these new rules are going to bring enough kind of new fans to baseball over the course of the next five to ten years? Yeah, th thanks for the question, Todd. I actually love, love the new rules. Um, you got to give Commissioner Rob Manfred and Tony Clark a great deal of credit. Um, look, not everything's going to be perfect, but in, in a world where baseball is so married to his great history, uh, to be able to pivot and make some progressive moves, I think uh, the time clock has an opportunity to bring baseball back, bring the glory days back. And get, eliminating the shift is perfect because to that conversation we were just having about Pete Rose, the idea of, you know, hitting the ball line to line, uh, the great John Olerud, thinking about Rod Carew, each role, George Brett, all the great players, Derek Jeter, they're rewarded by hitting the ball line to line. And a little bit of that was lost. Um, so I do like the rules. I think baseball is in a good place. Uh, they have as many young, great players as we've had in decades. So I'm excited about baseball. Shohei, the best player of all time, huh? I'll tell you what, he, I don't know about that, but he is the greatest <laughs> show of all time. I've never seen a guy that could be that good. And I'll give you one thing that was amazing about the World Baseball Classic game in Miami, which we covered for Fox, Poppy, me. Uh, we had Big Hurt, Kevin Burkhart. There were 70 million people watching that game. Now, most of them were in Japan, uh, in the morning of Japan. But it just gives you an idea that baseball, if marketed right, uh, it can bring the glory days back to where they belong. Hell yeah, we watched the World Baseball Classic. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved everything. It was It's interesting because in baseball somehow, even though I think a lot of us casuals are like, if you have a good pitcher, you're going to have a good team. Like, that's how it goes. That Angels team, having Shohei and Trout, 
it, they, it had to get explained to me like four or five different times during the World Baseball Classic. I'm like, okay, so our captain is the mm -hmm. best player in, <clears throat> of the generation? Yeah. <laughs> He's on what team? The Angels. Okay. Yeah. The, the Japan team, their best player, best player of a generation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's on what team? He's on the Angels, yeah. Who are the Angels? The Angels stink. How's that? How's that happening? Right? What, how's that even? What is that? How's, is that going to be how it's always going to well, be? I, I would just say, look, there's plenty of teams, I guess, in football that unless you're a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers or Payne Manning or Joe Montana, Tom Brady, if you're a great defensive end or linebacker, uh, there's an opportunity for you to be all pro, be one of the best of all time, and still your team – if you don't have the right supporting cast, gotcha. uh, you may end up in last place or middle of the road. Gotcha. Um, baseball is very, very hard to win with one or two players. If you think about the Yankees and when they won four championships in five years, one through 25, they were loaded. They were stacked. And they built that team like a great architect with great balance, ability to hit, hit for power, pitch, bullpen, the greatest bullpen of all time with Mariano Rivera. Hell yeah. So it really is a team effort in, in baseball. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think I learned through that entire thing because I get a guy hit a couple dingers, mm -hmm. got a good pitcher. That's yep. it. What are we even we're winning games? <laughs> and then they're like, yeah, I got best this guy actually hits good too. He's <laughs> he's the best pitcher and he also hits good. And then he got the best American baseball player in maybe forever or whatever. And this guy, it's like and the team just can't get on TV. Can't get on TV because they're not worth a fuck, a right? I mean, it is, it's a wild, wild, wild scene. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Aaron, we always talk about uh, NFL guys when they get drafted and, and they come in. It's good to have good leaders on, on the team. And then I wanted to translate that to baseball with you. You come into the Mariners organization and Griffey's there and he's basically the star of the MLB and Edgar Martinez is there. Like, how big of that, how big, how huge was that for you to see? basically the face of the league at the time and see what he goes through every day and how he approaches every day. Like how big was Griffey uh, for your career? Yeah, and it's a great question. You know, I describe this as imagine going, if you have a son and you get to send him to play college basketball for Duke and to play for Coach K. It's a safe environment. It's one that we, you can develop. Uh, that's how I felt going as an 18-year-old in the big leagues. It's a Seattle to have – the mentorship and tutelage of, you know, Lou Pinella, uh, Ken Griffey, Edgar Martinez, Jay Bone Buner, who was a stud, Stop. Um, Randy Johnson, right? It was an epic roster, and it was phenomenal. And to your question, having a guy like Ken Griffey Jr., who was also a number one pick six years before me, um, was an incredible role model. And it's not only that he was the Michael Jordan of baseball in the face of Nike in the face of, of, of baseball – but it was also that he was an incredible human being, a great father, great husband, and just someone for me to kind of watch and learn from. Yeah, and uh, incredible swing. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Clean. Sweetest. Sweetest. Oh, I mean, I just talked about it. I just, yeah. Literally, I wasn't a baseball kid, and I used to – Used to do that entire thing. Uh, A-Rod, we appreciate you taking time here. Yeah. We know that you are currently promoting something that is making the world a much better place with gum disease alongside Aura, Aura, Aura Pharma. I didn't want to get that wrong. Aura Pharma, they're teaming up to help fight gum disease. Did you know, okay, did you know <laughs> that this affects 65 million Americans? Well, that's a lot. Wow. Hey, that's a lot of people, eh, Rod? I'm happy you're telling people about this because I'm probably one of them if I had to guess. What do we need to do? We need to brush better? We need to do what do we need to do to help this? I think all of that. I mean, look, I, I, look, AJ and Pat, I'm sure you hate going to the dentist just as much as I do. But uh, I went recently to, to see my dentist uh, in this great partnership with Aura Pharma. We're spreading the word. I found out that I had gum disease. Uh, of course, that was alarming. But, you know, quickly we found out there's... Uh, you know, I, I, you go to arresting.com, you get all the information you can. It's really, really prevalent in black and brown communities, especially like my Latino community. Uh, oh, yeah. Go out, see your dentist, ask questions. And the best thing you can do is get ahead of it early. And there's a way you can treat it. And, and hopefully you can land your plane. But again, thank you for letting me talk about that. And it's something that I'm really proud to spread the word. Hell yeah, man. Thank yeah. you for talking about it. I think I'm, I'm going to take a nice... Look in the mirror. I hate going to the dentist. It's, it's the worst. Terrible. You know, like, you never go to the doctor with, like, good news, right? So you're obviously yeah. not going to love the doctor. But you never go to the dentist until it's horrible news. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So every time you walk in there, it's the worst news imaginable. Mm -hmm. And then what else? Oh, yeah. Nah, nah, you know? Mm -hmm. Talking to you. Gums are bleeding. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you're going to be miserable for the next day. It is not fun at all. No. Need to do it. Yeah. Need to do it, eh, Rod?
Yes, got to do it. Got to do it. Get that laughing gas so they can turn that shit up. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Hall of Famer in our book. That's right. And in real life should be. Mm -hmm. Alex Rodriguez. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he did. I mean, he was. Oh, yeah. Right? Big time. People hated him. Yeah. Even me outside baseball world was like, God, that guy's taking a Huge comeback. He got suspended. He got, back, for... he got on TV, man. Like, yeah, big time turn, I think, from, from the public. Yeah. I didn't but... love I didn't love that I talked about his climb. Mm -hmm. And he, he talked about his fall. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, that's a little negative here. Right? I'm talking about you coming back. Yeah. I'm talking about the fall, though. Equally, both. Huge, I guess. Yeah, he, he took a lot of hits. Like you said earlier, it was a lot of people that got caught during that same time, but he was the only one actively still playing. He got suspended for a yeah. full year, like in in his prime. It was reduced to that, too. It was a year yeah. and a half, yeah. and then they reduced it to one year. 50 million bucks he said he lost? Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. yeah. 33 bombs at 41. Was what? Where Texas paid him $400 Could you million? imagine Beast. that spite year? 250 Yeah. Million, him coming back at 41. They're drug testing him more than anybody else in the fucking league. Too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 41, getting mm -hmm. drug tested. The Every single at bat, fuck all these people. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Big time. Homer. Every single one of them. Good for him. 33 of them. Yeah, that's... Unbelievable. And he looked properly jogged, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Andy, I mean, what, what is he doing, you know, doing real estate and dentist yeah. stuff? He oh, should yeah. be in fucking hey, Top Gun. Did you see that commercial? Dude. It's unbelievable. He was doing kettlebell swings by the just, pool. You can't be running that out of nowhere. Can we play that? <laughs> I have never seen that. That pops up on the screen. I... I wanted to ask if that was his real dentist. Like, is this guy? This guy's got to be an actor. No, it says, yeah, paid spokesperson and actual oh, patient. Yeah. Well, I guess it could be. Well, we don't... You could pay the doctor. No, Doctors it's an actual paid. patient who got paid. That's what right. Okay. Yeah, right. Circle. Which is A Rod. World Series A champion, CEO of A Rod Corp. That's been approved. Also, co owner. Of Sweet nice sweat. Nice bathroom. Jeez, Jeez, great bathroom. Too. Holy fuck. You think he's doing Didn't he say he has this? Didn't he? I don't know. He didn't say it on here, but I've seen him talking about this. Like, did he yeah, learn about it? In his 30s or something like that. Is hey, this the one where you know, do you know anyone that had their gums like? Shaved down, they had to cut their gums way back. Is that what this comes from? I know a couple people. I don't think. Had I, I don't know think. That I, my gums are not good in that. And they do that test where they shove the metal thing down in between each gum and then they measure it. Boy, is that tough. It is. It's not. There's nothing fun about it. Oh, no, it sounds awful. It is. And then you never know. I'm not getting into it. What's that? <laughs> okay. You never know what. I'm sure you won't. No, you won't. You won't get into it. I won't. You but won't. I have to think about it, you know, because like. What do you? What do they charge? You don't know, right? And that's like the thing. Yeah, you just assume <laughs> insurance covers it. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that, that's the whole. Mm -hmm. Hey, you got three cavities. You got a little bit of this in there. You see this thing right here? No, I can't no. see it because my mouth is. <laughs> no. Oh, we'll take a scan. Scan. Uh, you see? You know, there's always work to be done. Oh yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, no right. matter what. I would assume there's always work to be done. So you go in there. I, I think you're always thinking like, all right, I'm going in here and I'm signing up for a fucking root canal. Pretty much every time you go in there, it's like. You never walk out of there squeaky clean. No, <laughs> no, you're feeling you good. You never, <laughs> no, you don't. Never. Usually, you, yeah, usually you have to come back in two weeks or Always. so. Yeah, we're gonna have to get rid of you know this. And this. So you're yeah. committing to like, all right, I'm signing up for something real. This is a real commitment here. Oh, yeah. I'm going in, and also while in here, <sighs> gonna be terrible. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's tough to commit to. But A Rod saying, listen, need you. You got to do it. We got to do this, and I appreciate him doing that, AJ. I think it's pretty cool. I thought he was great. He seemed to be very open, honest. Mm -hmm. Like, I've always been a fan. Speaking of being a spokesperson for things, um, the flip the turf hashtag has. <laughs> what was that? That's so funny. Is that a giant hashtag going around with sweeping the nation? They're trying to get it that yeah. way. Yeah, it was trending. They're trying to get people to pay attention to the fact that. Good luck. Why is it sponsored then? Fields, because it needs it needs to get a little boost. Yeah. It needs a little boosting. Need a corp for it. Okay, we need to figure this out. We need to get it uh, aligned. We need the players to say, hey, we ain't doing it anymore. Put the grass fields on the stadium. Now. Von Miller took it to heart. Wrote a letter. Very serious letter. Emotional. Very deep. He's been on this program talking about it, as has basically every single player that has ever had a microphone, especially now the fact that the NFL owners are going to make their turf fields grass for the soccer players mm. from other countries. What the hell? Not going to do it for NFL players, the guys that they pay, that no. em they get employed by, that they could potentially make careers last longer and be better and everything like that. No, but we'll do it for the soccer players, <laughs> for the soccer Lombardi. And they play football over there. They do. Boom. Can't have it. Can't have it. David Bakhtiari is the most recent player mm -hmm. to do a hashtag flip the turf sit down. And this was his reasoning on why we need grass fields in every NFL stadium. 
My name is David Bakhtiari, and this is my elevator pitch on why I like to play on grass. Turf. It's so much faster. Being an offensive lineman, I like to kind of slow things down a little bit. We have defensive linemen running four fours. I don't need any more speed. My joints are shot after games. It takes me at least 48 to 72 hours longer to recover from the games. Particularly don't enjoy it. It gets a little hot. It is so much harsher. I don't enjoy it on my joints at all. I want to have my joints nice and fresh. You know what that's going to help me with? Playing on grass. Not just any type of grass, Pennington grass. So go ahead and put it on the fields. No one says, ooh, I enjoy the fresh tar on the carpet that's coming out. No, everyone enjoys the nice smell of fresh grass. Do us a favor. Help me help you. I want to give you a good product. You give me Pennington. That's why I'm excited to partner with Pennington to hashtag flip the turf. All Sign right. the petition at Pennington.com slash flip the turf. Let's go. OK. Now the elevator's opened up. You got to go. Get out of here. OK. So we're out of the elevator. You're talking about Pennington. You're talking about Pennington. I heard they have like three million signatures already. I'm about to sign it right now. <laughs> was that a sarcastic commercial for Pennington, or was that? I don't. I just don't. No, but with the with the product placement and everything, that's the the weirdest thing. I'm like, why is this like a sponsored? This a commercial. Listen, do what you got. to do. How are we gonna get this pass with with, with that, shit like this? That's what I'm saying. That's Good what I feel God like we took almighty. a step backwards on actual grass. <laughs> I, if Bakhtiari wanted to move some grass, come on, man. He can move grass another way. <laughs> Okay? Yeah. He's handsome. He's massive. He's athletic. Exactly. Go fucking push grass. a thing out there, mm -hmm. and let's let's get the grass smelling. Yeah, do what Kittle did. Do something like that. Yeah, be nude. Yeah, right. Be bad. He's properly jocked, by the way. Yes, he's yes. properly jocked. George Kittle was properly jocked. Saw every inch of his body except for, like, depending upon. Yeah. Except for 12. He did a naked 13. 12, 13, thing. 13 <laughs> 10 inches of George Kittle. <laughs> he was so, naked? Yeah. yeah. Bingo. Mm -hmm. Chubbies. Buy them. Yep. Yeah, right. Bakhtiari also thinking that one company that the NFL is just going to say, oh, you know what? I don't like one to let off. Sure. I, I yeah. want the game to be slower. It's like nobody wants the game to be slower. What are you, you talking know what I mean? about, buddy? Well, uh, it, it, it felt like he's saying, like, hey, I need to, for this summer, like, my backyard needs to be Pennington grass. Like, that's, that is the big takeaway. Like, it does. It feels like an infomercial for them almost. And that's, I think it but, takes a couple – we like Bakhtiari, we assume. Oh, yeah. I don't, know, I don't think I've ever hung out with him, but I think I like him. <laughs> People that I like like him, so that means a lot. AJ likes him. So, if AJ likes him, I assume he is – you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah we one like of the him. boys. I assume. Yeah. So, I like him, I think. He's been on the show. He's been good. Mm -hmm. That ain't helping. No, nah, that ain't. That ain't helping the grass. No chance. Man. No, no. That yeah. might be used as exhibit A. Don't okay, do this. we need a fast game. Yeah, you want to make the game. If, a, if it ever happened, though, when would it even? They, it's not like all of a sudden, bam! Here we go. We're putting grass in. They would need some time to next get it ready. Season. Yeah, next off season, I think you put in a plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what we're gonna yeah. do. Just like the Europe ones, we're just gonna have did, levels to this shit. It's actually gonna help us. Didn't the Broncos put a new turf in in like three days? Yeah, they had to re-turf it, but it was already turf, right? Yeah. So the system, yeah. watering and everything sure, goes yeah. was already redo like the middle part. They'll they'll resod the middle so. part sometimes of fields. Like spray paint it. Sod's right? not cheap either. Yeah, especially not to these. No, not to these NFL, not to these teams. NFL no. teams. I I honestly believe the hammer and home of the like gonna flip it for the soccer players is that yeah, should that's, be that's, that's a huge that's the part that we're pissed off with as players because the owners are saying, oh yeah, we believe you. Yeah, mm -hmm. you guys don't want to run on turf. Why not? Well, we run seven miles every game, and mm -hmm. we needed to be a perfect pitch out there for our joints. You got it. You got it. Well, you're going to bring an international Ooh. audience in here? Absolutely. They're going to be buying all the beers and everything? Mm -hmm. Right. we like, you got it. We'll put fucking yeah. grass in here. No problem. We'll put a stage over top of this thing. Yeah. This will be actual super grass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want. This grass is going to have a little bounce like it's a gymnast floor. Ooh. Wait till you guys see what you're doing on this brand new state-of-the-art grass that we're going to put in for the fucking soccer Lombardi. Mm -hmm. Like, players should be like, you, you already, you've already conceded. Yeah. Just did it. You just, you just conceded. So, like... Let's just do it. How do we? How do we make this Hopefully, happen? Hopefully, are there any are there any NFL stadiums that will be breaking ground anytime in the near future? Do we know? Minnesota Vikings just got outright ownership of their stadium. Yeah. Yep. Do you see that? Oh yeah, they paid it off early, right? Yeah, that's awesome. Two hundred twenty-six million dollars in interest fees. I wonder what that loan was. Like. I mean, that's awesome. That's a big loan. Yeah. yeah. Two hundred twenty-six million dollars in interest fees Sheesh. being waived from the Minnesota taxpayers due to paying it off twenty-three years early. Probably a thirty-year mortgage, we'd assume. Yeah. Tennessee, right, is the next team. Well, didn't they just yeah, so they the should, the bills. They did, got right. What if they bills, so they build one of those soccer ones, that. though? Do the one where the field take can, you know, the grass lifts, <laughs> do, boom, all the whole spaceship type situation, like any new stadium. I would imagine that's tough to retrofit into an old stadium. Yeah, mm. well, I mean, they just got to dig, right? They're going to have to dig. Yeah, dig yeah. a little bit. That's not just a little bit. That's going to be uh, pretty good. Oh, yeah. 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 That's an interesting. Bowels beneath. 
Like, who's moving? Chicago's moving. Yeah. It's, yeah. like, perfect for Chicago. Arlington Heights. I mean, the Coliseum used to flood it and have ship battles back in the day when they were fighting lions. Like, so we could do it now, can't we? We could figure something out. Hell, yeah, we could definitely figure it out. That'd be easy. You're right, AJ. I didn't even think about that, you know? That's a good point. I don't know how many normal people are, but you're right. They're flooding the Coliseum. I seen Gladiator. Yeah, you're not entertained, dude. Well, great, great movie. What? They're making another one. Really? Oh, yeah. Gladiator 2. No, oh. it's good cast. Who's the, What's good, everybody so upset about? No, this one actually this has one's a good top cast. line cast. Good cast. Hell Who? yeah. No Russell Crowe, but uh, I don't know, Denzel Washington. Oh, sorry. Oh, ever heard of him? Good? Yeah. Denzel Washington? Bingo. Denzel's yeah. in it. That might be. He's the main fighter? Warrior? Nah, he'll, he'll, uh, no, here, let me Probably throw like it Proxima. Uh, I believe it's Pedro Pascal. Heard of him? Wow. Yeah. He's awesome. Last he's of Us. Great show. Yeah, he's awesome. That's Petey. What's another show we like? Um... American Gladiator documentary, pretty sad. Yeah. Very sad. Oh, it is? I go into it mentally prepared. Yeah, I didn't oh. watch the whole thing, obviously. Everybody knows that, okay? Why? Came off like the fuck. Yeah. I fell asleep. Sorry. God, baby. <laughs> uh, I fell asleep, had a nanny. Why, are they dying off? Did they die off, it, most of them or something? Yeah, most of them don't want to be in it because they feel kind of screwed over, and then the ones that are what? in it, uh, their lives are extremely uh, different. And, you yeah, know, there's a lot. There's tears. There's... Uh, there's a, there's a lot of things that you're going to watch and be like, wow, I thought we were getting Malibu, Malibu, not... There what? wasn't a reunion. No. It wasn't no. like a... No. We uh, had it. Nitro. Was Nitro in it? That's what I said. I don't think he was. Did Gemini. You ever, see, you ever see The Wrestler with Ricky Mor Ricky, Mickey Rourke? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, it had the, kind of those vibes for me. How about uh, yeah. Ram Jam yeah. from... Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> Nailed it. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ram, Randy the Ram Randy the Ram. Yeah. Ram Jam was the finisher, bro. It You've was. You've never seen that movie. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, he used to fucking do this thing off the top. It's a long way to fall for a guy. So, as someone Andy. that didn't watch American Gladiator, <laughs> I just would have learned nothing. You would have probably had a little bit of a, not as positive of a, from the 15 minutes that I watched. They it, shouldn't have done the documentary then. It's well, like, that's what uh, we it's, I think they wanted to open some eyes. Maybe. It's still cool, yeah. Like, you remember how sweet the Gladiator show actually was and how ridiculous it would be if it was on TV today. Like, I wish it was. But it's really just about the guy who brought it to television being a complete dirtbag. Kind of the origin uh, story, too, right? Dude, yeah, that era, American gladiators, they were killed. Legends of the Hidden Temple, yep. Doug, guts, global yeah. guts, mm -hmm. cat dog. Yeah, you guys are talking about scripted Wonder stuff. I'm years. talking about game shows for kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I was just certain out shows. shows, yeah, I was just throwing them out. Certainly shows that existed. <laughs> that time, what a run! I mean, we're, we're not going to get through this without saying Saved by the Bell, of course. Of course. Yeah. Fresh, yeah. Fresh yeah. Prince. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For they tried to bring it back with Hulk Hogan and Layla Ali. You didn't like Fresh Prince. How did that do? What happened? Whatever, Why? Whatever happened we were, to that one? No. No. Fresh Prince used to be. We can't We can't say that no more. Why? The new one, Bel Air? There's a new one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a new one. Bel Air on what? Peacock. It's a lot more yeah. serious vibes. Who is in it? Like post Uncle Phil. Pat, what's yeah. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the new era of Bel Air. Wow. Never seen it. Whatever happened to Pac-Man? Uh, no <laughs> like, you don't like it? No. Why don't you like yeah. it? What happened? You're team, team Jada. Yeah, I'm Team Jada. I, well, well, what? I, I'm Jeez. not. I'm, I don't are you? I don't know. That's or team, team Will Thank because you. That, yeah. growing That's up right. watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air, uh, it came off as, uh, you know, Will was our guy. And yeah. then when you go back and hear this, this shit that's going on, like, ah. Uh, just changed my whole outlook of the Fresh Prince and Will Smith. Yeah, okay, I'm saying you weren't the only one. I think a lot yeah, of you're not yeah, most yeah, people. Yeah, I think a lot of people yeah. don't feel like you are uh, in the minority. You are in the big majority. Mm -hmm. yeah, you gotta yeah. separate artists from art there. Um, See, that is somebody that's huh? on the opposite side. What happened to uh, Joe Thomas's Gladiator show? Tough. Titans. Titan Games. That was uh, Dwayne Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, Dewey. yeah, Dewey was in that. That was Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. What happened to those? We still doing this? I don't know. It feels, sure they like, a, will. It feels yeah. like a lot of programs kind of changing nowadays yeah. on uh, on main shows. Especially Dewey's. What? <laughs> Excuse, Excuse me? What? Let's get to a break. Bringing it up. What's your problem? No, no problem. I'm just saying specifically with one person, programs are changing. I don't know. The TV show I saw he put out the other day on his Instagram, he was lifting. Oh, he yeah, still I'm, got it. Yes, he does. Yeah. This is season 950. Mm -hmm. And yeah. episode four, still fucking big. Hell yeah. Isn't it, AJ? That's what he should make. He does? Huge. Just one-minute episodes. Bro, Tara Mana sold like $40 billion in one yep. year. So much. All these deals everybody's getting, like Clooney got a bunch of money, Ryan got a bunch of money, all these yeah. alcohol companies' money. With the 
what Terra Mana sells for oh, and what yeah. Wayne Johnson gets from this is going to be a hysterical reaction. Yeah. Selling like 7X with all those guys for selling it. Yeah, and it's like a higher quality too. A little. Yeah. Is it, it really? I mean, oh, yeah. Do they have it at most places? Like, if you go to restaurants, do they oh, have it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere now. So, like, I'm We're gonna tell you. I'm not a massive Ooh. tequila guy, but I didn't mind it. Mine is good. It was tequila. Yeah. It was yeah. Good. Pretty smooth. Yeah, yeah it was, it's good. It was good. Like, that 1942 or whatever is the... Yeah, the top shelf. Also yeah. love that. And then what's that shit that comes with that one with the bell on the top? Mm. Awesome. Oh. Castle. The white, white and blue Castle bottle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know the name because I'm not a tequila guy, but yeah, guys, people always order that stuff. Boom, yeah. And then I was, I was at a place where a guy brought That's it. Me. That guy was Warren Moon. <laughs> he brought that bottle. Nice. Drank. That was the first time I was introduced. <laughs> <laughs> Weapon. I, I do believe he and I took down a majority of that bottle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. We That'll had a party night. How much is Rock Tequila's business? $3.5 billion. Terramana has sold over 600000 So it's up over his new projection was like two days ago, three days ago. They're up over a million bottles sold. Yeah. Already. Yeah. Man. So it's probably yeah, over 30%, they said. Yeah, 30%. That's a good Damn. amount. Yeah. It's not bad. Perfect. That is. That's good a really business, good. Dewey. He said he'd been waiting for the right one. He found he'd right. been scouring the fields mm -hmm. to find the proper... Mono? Yes. Avocado? No. Agave? Agave. No. Yeah. The proper agave. Mm -hmm. And he found it with Terramana. Mm -hmm. Good right. for him. How about Paul and KSI? With that prime drink? Prime, yeah. yeah, yeah. That thing is exploding. Quite Every kid long. loves prime, by the way. Every kid I'm ever around, that's all they want is prime. And Logan said on the show, this is the one. He said, you know how there's always like, hey, get a piece of this business, get a piece of this business, get a piece of this business. He was like, prime, this is the one. This mm -hmm. is the one that's going to get. He's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like Gatorade? Uh, yeah, it's, but less sugar, I think. Oh. Yeah. Let's get to a break. That's what they claim. That's, whoa. Hey, ho. Oh, slow down. I, mean, I haven't looked at the bottle, but yeah, that's what they say. I think it's less sugar. It's better. It's like Gatorade, but better for you. Yeah, but you're phrasing what you said. I yeah. do believe it is holding up to be true. I think they uh, <laughs> supply demand thing, too. They like ran out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always a good problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Good for them, man. And it's now, what, the exclusive drink of like the UFC as well. I'm sure that doesn't hurt. Well, not good for him until he releases the video, but I guess, whatever. <laughs> UFO video. Yeah. Need that. Did you learn anything from the 10:30 NASA meeting? I haven't watched it. 17 minutes. I haven't had a chance. Well, who's supposed to watch it if you don't watch it for this program? <laughs> yeah, I watched it this evening. You'll find 17 minutes uninterrupted. <laughs> yeah. When he's dumping. That's the boy. Diggs. That's a long dump. 17 minutes. That, Your yeah. feet would you would lose uh, feeling in the feet. Oh yeah. Great oh. Diggs can do it. You would feel you would lose feeling in the feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've had a couple of those. Where you got to stand up. Oh, my feet don't work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta wait a second. Been dumping too long. Yeah. <laughs> Those are great dumps. And how do you do the shake? You can't because you can't bounce on one leg. Nope. No. You just got to hope they come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if they never wake up one day? I, I oh. think about that a couple times. Nightmare. Stuck in the bathroom. That's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a nightmare, isn't it? It really is. Dude, if imagine never having a... Back, like, ever. I mean, you're going to oh, be on the walk. <laughs> just jelly legs constantly. <laughs> isn't that what Shaq Leonard said his... his uh, yeah. His ankle felt like it was just like asleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the worst. Oh, my God. You feel like you're rolling your ankle every step. Oh, my God. This whole thing could blow any moment. It's absurd. I took way too long of a dump. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to a break. We'll be back in five minutes. Five Energy phone line. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. going to light up today. Yeah. Though. Hell yeah. It's going to be great. Go. Today's going to be a good day on the Five Energy phone line. Yep. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. We got good vibes in there. Yeah. Yes. Let's take a shot of Mitt right now back in his little hole here. See if he, yeah. Five Hour Energy hole, he's coughing. Yeah. Working hard, dude. So many good calls. Fresh haircut. <laughs> yep. Fucking killing it. <laughs> hey, here's a computer. That's that's a computer. Yeah, a lot of good calls. I'm on. Yeah. Call God, too. Call God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get out here. We're back on the other side with some breaking news. <laughs> Hell yeah. Breaking news, I assume. We assume. Yeah, of course. Allegedly. I'll scan knows? that video. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice and take five. 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 Hello and welcome to the special investigative report. Much has been made in the media world on the life and charitable donations of the man Pat McAfee. Especially lately, with the rise of the ever popular Pat McAfee Show. A show that in his own words, stinks. We thought it privy to dive into the inner workings and machinations of this 
tiny business, this small regional show that has reached international discourse. We sat down with the suit himself, Bruce Brown, to figure out what, where, when, why, and how they're able to give away so much money, so much money to the viewers of this incredible program. So yeah, when you enter a Pat McAfee Show giveaway or win a FanDuel Merch Picks contest on Sunday, essentially, um, you know, the entire hashtag will be downloaded into an Excel file and the winners will be randomized within that. Um, and then we do a quick scumbag check, basically click on the profile and, and make sure, you know, you aren't a robot or blocked by Pat. And then it'll be transferred over to Dirty Gertie, who creates the Winner Wednesday graphic, which then runs on the show each Wednesday in a commercial break. Um, if you win over $599, um, we're going to need your email, or you can email giveaways at patmacafeeshow.com. If it's under $599, all we need is your cash tag. And if you win merch, obviously we need your size, address, and what you want from the store. Usually I'll just reply to you on Twitter. Um, if you have any questions about any giveaway, whether it's cash that you either are, are waiting on or, or merch, yeah, you can just reach out to me on Twitter or email giveaways at patmacafeeshow.com. Please give us about one to two weeks to sort out your prize. That's typically how, how long it, it, um, it takes. But again, if you have any questions, just reach out to us. We reached out to PMI's money man himself, CFO Phil, for an on-camera interview. Regretfully, he declined the segment, but he did give us the salacious, juicy details. In an email correspondence, CFO Phil replied, $2.6 million year to date. Too much money. There you have it. $2.6 million given away, a pissed off CFO, and a show that quote unquote, stinks. Good night, good morrow, good luck, and good fortune. Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and cut. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Winter Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. Hour three of this program starts right now. Sports! Are happening, and we've had a couple great sports conversations today with people that are in sports we don't normally cover. Baseball, Alex Rodriguez, just about 39 minutes ago, he was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And then Joseph Newgarden, the reigning, defending, undisputed. Shout out to Paul Heyman. Indianapolis 500 champion joined us in the first hour. He's incredibly handsome and very good at what he does. Mm -hmm. He's good for IndyCar. I hope they continue to kind of, I don't want to say, you know, 
Push. Throw his face everywhere. Push. Yeah. But throw his face yes, everywhere. Exactly. He's great for the sport, and we we're lucky to chat about it. There's a lot going on in the NFL. Uh, that man right there, to my left, your right, is a college football national champion. What? what? A Super Bowl champion. What? what? A Ryder Cup winner, but not a champion, but he is the champion of Ohio. Why? The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. Why? Father of 10. Why? Multi, multi, multi-time COVID survivor. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, the ever tan A.J. Hawk. Yeah! Come on, A.J. A.J. Hawk's here. Come on, Rob! Let's go! A.J. Hawk! A.J. Hawk! A.J. Hawk! A.J. Hawk! AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk. AJ we appreciate you so much. Yeah, can't wait. You got some good breaking news? No. Yeah. I do. No. What? AJ Hawk was a oh. freaking 97 in NCAA what? football. Holy shit. <laughs> 97 Ooh. overall out of 99. Number five overall pick. Yeah. 97 in 2K. Ladies and gentlemen, multi-time, multi-time COVID survivor, AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk. You know, I rattle off all those accomplishments so much. I think people forget about how yeah. accomplished oh, yeah. those accomplishments are. <laughs> we, yes. need, we need a list yep. to pop yep. up. Holy shit, dude. Thank you for being Man. here, AJ. Yep. Good to great wow. to be here, guys. Great True here. honor. All right. Now, what you were saying you were going to say before <laughs> we went to the break, please tell me the talks table at Boss Connor and Anti Schmidt. One half of the hammer, Dad. Cowboys Tone Diggs, 14 year NFL icon, Pac Man Jones. Yeah, Pac. And now, AJ. Please, let's digest this breaking news, and let's dive yeah. into this sports program a little deeper. Rip it. Yeah, I can't wait. I don't know. Whatever you think. I don't know if this is something you guys talk about during the breaks because I'm not there, and we're off the air. Do you, you try to come up with little schemes like this to throw breaking news situations to me, but you know I don't have anything, especially today. Schemes? This what is mean, disgusting. Mean, wait, why, would you, why would you ever let me tell the people, like right before the break? <laughs> yeah. I said, breaking news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would you ever, yeah. like, let me tell them that? And then on the other side, say, I, I don't I got nothing to I, 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 I thought it was you. I th it, it was your program. I thought for sure you, oh, great breaking news coming up. Didn't like, he oh, say? Nice you said it. was a great tease. You said it. You said it. Check the tape, Z. Check Not it. on the tape. In the group text. Yeah, you said it. Hey, yeah. wait till you see what in I got going text. back. Oh, he unsent it. He unsent it. Oh, interesting. You don't say it. Just, huh. Wow, you can do that now. Okay. You dirtbag. Guy never participates in a group text. <laughs> Ever. Then when he does, he leads me astray for our people. Mm -hmm. And then he unsends it so he never even sent it. This guy. Scumbag. Well, he sucks. I have some breaking news, I guess. Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Soccer player. Still thinking about kicking footballs. Here we Whoa, go, Harry. Come on You think up. he can? can is, there, is there carryover? Yes, certainly carryover. I think a lot of soccer players have had success kicking footballs. I do believe, though, that there are soccer players who are very good at soccer who would not be able to pick up the stroke that it takes to elevate a football at the rate in which it needs to be elevated uh, because of the way their stroke is. So, like, I was very lucky that my soccer style of kicking a soccer ball transitioned right into kicking a football. Had a lot more control with a soccer ball for the early portions of my career. But my swing was one that it was the trajectory level of the ball was kind of immediate, which was a big deal. Yeah. There's some guys that have to work on that and drive it a little bit. And there's a lot of soccer players that are good at kicking balls. I understand that. But if Harry Kane naturally has the trajectory of the ball, definitely could figure it out. And it appears as if he does. He's kicking off a tee there, so it's impossible to judge. But... I mean, that, that, was, that was a pretty horrible-looking attempt yeah. <laughs> at kicking a football. Yeah. But his swing does seem to go up and through it. He was a free kick taker, a penalty taker. He's a great striker of a ball. I will assume Eric Kane will be able to figure it out, although that video is doing nothing for me in this particular conversation. He's only 29, so I, this has got to be years and years away, too, I assume. I don't think Eric Kane's respecting He's the like football 29. kickers enough, to be honest with you. Nah, I think you're wrong. I think Eric Kane to figure it the fuck out. You should out. beat his ass. I, absolutely. I don't think it's as easy as, like, hey, I want to play no. in the NFL, so I'm going to go over there and do it. Yeah, there's 32 jobs, so there's not a lot of jobs. Right. And there's a lot of guys that have focused on this for a large majority of their life. Yeah. And it is, like, sweet spot this big. So, like, very, very small, and you have to be exact. Yeah. Like, you have to be exact. So, like, um, when he's hitting a free kick or something, and right. he misses a little bit, but it still goes in the area, like, with a with a football, probably, that's probably going to miss a little Way bit. Way off. It's probably not. It's potentially going to do that. A soccer ball is much more forgiving than a football is. With that being said, 
I believe Harry Kane will be able to figure out how to hit a football through the uprights if he had to. Now, will he be able to, as a soccer player, just decide to sit there for fucking Bingo. four Bingo. quarters? Yeah. Sure. That was a tough thing for me. That was, that, was a very, that was a very difficult thing for me who my introduction to football was like literally just showing up on Fridays. I played soccer. I was supposed to go on and play soccer for a living, not football for a living. So like that was way before I started football. That was kind of everybody's thoughts. So, hey, we'll kick on Fridays, like, to do that thing, but this is kind of the avenue, and then it all flips so that I get dropped into the football world. I am wildly bored, you know yeah. what I mean? I yeah. am like, holy shit, I'm literally just standing here for a large portion of this game, and then when I go out, I have to be on. And if I'm not on, there's no, like, makeup. Uh, like, you can't, like, give extra effort because you missed the ball or missed the kick. You can't go try to make another play to make up for it. Like, if you give away a ball in soccer, you're probably chasing that motherfucker mm -hmm. all the way back to get the ball back. Like, in football, that shit doesn't happen if you're a kicker. No. You miss, you go shit on the sideline. Yeah. 35 minutes, what? okay, and everybody hates you. Yeah. Including the guy that's holding the ball for you. Yeah. They're not happy about it either. You have no allies for 35, 40 minutes, and then you got to go back out there, keep yourself warm, and be perfect again. And that's why you see so many kickers like fucking come and go. Follow up. Believe Harry Kane could figure all this out. I believe that as the elite top tier ball striker that he is. Yeah, I, I still, uh, I'm not sure if he could, but you you said it, I think it was last week where, you know, you missed what at West Virginia once in the O line turned around and they're like, hey, don't well, fuck, we, we don't, don't do fucking that do no that more. here. Yeah. Okay. That was an extra point. Yeah. Did, does that happen in soccer often? Mm, I don't think so. Where, where Kane will miss a free not kick by Harry. this much? But there's a chance Harry Kane. We're talking about Harry Kane. I know Harry we're talking Kane. about Harry Kane. It was who, always who we're Harry. About? We're talking about Harry, Harry Kane. Kane. He's one yeah. of our own. Yeah. Let's, let's have a little bit of respect for Harry Kane. Absolutely. It's but Harry Kane. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not but, giving everybody, okay? I'm not giving everybody that has played soccer not, no. at a high level being like, yeah, but they can go to the sure. NFL. Which a lot of people do. A lot of people, oh, a professional soccer player would be able to get in the NFL. Nah, not like that. Harry Kane? Oh, Harry Kane. And he, mm. it's not like he just came out and said this. Strahan asked him about it, okay? Yeah, he said, I would love to give it a go. Mm -hmm. We'll give it a go. And also, he hasn't mentioned retirement, right? I mean, he's definitely playing in the next World Cup. Yes. Like, we are, like, this is, and who knows if once you've been playing soccer that long at, like, 37 or whatever, you want to go play football. Tony Miola mm. even told us about the boredom thing. Yeah. Tony Miola after, who should be the coach of the men's national team? He should. Sure. Right now. This guy's watching every soccer game that's happening around the entire globe at all times. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Can we call him? <laughs> can we call, can we yep. call Tony? Tony Miola. Cold calling line. Tony Miola. This is a part of our program. It's a good segment. I love this segment. I do love this segment. Tony Miola, former U.S. <laughs> men's national team goalkeeper, stud athlete, what, kicked for, in the NFL, I think, for like two weeks in preseason. Mm -hmm. Had great hair. Great yeah. hair. Did a backflip. Like the first MLS game, I think it was the first MLS game, they did like, uh, like a coin toss. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I think so. I mean, this was a long time ago. I believe he said, hey, you want to flip for it? And he did a backflip standing there. Mm -hmm. And then he said, oh, I'm going to toss a coin. Freak show athlete. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. His son now, I believe, professional baseball player. And still all the way into the soccer world. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, our soccer brain, Tony Miola. Yeah! How are you, Tony? What's up, fellas? Hey, Paisan, thank you for answering out of nowhere. Okay? This latest installment of... Tony Miola would know this answer. We do not know this answer. Thank you for uh -oh. answering. Harry Kane. Hey, Harry Kane has talked about <laughs> potentially going to kick in the NFL at some point in his life. Obviously, you did that as well. Do you believe that's something he could accomplish? And what was the thing that you hated <laughs> most about? I, I, I saw someone tweeted at me today and said, you better talk to Harry Kane. Here's my advice. Go stand on the sideline <laughs> of a game and then see if you have the guts to do it once you see those guys – banging each other around on the field. I didn't have that choice. I was dumb enough to go, yeah, I can do this right now. And um, yeah, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to reach out to him at some point and let him know what's up, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you don't think you don't, you're, you're saying, Hey, this is a lot different than you just, just kicking a ball is what you're saying. Like, I'm, yeah, I, no, the, 
the kicking the ball is no problem. It's the other 21 guys that are the problem on the field. I can tell you that. Man. You know that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. But I just assumed Harry Kane could figure it out. I assumed that you'd be able to figure it out as well. And I assume if you would have focused on it, you would have been able to. Massive leg, hit goal kicks a long way. But this is obviously a conversation that everybody just assumes that every professional soccer player could just be a kicker in the NFL. I think people that don't fully understand it. So I appreciate you saying what you're saying right now. I, I think all kickers oh, appreciate yeah. what you're saying right now. Yeah, look, it, it, uh, it, I, I know a lot of soccer players, and a lot of them can kick far, but not, not a lot of them are tough enough to do that. I'm going to have to have a word with Harry Kane. I guarantee you that. <laughs> okay, speaking of having a word with people, um, are you our head coach? Are you the head, Here we go. Are you the head coach? Something the, good. Are you one of them? I mean, the way it's going, I mean, eventually I'm going to get there, right? <laughs> okay. Just, just keep moving down the line. I, I don't know what's go- I don't. I don't know what to offer you here. I really don't have any idea what to offer you. What's going it, on with it, that? It, Do we have a coach or no coach right now? No, that, I have a real problem with the fact that we're we're the U.S. and we don't have a coach. What are we? Uh, five months out of the World Cup, six months out of the World Cup. I don't know what the hell they're waiting for. Um, they keep telling me about this blank canvas. Well. The, the canvas is still blank right now, as far as I can see. Yeah, somebody needs a Bob Ross this thing. Yeah. Tony has a question for you, Mr. Mueller. <laughs> yeah, if it's if it's not you, what about uh, Jesse Marsh? He's he coaches in the EPL. He's he's a U.S. He's a guy from the U.S. What that makes sense, right? Yeah, look, if that's your guy, go hire him. He's he's out of a job. Like, what are we waiting for? I I, I just don't get it. If that if you tell me that's the guy, perfect. I'm behind him. That matter of fact, I'm behind whoever they hire. <laughs> Hey, but, is this a like, thing? What are we doing here? This is a thing, huh? You're not happy about this. Have you told a lot no, of No, no, I, have, I haven't been happy for months about this, so you struck a chord, man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Holy hell, I want to make it better. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm playing on us winning this World Cup, Tony. Uh, Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Tony, is Methy coming over to Inter Milan <laughs> soon? Uh, word on the street is that Barcelona might be sending them over. Uh, Inter Miami, yeah. It, 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 word, word on the street <laughs> is that they're going to cut a deal that, you know, one of those – I'm going to make you a deal you can't refuse. Um, you know, part of the club, part of the Apple subscriptions to the television stuff. I mean, that's the word on the street right now. I'd love to see him in Miami because I think it would do great things. Uh, I, this is I real? Yeah. Meth, meth- yeah, no, meth- it's real. coming to it, America. It's real. He's going to play in the MLS? Yeah. No way. We're trying, man. They're they're doing everything. They may as well get in the league at this point, the way it's going. Yeah. They kind of did that with Beckham, didn't they? <laughs> didn't they do that with Beckham? I remember when Beckham signed his deal. It was like he's making $750,000 an hour for the next 20 years or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. I forget. Like, it was broken down yeah. as an MLS deal. It was insane. Insane. They are like, yeah, but he also got ownership. Wow. He got all these other things that kind of went into it. That's not a bad decision, especially with... Well, he had... Remember, Messi at the time had a deal of $25 million to have the market in Miami. If you think about the league, that was the most expensive piece of real estate left to buy. And now he's the owner there, so he's the guy that's going to bring Messi in. So he's got uh, he's got a chunk to give to him, that's for sure. Yeah. That's brilliant. And Methy is someone who could go and maybe kick for the Dolphins. <laughs> so Methy is an incredible ball striker. Yes, mm-hmm. that is somebody that could figure it out. It's all, it's all about the balls, right? Kicking the balls and mm-hmm. you know all that. Saving right? the balls, you yeah. know. Hey, you used to <laughs> <Yeah>. do that. <laughs> Huh? That's what you did. Hey, Coach, can't yeah. wait for you to win the World Cup. Let's get this man hired. Please. Let's right go. now. Guys. Do you See want – hey, if you – do you want that? Oh. Is that a job you want? Yes? No? Yeah, apparently I don't have to interview. They're just going to keep going one guy after another, and before you know it, the phone will ring. Okay. I'd love it, man. <laughs> Let's go. Here we oh. go. Ladies and gentlemen, future coach of the U.S. Men's right. National Team, Tony Mule. Yeah, yeah Tony. He's answered a cold call in his fucking basement. Yeah, he does that. He, he's, he's ready our... to kill someone. He's going to crack some skulls down there. <laughs> yeah. When you hear somebody who has the resume that he has with the U.S. men's national team, like, and then also the passion, that guy is fucking passionate. For sure. Yeah. And I ain't going anywhere. It doesn't sound like AJ. Who makes the decision? Who's doing the hiring? Who's the head of the U.S. soccer? I, uh, I tried to look into it. I don't know, man. I, can't remember. I, I came, it was Biden. I came up. <laughs> Yep. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he appoints him. Yeah. Chief of staff, chief yep. of staff, chief of staff, chief of staff. <laughs> U.S. Women's National Team's coach. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that how that's how it works. I'm alarmed though. I'm perturbed. Yeah, that's a massive yeah. bum- bummer. But talking to Tony, I mean Tony is like our soccer Joe Donardo. That's kind of how I look at him now. Yeah, and he just predicted on the Doppler, Methy coming to Miami. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. That's a big deal. Huge. Went, but it went well, how Barcelona far down the road? first, and then Miami. Yeah, Barcelona for six to eighteen months. It said on loan, so they can oh, circumvent man. their financial restrictions, and then he'd come to Miami after that. Oh, so yeah. they have to save their business. Pretty yes. much. Yes. 
So, so when you left, we collapsed. Need you to come back, save yeah. it, mm -hmm. and then we'll let you go yeah. down to Beckham's town. Yeah. Exactly. In Beckham, I think that deal was like $25 million to start, and now it's worth like $700 million. Good business. His well, son also on the team. Beckham's son. Really? Really? Yeah. He's on my, uh, Talented I'm player. David Beckham's the reason why I wanted to kick the ball harder than everybody else, because he had a World Cup when he was young, and he had uh, PK, I think, and they said like 90 miles an hour or something like that. I had 92, maybe. I forget what it was. And I was like, God damn, you can kick a ball that hard? <laughs> And then you start thinking about what would happen to a goalie if you were to kick a ball that hard. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I'm going to try to fucking kick a ball yeah. real, real hard. I broke a guy's arm one time with a soccer ball. No big deal. As a kid. Once to save it, boom, broke it. Mm -hmm. See Goal. ya. Bye. Everybody stops play. I go finish it, obviously, then take a knee. Yep. I felt terrible for the kid. Yeah, you need to need yeah. score. Need score. score. Make sure the job's done. Why does soccer do that? Why does soccer start? They start that young and they take a knee when somebody's hurt. I just do, I disagree with that. I was not great at it either. I mean, I got, they, I can certainly judge. I kicked the ball, broke a kid's arm, and then while everybody was taking, I was finishing the goal. Mm -hmm. People did not like me in there. Trying to win out here? Yeah, what? what the hell are we Who's that finish? little fucking asshole? <laughs> I believe we're saying. My mom had to do so many battles, I guess. I just sit him on the sideline. Yeah. Yeah, that's my kid. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. Fucking two nothing too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a goal for him. <laughs> the second one. Sorry about it. I love soccer growing up, man. Mm -hmm. Committed my whole life to it. It is. Did you sweet. watch it a lot? No, that's what I. <laughs> as I've gotten older, I've watched more soccer. Than, mm -hmm. There's a lot of times I'm like, man, I should have been watching this. I would have been maybe more invested or liked it more. Would've been, probably yeah. would have been a little <laughs> yeah. better too. Yeah. I think it was a big night at MLS tonight. Dude, that's what I'm talking about. They go to Apple, gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had a little bit, weren't they? Hey, weren't they a little bit? There, I guess this way. They were going like this a little bit after. You're never gonna, you're never gonna stumble upon it on Apple no. TV right now. Nah, and it feels like that's the, the clips. That's the problem. You gotta go find it. No clips either. I've yeah. not seen a lot of clips. They I'm might like, have a big night tonight though with the series finale of Ted Lasso. People getting the soccer bug after that pop over for the the late game in the MLS. Because the streaming True. is certainly the future. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody agrees with this. I actually said this while I spoke to a bunch of suits. Mm -hmm. Streaming, but when, you yeah. know? Like, MLS making this deal, they got a $250 million or what, three hundred fifty. I forget what the money I think was. 250 250 million yeah, maybe a, a good year. deal for them. Great, a lot of money. Yeah. Everybody was like, holy, yeah. holy shit, that's a lot of money, but at what cost long term? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I feel like it was gaining steam. And I guess Apple's buying in that when the World Cup comes back, everybody will be reinvested mm -hmm. and they'll come in over there. But I feel like the MLS was really starting to go and then all of a sudden, boom. And I'm not saying that we're at any scale of that, but I thought about that whenever, you know, I'm thinking about taking our place to a network because a lot of those streaming places were in the conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, yeah, definitely the future. Definitely the future. But currently, like, right would not now. be the right time not there yet. for us to just kind of eliminate potentially of people that could happen upon, which like YouTube does and oh, yeah. like that. I feel like digitally MLS was kind of going there. Are they playing right now? They yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, season, yeah. the season has already started. So the only highlights I've seen, and this is me being a stooge and I am an idiot and I understand like that, but follow some soccer people. So you think some of them will come into my life. Only see English, English Premier League. Exactly. Right? Oh, yeah. And the Pittsburgh Riverhounds beating MLS teams. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that I've seen in my thing. I, have, I didn't know they're all playing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you're whole, $250 million a year. Damn, I still got it. Yeah. And Apple is the place to be. Like, if you're the MLS, it's like, yeah, it's not here yet as far as, like, streaming age is officially, you know, the only thing people are doing right now. But Apple, it feels like, Man, has They should have kept legs. one game, I think. Yeah. They should have, yeah. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Like, one. Well, you know what I'm saying, AJ? Yeah. To, then you could push people to Apple TV through that game that's right. on a bigger platform that more people have. So I that just, one's on FS1. Top left. Okay. Oh, okay. So all, yeah. So one is on F. Bottom right, TSN. TSN. Top left. Oh, okay. Also on. Oh, it's on Apple TV and FS1. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. The, those other games that they're just not being played anywhere. No, they're. Oh, they're, they're all on Apple. I so. Okay, so just the free ones. You got to pay for the other ones. Okay, yeah. man. Maybe it's like just our fault. We're missing it. I, I just thought like, I thought they had good juice going. Well, and that might just because I'm. Is that a no, package or you got to pay per game? I think it's free if you. Subscribe to Apple TV. It is, yeah. It's a season pass. Yeah, but, but you're right because they have like the prominent header there on Apple TV when you open it, but you don't ever see clips online or anything like that. I haven't even seen like, – they don't even have like a little highlight package that you can watch on there. It's just – Normally I'd see Jose Martinez of the yes. Atlanta United. For sure. Doing so many cool things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I haven't seen any of it. No. Way. We need to be better at that. Well, FS1. We will be better. See you there. Are you going to watch? Except, did that say May 31st? I don't think it did. It did. It did? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be there then. Why don't you just pay attention? Okay. Well, I was, I was trying to see where the networks were. 
That's the only thing I that's what I was looking for. They need one game though in a prominent spot. When it was on ESPN, it was very it, it was just so easy to find. Very yeah. simple. That it was just like, okay, there's nothing else on, I'll put it on. But in the future, brilliant. Like how, but how many exactly. years is the future? The MLS yeah. Cup in Orlando whole, was great. Hey, isn't that a whole conversation? Yeah, Orlando. When, when it was in the bubble. Yeah, that was, that was it great. was fucking awesome. It was hilarious. Then the World Cup happened, right? It might have been Europe. Yeah, that got postponed a year. But Maybe yeah. the Europe's. Sorry, the Europe's. Yeah, Europe's, yeah, Europe's, Europe's yep. And then World Cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, it was like soccer was doing it. Well, oh, yeah, gaining steam. Well, we won the Concafa. Cutter yeah, really. Bingo. And MLS was the one, and we were getting yeah. methy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that Cutter really fucked it because normally it's on its own stage during the summer, but it was during this football season. But that, that, that final that rolled into that NFL Sunday was a great day. Electrifying that was so day. sweet. I forgot about how awesome that yeah. was. Yeah, and methy was still playing. All right, so soccer's doing it. Right. France, France defending okay. champs. Yeah. Let's hire Tony Miola. Let's go to the fence. Or Thierry Henry. Something or Thierry Henry, yeah. Yeah. Love Thierry Henry. He said he wanted it. So Tony Miola. That's right. Yeah. Well, Tony's pissed. I don't know if he can get over his anger. He, he, he seemed genuinely shoot mad. He's one of the oh, yeah. coolest looking I mean, soccer players of all time. Got to give an like a. You got to give him an interview at least, right? So I was asking him like, "Hey, is this a real thing? Like, you want to be?" And he, he, oh, he said, "Well, you got to get an interview." I guess. Oh, so he's like shoot pissed. He hasn't got interviewed yet. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, you don't even, you can't even take an hour to fucking hear me out on right. what I would be. I'm Tony fucking Mule. And that's probably the problem though, is because next time he goes in there for an interview, he's gonna grab some guy by the fucking tie and slam his head off a table and son of a give bitch. me the fucking job. Look how cool that guy is. Jeez. Jeez. Let's go. Oh, is that is that the captain's patch on his arm? Yeah, yeah. It, is. it is. Make him the coach. Yeah, captain's on his goalie jersey. Yeah. The strap around there. Let's go. That's actually for future coach. Boom. 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 They what caught it? it back then. Yeah. Every goalie in America tried to buy that thing. There was also a red and yellow one, I believe. Kind of looks like Furio from Sopranos. All right, let's go to the fence. Super Italian. Tony oh, Miola. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. With Chef Boyardee. He didn't even notice. He didn't even notice my horn. We have the same first two names. You do, don't you? Mm -hmm. Your middle name's Miola. Tony Giovanni. Tony. Anthony Michael. Oh. 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 Well, Paisanos have great names. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. If it would have been Giovanni, oh, oh my man. God. Anthony Giovanni. De Giulio. De Giulio. Yeah. Boy. This guy sitting in a cowboy hat. Mm -hmm. Is your dad going to Italy right now? He is. In, he's in Milan right now. <laughs> wow. What's he doing? Dude, he posted, he posted his. I can visit the family. He's really posted his flight track. Oh, and then, did he really? then he had his flex and his of course. Italian yeah. flag yeah. emoji afterwards. Mm -hmm. and I was like, is coach actually going right now or yeah. he's like dreaming he's going? Yeah, he's going to take two weeks in Italy, yeah. Coach, go enjoy yourself. Hell yeah. Give it up, Coach. Eat all the gabagool. All the gabagool. And fresh moots. And fresh moots. And also, try to work some things over there, you know? Yeah. Ah. Let's mm -hmm. get Tony an interview. Yeah. 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 Please. <laughs> or find someone over there, maybe. Let's go to Josh in Cleveland on the 5-Hour RNG phone line. Josh, what's going on, pal? How you doing, boys? Keep it moving, yeah. dude. Hell yeah. All right. Oh, congratulations on selling out. Thank I wish you. I could make the bat like that. Well, nobody it's knows what the bad is. Be the better, <laughs> probably gonna be the best thing on ESPN anyway. So let's oh, go. Very nice but, of you. There's a lot of good talent. Yeah. But uh, I gotta stand up for my boy Boston Connor. A couple weeks ago, we he made some valid points for a fraudulent fan out there, Mister Fairweather, Fairweather Weather fan, Glory Hound himself, the freaking fireman head. Whoa! Oh, you guys are get posted. You let him we can just let him take his licking from this so-called fireman, he, whatever. But he's, he's talking about it's hard being twenty-six a years. Man. See people, Harlem. Twenty-six years running, running towards fires. That's right. Not away from him, Josh. What team are you a fan well, of? Guess what? Try being a Browns fan for your whole life. Right. How many fires have been going on in that stadium my whole life, and watching great players just waste away their career there while we have. Fans throwing bottles at freaking refs and Joe Thomas, the greatest left tackle of all time, blocking for Jake DeLome and Brady oh, Quinn. My oh, so Jake DeLome. Oh, Brady Brady. Oh, Brady. Whoa. Whoa. Family Whoa. shots. Whoa. Whoa. This is a family program. Low blow. Jeez Louise, Josh. I'm not being disrespectful. It's just a fact. What, what did they do? And we were. It was so bad. Pat, let me tell you, fans were begging the Browns to trade Joe Thomas to the freaking Broncos just because we didn't want to see Joe walk out with that great Hall of Fame career without a ring. Yeah, All right? that's nice that's of you guys. That's like being a Browns fan. That's very nice of you, and dog, I got Bob. 
Oh, I mean, the dog pound is always going to go wild. They're I mean, we D-hop. saw Baker win us a freaking championship. You're telling I mean, me none of those dogs? Our hey, our championship. Josh, Josh, you're telling me none of those dogs in a dog pound took their masks off one or two Sundays because what was going on in Cleveland? Dude, what? Dude, we got excited for Johnny Manziel. Are you kidding me? Okay. We have a dude named Pumpkinhead, Pumpkinhead who goes to every single game dressed up like a Halloween character. Yeah. And we're, we're really selling out the Muni lap. We're getting drunk. Yeah. We're breaking tables. Well, we're, not right, doing, right. we're not all flashy like the Bills fans, but, like, they are always there showing up, Browns fans. No uh-huh. matter what. We put an elf in the freaking stadium. Yeah, we we're still that. showing up. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. So, uh, you you like MGK? You like you like MGK? He's from Cleveland. He's from the land. M- yeah. What about the Miss? I do like MGK. I like the rapper more than I like the pop star. But you know, no nice. disrespect. You know, artist. He's got to do his own thing. Yeah. A lot of us feel that way. Yeah. I saw MGK yeah, first on WorldStarHipHop.com. Like, he was freestyling in the front seat of a car. And it was fucking mm-hmm. unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Followed him on Twitter. Yeah, off the old block. I think he had like 10,000 followers at the time. Now he's just selling out arenas. Oh, like, completely different. Yeah. But he's he's from the land. I mean, yeah. Gotta make your bag. You know what I mean? He, he sold out. Whoa! Sell out. Come on. You know what I mean? Josh, bringing the heat. Jeez Louise, dude. Fireman Ed, taking a lot of shrapnel. He won me over on a call. Yeah. Yeah. I had a sure. lot of uh, Jets fans that I know say, hey, thank you for doing that. Yeah, but who are the Jets fans that you know? A bunch of them. Because when I went to college, there were a lot of Jets fans. Like we've talked about with Connecticut. There's Giants, there's Patriots, and there's the trashy Jets. And that, <laughs> that holds true on Long Island and in New Jersey and from, obviously, New York. Way to do on Long Island there. Of course. You really I, I would never cultured. Di- I would never, ever disrespect the Japan of America. AJ, what was... <laughs> well said. Okay. Is that what they call it? Yep. Basically. I did not know that. Okay. Because of the geog- the the because of the shape of the island, the and, geography, and because it's on the right side of the country, similar to how Japan's to the right of China. You know, I've been to Japan for yeah. a USO tour. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Our map of Japan looks different than Russia's map of Japan. I guess. Yeah. This is what I've been told. Yeah. Ah. There's an island up yonder that is, uh, you know, no yeah, well, and that one down yonder. Yeah. And yeah. our map of the world is different than you know other people's maps of the world as well. Yeah. Flat Earth. Oh, all right. It just okay. looks different people than the globe. I'm just saying. People, people who think Pangea still exists. What's that? What? There are people out there. What? Certain. How would that work? Don't people fly and just say, oh, there's water? Yeah. How would Flat Earth work? Well, they say. So you, hey, Tony, you should look into it. <laughs> Connor, that cannot be something you're on. I'm, yeah. not, I'm, not, I'm not in it. I'm just saying I watched a, a video thread. How long of your life? Of it, it, this probably, <laughs> How long of your life? Did it take for me to watch this whole thing? Yeah. An hour and a half. Uh, what are you doing? Hey, it's it's a guy. Me. It's a guy who doesn't believe it in the beginning. And then he walks you through everything. And then at the end, he's like, see, I fucking believe it now. It ruined my life. <laughs> but, Don't you understand? But have you seen the one where it's a flat earther who walks you through flat earth the entire time? And in the end, he doesn't believe in flat earth anymore. He I've hops, also seen that. He hops on a plane, flies to Japan. And in doing so, he flies up over Canada, I guess, because that's what the map tells me on the screen. Mm-hmm. So I just have to believe it. Mm-hmm. But also, uh, when you look out, it's like, oh, there is. There's a curvature there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing about people who stand, you know, when you stand on shore. Thank you. You should be able to see. The idea was quickly rejected by the scientific community, primarily because the actual forces generated by the rotation of the Earth were calculated to be insufficient to move continents is why Pangea is not. A- oh, like Pangea never happened. I, that's not how I took that. <laughs> you said the didn't you remember you said how they're we, still connected. Still you said they're still connected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That one's Let's go. It's easier to debunk. Yeah, yeah flatter is not as easy. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen. I, I seen a American bald eagle flying over my house last night. Oh, really? How beautiful was that? Dude, Did you salute. So sick. Fishing and smile. Oh. I, I stopped. How big? Took a hat off. Took the cap off. Yeah, yeah I took the cap <laughs> off, and <laughs> I just kind of looked at it. You know what I mean? I just. I think I did one of these. Yeah. The wife was right next to me. Baby was in a stroller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we just kind of stopped and just watched this thing. And it was certainly finding something to fucking kill. Yeah. Hell yeah. And the thing that it was uh, hunting, whether it was a fish or a tiny little creature, seemed to be a pretty good little match. Okay. Because 
That's on bitch right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was diving a couple times and then pulled off. I like that. Okay. And then came back up. Didn't want to waste it. And a couple other birds started coming with the fuckery. Uh. So then this bird, (laughs) the eagle, had to go with the fuck, handle business in the sky first. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then had to find what was on ground again. Watch it kind of, boom, bingo. And then Don, pick up fish, gone. Unbelievable performance. Yeah. It was like three minutes. Eagles are unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. They're so fucking big. How big yeah. was that one? That's yeah, what I was, was going to say. How big was it? Laurie, I, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen one flying around like that. Really, yeah. dude? It's crazy. It was the ah, spectacle. Was, the yeah. white head. As soon as you see like the white head start flying, it's like, all right. Oh, baby, cool. here we go. Here we go. They Jeez. are impressive. Are they the big bird in Avatar at the top? Mm, that's a good question. I thought those would be like pterodactyls. You ever seen Land Down Under? Pterodactyls aren't currently. What's it? You ever seen Land Down Under? Is that animated? Of course not. It's uh, yeah. it's with Will Will Ferrell. No. Oh, it's Land of the Lost. Excuse no, it was an animated. <laughs> it was an animated Close. film when we were younger. It might have been Disney. Land Disney. Before Time. Land Before Time. No, yeah. Land Down Under. <laughs> <laughs> like I come from a land down under. Anyways, it was about these birds, and they had like a oh, chart yeah. of birds because the, they had an airport for birds that used to land, and the albatross was the big one. Okay. Mm. Okay. I can look it up and see if Are the albatross still around? <laughs> yeah, they're around. Bro, because some of those eagles over there in those, like, Minnesota and, like, I think, right? Massive. Have, like, five, six-foot wingspans. Yeah, and mm. remember that one video of the guy played catch with one? Yeah. Yes. Oh, man, listen to Paradise City. Yeah. He showcased the fish to the sky. So mm-hmm. cool. And all of a sudden, this six-foot-tall fucking creature comes flying down, tosses it, <laughs> catches it, flies off. It's like... Out. This guy's playing catch with a fucking bald eagle. Yeah. I mean, what a time. They do that in Alaska, too. That's one of the best videos. I'm going to go find that video later. I remember that. What else? There's somebody else that threw a bird. There's one. Like that, deer. There's one. Did you see the one where a, a bald eagle or whatever big bird picked up this small-ish dog and carried it for a little while and then ended up dropping it? Couldn't couldn't get it. I heard it was fake, actually, but it looked pretty cool. No, I guess the bird, the dog thing's a real deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With some of those, some of those big Better birds. be a small dog. I mean, they're not picking Chuck up. No, no, there's no reason no to chance. body shit Chuck right no now. If there are seven, 15 no, eagles seven around. And seven to ten bald, bald eagles yeah. you know, came together and they all got a piece of Chuck. They could get them three feet off the ground. I had a nanny at the house last night. I do well. Thank you. I am spoiled. Mm-hmm. I got it. Yes. Okay. It was great. It was awesome. Wife and I got to sleep. Night, night, night nanny came by, saw Chuck, said, it, you know, she does Corgi pretty, pretty well. Mm hmm. So I had to ask, have you ever seen a corgi as large <laughs> as this particular? And she quickly said, absolutely not. Yeah. A little bit worried about old Chuck. Oh, she my said, God. Me, too. Chuck's heart's going to explode. Is that yeah. what Whoa. Whoa. And if it's not his heart. it's a pituitary gland. Yeah. What happens if all four <laughs> of his rule. legs break at once? Every once in a while, he'll, he'll crawl. be, he'll be standing there, and his right leg will just start going like this. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, bro, you're way too young. <laughs> yeah. You're way too young for Chuck this. You'll be feeling CBD, this old. Man. Huh? You need to go buy Chuck some dog CBD. I don't know about I honestly don't know what. I don't know what we need. some doggy Ozempic. Yeah, really I was just going to say, you yeah. got to start stabbing that thing with Ozempic. Gastric <laughs> bypass. What's that, pal? Gastric bypass for Chuck. That Chuck will eat right through it. He'll take a 27 piece of bacon sandwich <laughs> yep. and blow that. <laughs> Charlie Weiss. Jeez. That's what you should nick. That's his nickname. Jeez. Chuck. Jeez. Charlie Chuck Weiss. Weiss. That's who he's named <laughs> after. Yeah. Jeez, <laughs> Louise. Whoa. <laughs> Can dogs get lipo? We're yeah, oh, yeah sure we're, we got to take Chuck to the doctor, mostly because we got to get Val to the doctor mm-hmm. because um, Val jumps real high still, mm-hmm. and then she jumps off things real high still. Bad on the joints. Yeah, I think she bruised like her, her right hip or something mm-hmm. like that. Ooh. So they saying they got like those water treadmills. So we're gonna put Val in those water treadmills. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we got another dog. Yeah, definitely gonna need that. Just one. need a real treadmill. That if you could just, yeah. But what do you? How do you? How do you put a dog on a treadmill? I, I've tried this my, before. My dog used to run on a treadmill. My hot one hot dog family. on a German stick. Shepherd, right? Yeah, Belgian Malinois, but yeah, yeah. similar. Okay. Same thing. That, that thing's trying to run on a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> Getting Chuck to she run on a it. treadmill is hilariously uncomfortable. In those things, though, they kind of like box them in. It's like the just only feed option. Yeah. You are the you control the food. Just feed them less. We do. I don't know what's happening. Honestly, I have no idea how this is happening. It's be a thyroid situation. Yeah. Unless he's eating. I hear people else. talk about that a lot. How old is he? Three, four. Oh, man. Oh, my God. He's that young. Are you kidding me? 
Wait, when three, he's four. Been, he's been, ever since I've seen him, he's been gigantic. Oh, boy. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a thyroid. Yeah. Thyroid. Yeah. We got him. He was big, dude. He was big when he, we got in him. thighs and steroids, then it's thyroid. He's like the only corgi in the history of corgis that has like not been bought, pretty much. That's it. That's how we found him. Yeah. Like nobody will fucking buy this one. It's like <laughs> Was he that big then too? Yeah, when we got him, he was big. Like I thought these things were small. That big? He has grown. <laughs> but he yeah. was compared to which is good. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, Baby's but... getting big. Yeah, oh yeah. It happens quick. Yeah. She's yeah, getting very quick. She outgrew uh, a onesie yesterday. Mm -hmm. Could magnet grow. one? Uh zipper, zipper one. Oh. No mag magnet, the Thamel set. Very nice of them. But the zipper one, she couldn't, we couldn't get it over her shoulders. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, here we go. Yeah. We're surviving, we're thriving, we're growing. Yep. We're doing it all. Hell yeah. That's what it's all about. Parenting they get is better. All right, this is Angel's Is, is Chuck God, yeah, eight feet, feet closer oh, to the camera? Or? He only what? three. So, so the what? dog on the left there is a, pit, read again? Is a pit bull Sharpe. Mm -hmm. That's a pit bull <laughs> Sharpe dog. This is Photoshop? That's Valerie. <laughs> I fucking love her. She's beat cancer four times. She is the reason why Further Brand is a charity that pays for other people to give their dogs cancer treatments. Because when we found out how expensive her treatment was, we thought to ourselves, ain't hey, nobody can fucking afford this. What are we even talking about? So now, you know, she is the face of hopefully helping a lot of dogs and has our help. And she's the fucking best. And I love her. And uh, she's the first dog that I've actually... And then next to her there, that corgi... That's Chuck. Big Chuck. Chucky Weiss. That's, that's Photoshop. It might be angles. Yeah, he might be a little closer to camera. He's out angling uh, Valerie Ooh. for sure. But he's the largest corgi who's ever existed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to get Chuck, like, some of the extra skin Val has? Because that's what it feels like Chuck might need. So that would be the Sharpay in Val, the, uh -huh. uh, the wrinkles in the skin there. Chuck, we don't know what's going to happen with Chuck. I, I, well, Chuck's I, legs. Is that, that a is that a fupa right there? <laughs> I, think we can, I think we can guess what's going to happen to chest. Chuck. He's got a big barrel of Heart chest. disease. He's Heart like disease. disease. What are you Diabetes. Him? What are you feeding him? He that's just right. eats food. I mean, what do you... Uh, he <laughs> eats dog food. Yeah, Everything. he eats food, but that's why he's closer to the camera because there's three donuts behind him. He's about to bounce <laughs> on them all. Chuck does not love donuts, but... He will certainly eat anything that ends up on the ground. You yeah. don't say. Yep, yep. He's doing great. Have you checked? You know, the neighbors could be throwing like 44 ounce T bone steaks just in the <laughs> front yeah. yard that they're not finishing. And Chuck might I be. I haven't even thought of that. Yeah, it's possible. What if he is getting ghost fed? He it could. has to be. <laughs> yep. Wow. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's po certainly possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to add some cameras so, to some trees. Can we, have a, mm -hmm. can we get some contrast, though? Like, can you pick, pull up another picture of maybe, say, another corgi that's not Chuck just to see what others may oh, look like? Boy. So that's the thing. Like, I have i don't think I've seen many corgis in real life, only on with the queen or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't – the videos I've seen, they look – they must be puppies. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Got to be. No, no, no. no. All, of, all of them. two different Everyone. dogs. <laughs> all of them. Let's go to the friends. Chuck's living. I mean, only seen life. six yeah. month old corgis when I look them up. Never seen anything older than six months. Well, that's like the Kentucky Derby, bro. You know what I mean? That's right. Uh, that, yeah. See, yeah. that's Ooh. a puppy. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a corgi. That, that that's, thing. That's what a corgi that would, would disappear like. under Chuck. Three, four uh, months old. That corgi yeah. right there. That, that's Chuck's <laughs> love. Chuck looked like that one time. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, Chuck's a good-looking dog though in the face, especially Chuck. Chuck, Chuck got a rock that that he's a pretty dog. Yeah. Could you imagine if he didn't eat ho hos for the first three <laughs> years of his life? Dude, he's he yeah. is a massive asshole too. Like, <laughs> oh, why? Incredible personality because they're herding dogs, right? They're that like yeah. uh, corgis um, are actual, nah, mm -hmm. aren't that they? Chuck, Chuck is okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> so got the DNA. Chuck, yeah, no. yeah I mean, it's in the DNA. Yeah, the yeah. thought of being a herding dog is definitely there for Chuck. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. So well, like, in herds theory, I'd love to herd these. Herds a bunch of cold cuts there. into his fucking. Humans stomach. will try to walk through. He does. <laughs> yeah, he does. Jersey Mike's. Uh -huh. <laughs> he we feed him dog food. <laughs> okay. Meatball sub. To be honest, I'm very. Every time I look at him, I get real confused on how he got to this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what have I missed? Apparently a lot. And he has not missed anything. No. But the whole, um, we need a, a Zempic. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Dog, dog Zempic. 
<laughs> that's a puppy. That's These a, are all puppies. That's corgi. I think he's got a full tail, too. Who knows if it's even a corgi? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Feed it like two less Twinkies. He'll lose 20 pounds in a Stop week. Stop eating the keto bread, bro. No, he doesn't eat the keto bread. This guy, we actually got specialty fucking dinners for this guy. Well, yeah, you have to. I mean, when your dog is <laughs> when your dog you is Brendan Fraser off. from the whale, you know, yeah, there's a chance, there's a chance you to feed it some different things. Dude, he's handsome. Chuck is handsome. Yes, he absolutely. He's handsome. It, great dog. He too. doesn't get tired either. He's still able to run. Mm -hmm. He runs a lot. He well, runs. are you fibbing? Really? I, I don't think that. Dude, he'll eat. run. He'll run. We got a hill in our front yard. Mm -hmm. He goes up and down that thing. Mo Legit. Because I'm always like, he's going to die. He's running up that mm -hmm. hill. He's going to die. He'll go all the way up. And then he sprints downhill. Think about that. Think about that. Can he stop Can he stop at the bottom? Yeah. And his legs don't just like give. Every time he starts running, I'm like, well, this is going to be it. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be it. One of these days, he's going to start rolling. He's turning to Sonic the Hedgehog and take out fucking your house. He, there's a chance that he does get. Mm -hmm. but he, uh, he'll lay on his back, too. <laughs> Watching him get, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Back to his. On all fours. Yeah. Oh yep. man, it's a task. He's doing like a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I pictured. He's going. He's going to live a long life, though. He's just fine. Well, okay. I mean, in dog years, absolutely. Hey, Twenty-eight. Right. Let's go to the fact. Yeah, or twenty-one. 21. We don't know. We'll get we'll to know. at least thirty in dog years. For sure. Hopefully, about eighteen months out. Chuck's too stubborn to die. <laughs> uh, Twenty-two and thirty. How many pounds do you think Chuck weighs? 245 plates. <laughs> Most corgis will weigh between 22 and 30 pounds. A full grown corgi is low to the ground and sturdy with a long body and fox like appearance. Look how fat that one is right there. When measuring from yeah. the floor to the highest part I'm of the shoulder, down. a corgi should stand around 10 to 12 inches. See, he's taller than that, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that might be all the excess. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Let's go to the fronts. Let's go to Matt in South Dakota. Hey, everybody needs to stop body shaming Chuck. I love Chuck, but sometimes you need to body shame. To make a change. It was awesome. <laughs> Sam posted a photo of like uh like our family or something like that. Mm -hmm. Dogs in there. I think this was before baby came. Uh, I don't remember. Before baby. She posted it and all the comments were like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sam said, he, he's gonna be real rude, Chuck. I'm like, well, don't let Chuck read it. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yep. You know, he might change his entire the way he goes about doing yeah, things. He might. That fucker does need to learn. He's tough though to teach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Love Chuck. Want the best for him. He'll do whatever yeah, he wants, do. whenever yep. he wants. Oh, of course. He's a, yeah, he's a corgi. He's best like. He's he's a everyone wants a comeback. 55 bro. pounds. It'd be cool to see Chuck drop 60 pounds. See yeah. him feeling good again. Feeling good again? What do you mean? He feels, feels good great. right now. He's jumping he up on He thinks he does. I mean, he thinks he does, but his joints have to just be absolute agony at all times. I agree, yeah. I mm -hmm. think we're getting that stage here quickly because he is still able to jump. Like, he, can, he gets up on the... He's... I'm not saying it. What? Don't say it. Pat. Yeah, you definitely you won't. Go ahead. So you know when Zion did that dunk? Oh, yeah. When uh -huh. he put in the, the, the bit dent the wood, in the floor. Yeah. Yep. And then he did the thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so the other day, Chuck did this jump. And it was like really, he like turned sideways when he landed. And I was like, holy shit. Earthquake? I thought like the amount of explosion these little legs have to have <laughs> is so impressive mm -hmm. to get that much ass up on the thing. Mm. And I immediately thought of when Zion, yep. like I checked our floor. I was like, Did Chuck's going to be all right. Almost knocked right. the couch over, right? Left a crater in the ground or what? Yeah. All right. He's going to get better. He's going to be fine. Yeah. Charlie Weiss did. It's hard. Did everybody call Andre the giant fat or just understand <laughs> that he potentially had something? Char Charlie Weiss, he, uh, what an eating champion. Oh, yeah. my God. They said he did not care. Hey, dude, got to stop. He's like, how? <laughs> you know how good this tastes and as somebody who loves to eat have you ever been hungry before yeah. <laughs> as somebody who loves to eat i love that he just literally sat in the pocket yep it was like no now everybody in, on earth including him knows not good for you not healthy for you no he just did not give a fuck no i call these plays and i eat these bacon sandwiches <laughs> okay this is what i do yeah keep them coming don't worry about it did not care at all that weight is a real thing that AJ, you don't have to deal with it, huh? You just have to do you, you. No, you do. I mean, if I didn't do anything, if I didn't work out, and I, well, yeah, I would definitely have to deal with it. 
Yeah, I think the ability, though, just to say I'm not eating anything good ever in my life right. is a tough one. For yeah. me, it's a very difficult one. It's a talent. It's, it's more diet than anything, right? I mean, if you're it's eating bo- boiled chicken and, and white rice, like you're going to be fine. You don't really need to work out that much. But if you don't work out and you're also eating fucking burgers and pizza and Jersey Mike's what? seven days a week, you're, like, you're going to be in a bad spot. There's some people, though, who, who can yeah, eat like, like me. Genetics yeah. are great. Bro, pack the shit he brings, the packs oh, yeah. of shit he the brings. The nerds yeah. clusters. He just eats candy yeah. and Hardee's. I would be 400 pounds <laughs> if I had the Pac-Man Jones diet. Yeah. At one point in my life, I did have it. I did. That's what I ate. I ate everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess I was so active and mm-hmm. also metabolism rate when I was younger and everything like that. That just died off. If I was to do what he would do, my neck would get this big. My body would. It's phenomenal. I hope you enjoy it. I, yeah. You know what I mean? It does feel like you do, too. Yeah. It does feel like you enjoy it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Like that good. Hardee's every morning. Oh, my oh. God. It looks so good. So Smells good. so good. With jam. Yeah, it puts jam on a bacon biscuit. Yep. Yep. Oh. Bacon and cheese. Oh. Yeah. No egg. What flavor, jam? No egg. Grape jelly. Yeah. Oh. oh. Is it uh, not jam? Grape jam. Grape jam. So oh, is it jam? jam. That's jam. Yeah. It is that was jam. a Shakira jam. It was grape in Shakira's fridge, too. Well, was it? So I heard. Who's she dating? Hemi Butler? Trademark. Pending? Yeah, yeah, maybe she's kind of playing the market right now. I believe now. it's uh, TC. Sir, Lewis Hamilton. Sir, uh, Sir Lewis Hamilton. Really? <laughs> Owner of the Broncos. They did say she was sweet on Jimmy Butler though, because she was at one of the last Heat games and she was giving him eyes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> was, Jimmy, was was Hemi giving her eyes? I don't see why not. Hemi's so locked in. He is. Yeah. What if they? How old is Shakira? Hmm. Sorry, not that old. She's forty. She's forty, right? Elite or forty or, or higher? I thought she was like She's 50. been around for like 25 well, years. Yeah, I thought she was 51. She's a public figure, I think. Yeah, 45. Okay. 46 years old. Oh, okay. okay. Great. 46. She took over, huh? And then she just went international. She yeah. like took over America. Oh, yeah. I was like, all right, that's been fun. Did it. Mm-hmm. And then just kind of go back international. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then she was married to that soccer player for a long time. Gerard Piquet. Oh, yeah. And it was the job. It was, it was always the job. the job. And it was his floozy who ate the job. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. In their house. Right. Sweet. Their Come kitchen, on. their fridge, his floozy, her, her jam. jam. Mm-hmm. And he hates that jam. That's how she knew. Okay. Who ate the jam? <laughs> I know you didn't. <laughs> should have replaced it. Well, she, he didn't know. He shouldn't have cheated on Shakira. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. AJ. He was, he was in the it. shower, and she had to go downstairs for a snack after a rompous night. And she said, oh, I love jam. Uh, knocking boots for hours. So, of course, <laughs> she had some jam. <laughs> for hours. Sewer. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Think about how, like, he was probably scared to death that Shakira was going to find out. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. He had that house cleaned six times. Yep. Spotless. Need yeah. everything out of here. Can never know about the job. Everything out of here. He opens that fridge, grabs a drink, doesn't even think about the fridge. Nope. Why would he? Shuts that thing. Yeah, need to clean this area, please. She comes back home. He's, babe, pluck hey. him back. So confident, I see. Mm-hmm. Hola, honey. She says, oh, hey, good to see you. Miss you. <laughs> Grabs a biscuit. Mm-hmm. Puts it, oh, I've been waiting for this. Opens up their fridge. The Grabs the job. Opens the job. Oh. There's no job. <laughs> <laughs> and it was at that moment. Yeah. Yep. PK knew. Yeah, he said, the job, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> She's just eating it with her fingers. <laughs> Not yep. the jam. Well, oh, she eats so much jam. What's that, AJ? We don't know for sure. And when you were talking, I started to think, like, that can't be exactly, like, let's say, what if she wasn't eating the jam directly out of the jar? What if there were some mushroom stamps in the jar of jam that right. she was <laughs> servicing off of him? I thought the same. <laughs> There's a chance. There's no way that he, knowing how much she likes the jam. Yeah, yeah. not a chance. Well, you say he was dick he scooping? Was mad. He was uh, upset at her. He was upset, so he just dipped that sucker on in there, and she loved the like jump. And I think, real and, quick, um, and jump? I don't know. Damn. Honestly, damn. we don't need. To, we're learning too much about AJ already. But the uh, oh, I don't do that. But I don't judge anyone who does. I'm just saying. No, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Possible, you're saying. We're just no saying, judgment for me. Just you know, be a good partner. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Saves the world. Makes life yeah. a lot easier. Right. Buy some Smuckers. Don't use her job. Buy Smuckers. <laughs> That's smart. The squeeze. The, the squeezable. Squeezable is a lot easier. That's a crazy <laughs> thing that that is. Think about PK. Is that it's his name? Public. Yeah. yeah. That public? Gerard, that's How did it get public? Gerard. How did that get public? Well, they're, they're, oh, because Shakira's people were probably like, mm-hmm. yeah, we don't give a fuck if the reason's public. Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry. You, you, you guys, you don't want us to. Well, 
You want us to settle this privately? Oh, okay. okay, cool. Yeah, we'll let one little thing out. Mm -hmm. All my job was missing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no job. <laughs> He's allergic to my job. We'll throw your bone. We'll throw your bone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the fence. Let's go to Robert in Florida. What's up, Bob? Hey, how we doing? Keep, Keep moving. moving. What part of Florida? First time caller. Nice. That's a town. All right. So, yeah, I had a couple of questions and then a comment. Um, first off, Pac-Man, my dog. I got my, my, my dog Bubba wears a 24 chain because of you, bro. Oh, this um, is anyhow, I wanted to ask y'all. dog, couple dogs. All dogs. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask y'all, like, who would you take to settle a, settle a, um, a debate between me and a friend of mine, Love DJ it. Moore or Jalen Waddle? And then uh, Boston Connor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me say this first though, because I know y'all got to keep it moving. But uh, take your time. Take your time. Uh, got to keep it moving. Take your Boston time. Connor, my dog. I know all your teams eat ass, oh. but nothing wrong. I with wanted. That. I I'm gonna miss hearing y'all talk about like chemtrails and vaccines, bashing them and uh, government birds and all that. Yeah, and that's can we real. get? Why is that? Get an, Why do you miss that, Robert? Huh? Why do you miss that? Because it's all facts, and y'all can't say that on ESPN. We can't. But um, I didn't know that. What huh? was that? What the fuck, bro? How many times? What is the deal? How is this even? How's this even happen? Robert. Robert. Bob, Bob. 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 If things come into our orbit, who would we be not to address them? Mm -hmm. Now we will be doing so in a manner as if we have no fucking idea what it is, <laughs> as opposed to hey, this should be your opinion. It's a little bit of a different situation. Yeah. But I cannot reiterate this enough. How are they just going to re-code my brain, which is the one? Now, granted, there are people, every single show, every single thing we talk about, Zito and others, yep. feed me things to say, and then I just say them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the <laughs> yep. show. Always has been. Every time you see me on a microphone, on any program that I've ever been on, the draft, SmackDown, what? NXT, what? Game Day, what? this show every single day, Literally, there's somebody telling me everything to say all the time, okay? So now we are changing who that person is, I guess, and it will actually be Mickey Mouse himself yep. mm -hmm. that'll have the cool. codes and the control mm -hmm. of everything that comes into my mouth. Yep. So I understand why everybody oh. is scared of everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Makes sense. That in, like in, that. in or out of your mouth? Which well, it's, you gonna, to... it's gonna come into my mouth from back here and then it's certainly going to go out. It's going to yeah. be a double-sided. Mm -hmm. Spit it out. Ooh. It's going to be a double-sided situation. Yeah. Anyways. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. You know, I don't, I don't know how you're going to completely recode how my brain operates or how a show goes that has no real direction wherever it starts. It's just, say, hey, we're just talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is what the show is. That is why the show happened. That is why the show is getting brought to ESPN and licensed to ESPN. So I don't know why everybody just says all these types of things, but I don't want to address it all the time. But if somebody's going to call in the show and say to my fucking face that it's going to happen, it's like, right. okay, this human well, actually believes this. This human. Don't you think it, they just assume because they have never really heard that kind of stuff on ESPN that how, how could we do it? Is yeah, that what right. they think? You're right. And I understand that this is like the first for a long time. I guess first forever that has ever happened with yeah. them. I don't know. But, like, they're, they're entrusting us a lot. Mm -hmm. But I feel that there's a way to do entertaining sports conversation. Absolutely. And you can just kind of just go. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. And that's what we'll continue to do until we can't do it anymore. And when we can't do it anymore, boys will do it. I'll just disappear to an island. <laughs> I'll be an island boy. boy. But the, island boy. But it won't be like that. Yeah, you know I mean? It won't, it won't, it won't no, be no, like no, what no. everybody says. No chance. You know what I mean, AJ? You know what I'm saying? AJ you know, does know. But he said that's not them. You know that. Well, it wouldn't be me either. But I'm just saying, like, <laughs> that is, I, I am, a, I, I don't like that that happens, you know? Like, I don't enjoy that that is the immediate thought. Because it's still happening. People are saying that. It's like, can we have a little bit of faith, please? That I wouldn't just say, yeah, this is what I'm going to sign up for, especially in the situation that our company has been in. You know, a lot of people call me a seller. It's like, yeah, we've been making a lot of money over here for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a business. Like, everybody here makes money, good money. It is, we are very lucky that this is what we do for a living. And everybody's like, sell out, sell us out. It's like, we're almost broke a few years ago, like completely broken. And then now we have money. We've had it though. Like call us a sell out mm -hmm. like a long time. So I don't fully comprehend any of the things that are being said. But once again, when we get on there and the things, 
the other side's going to kill us. Yeah, but that's okay because that's just people who would never like us. And, yeah, yeah, and dark and like what we're doing on there. Mm-hmm. No, they are not going to like that. Connor believes that birds are fake, mm-hmm. <laughs> but they're going to have they're going to have to understand though. That that human exists out there. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That that hu- you need to know that that human exists out yeah. there. They're gonna have exactly. to look into it. And, and there's then... nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. We will bury the human, mm-hmm. just like we always have. Yep. I had somebody tell me like, "Oh, you won't talk about this because you sort out." It's like there's shit that we've not talked about forever. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a good one. You know what I mean? Like there's stuff that we have not talked about for forever. Like we would have never talked about that in our show's history. Yeah, but now that you're associated with, it's like first of all, not there yet. Okay, still here, Mm -hmm. still our own operation, but this will be how it'll be. But like, I just, I don't fully comprehend what people think will change about what we cover, how we cover. Because if you look at any of the shit we covered, it's like, why, who's going to hate us? Our demo is everybody. So like, we've been live every day for like four years. We haven't been just completely kicked off the internet, canceled. See, and they do that to people. Oh yeah. That happens on the internet a lot. It's like, YouTube's never been taken down, and everybody's YouTube has been taken down at some point, I feel like. Bingo. It's like, what What do people think our show is, first of all, <laughs> that don't know our show? They're like, oh, you're not going to be able to do any of that on ESPN. It's like, we're going to say shit on there, damn, ass. Mm-hmm. We're going to sl- I offered up to limit the fucks. Right. Just strictly because don't need that to be the reason why people will say, oh, that's why I don't want to watch it. Yeah. yeah. Because there's some idiots that have that. It's like, so fucks will still slip by, might get beeped. Everything else is wide open. It's like, what else do we do that is potentially can't do that on ESP? I don't under, I feel like everything. I started the Bob and Tom show. So the Bob and Tom show's demographic was like, I'd say like 30 to like 70 or whatever, you know? So I've always like tried to think like, hey, let's, I swear, sorry, sue me. Yeah, That's sorry. Always have. But like what we're covering, what we're talking about, like very rarely are people going to be incredibly furious at us that's not allowed to be talked about it's like that's not how we are i don't think that seems to be a big misconception about what's going on yeah it makes no sense i mean i suppose get your licks in now while you still can while you know nothing has happened on espn yet that's probably the mindset of a lot of people but you know again time will tell history will tell so and it could but we could be absolutely terrible like yep it could be like they are not happy with the receipt the what they're receiving from the other side yeah, for sure. Right? right. Like they're, that, the other side. Hey, too much blowback. Yeah, they, they them taking it on the shins, you know, for mm-hmm. for what we've done. Because it's going to be vastly different than what is normally. Like you said, there's enough precedent out there that if they are going into this not knowing what they're getting, then, like, that's, that's kind of on you. And it's Jimmy like, has been, Jimmy Pitaro, though, and Burke both have been like, we're ready for it. Yeah, yeah they we, know. We, yeah. Hey, they're excited about it. I'm very excited. They've done their homework. Yeah. The more we learn about it, the more we learn about it, the more we realize what we're going to be able to accomplish and do there and everything like that, let alone what other shows could potentially look like in the future and what yep. other shows have already started to look like. And TV. You know, and TV as a whole, it's like there's a lot of shit we could potentially do here. So I don't like – like I didn't like – that guy was so matter-of-fact right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but you can't comprehend it because they don't know what they're talking about. So it's like listening to something where you have no information about it. It's basically what I do, where you have no information about it, but you just talk about it as if you do. See, and that's something. We are adding a segment to the show. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Smart. Which we, we thought this would be a smart decision. When does that start? When's that segment start? What, what's the segment? So, you know, PTI, mm-hmm. how uh, Tony Rioli, I believe, yep. was the mistakes. Stat boy. Stat boy. Yep. Of the day, anything got wrong, boom. We're going to have a corrections officer mm-hmm. that's going to come in at the end of uh, the f- second hour. As Fact checker? As we're gonna, he's get corrections from the show, yeah. So things we might have got wrong. Who's that gonna be? Bruce, and it is gonna be contentious mm-hmm. every single day. Yep. And he's go, he's going to a corrections facility. Yeah. And FaceTiming in from the for, from the corrections <laughs> office yeah. of the corrections facility. Yep. He is the corrections <laughs> officer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it is oh. gonna be contentious, I believe, because there's gonna be a lot of things that he's gonna say opinion based. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're gonna have to go. We don't need that corrections. Yeah, pipe down, CEO. <laughs> when does that start? When we go to ESPN, because. Yeah. Because there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be, this is something we got to take into account. There's going to be a lot of, um, like we say, somebody through. We like, about like for instance, yesterday I said Jason Tatum is 6'9", 250 pounds. It's like there's going to be people very passionate, like 209. No, he's not. Go. 209. Like they're going to be very mad at him. <laughs> yeah. Like, so like, it's like, the, like somebody weighs in at 240 pounds or something. Like, or somebody throws for 240 yards. 
And we go, he threw for fucking 250. 250 yeah. yeah. Ran for another 45 when he actually ran. He's fucking good. For 35, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. there's going to be people that are very pissed off about that if we don't do the same type of thing for their player's person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's when a corrections officer could come in and kind of get us in line. Mm-hmm. And it will always be us killing the messenger as opposed to the people that were like, Upset about ten yards, yes. right, or five yards being off. So, exactly. So, corrections officer Bruce is going to take it on shins a lot. Is what we're what mm-hmm. we're thinking. What about things like so? Today, I, w- I kept saying the name of a movie. I was wrong. I've been I've been told I was wrong. It was the Lamb Before Time. No, it was Rescuers Down. Ah, oh. sure. Rescuers. Down so, right. boom. Good will news. That, will that be part of the corrections facility? What's that? That I was wrong on a movie. I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe that would certainly be. Oh, that's going to be a long segment if we start getting into everything. Fuck yeah. the list. They're going to have everything I say on there, bro. Probably, yeah. <laughs> That'd be good, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be good, though, because then we'll be able to get ahead of, like, the Saints people all just kind of. Yeah. Yep. yeah, you can answer it before Fuck. it even. Like a USA Today article came exactly. out yeah. about yeah. you being wrong yeah. yep. about the Saints. <laughs> we can get ahead of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, mm-hmm. We can, you know what I mean, we'll Chop that down and sneeze. I guess. A USA Today article about who being wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was associated with USA Today. We don't really know what the USA Today is anymore and what is a blogger that potentially works for the sure. USA Today who's also el- elsewhere or who wrote a blog for some company and then it became a USA Today article. Right. And is that just a blog or is that an actual article? What? And what is the USA Today? Hmm. So that is a whole description of it. But certainly usatoday.com slash something. Right. I think article about Pac-Man being completely wrong about the defense for the Saints. hmm it was awesome. Good. It was one of his first times on the show. I loved it. Yeah. It's going to happen. Thanks for the pub. Tell him thanks for the pub. Great. No, I love And information. We learned a lot. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, secondary down there in New Orleans, not that bad. That whole yeah. defense actually really yeah. Yeah. They're not that t- t- Top 10 and everything. Oh, you're standing by it, huh? You corrections officer came through in a form of USA Today. You said, ah. One more phone call here on the 500 phone line. There's going to be a lot of that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the corrections officer is going to. Hey, good luck out there, Bruce. Hope yeah, you good good. Bruce. Hell yeah. Hope you got body armor underneath that thing. Yeah, yeah, Disney yeah I did, am a little worried about Disney that. Disney did ask for this particular role. Yep. You know, so technically Bruce <laughs> is a Disney mole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. This Plan. was not our idea. Is he going to dress as a cop? This was not our idea 100%. No, no absolutely no, no. not. This was not our thought nope. of something that we could add to the program. Directly from mm-hmm. Mickey Mouse. Directly to my mm-hmm. ear, mm-hmm. to Connor's brain over to Connor, and then Connor said, we need like a stat boy or something. Mm-hmm. So that's how it, Mickey Mouse to me, mm-hmm. to Connor, yep. to the air, to Bruce. Mm-hmm. So he is technically Disney made this segment and is hiring Bruce. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's right. So remember that whenever Bruce is talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always, fucking Mickey Mouse. Yeah, he's he's always, sharpen that always baton, been Bruce. Suit. Good luck, Bruce. Yeah, je- cheering for you, Bruce, Son of a buddy. Bitch. Any from today? Did you do any research on today? Uh, the one that I did find is that, uh, you know, celebrating the Vikings paying back that tax, but it was at, or the interest, but it was actually the taxpayers who paid it back what? by purchasing and losing pull tabs at the Vikings. I mean, that's game. not. So that's business. No. So, that's business. so it's from the Vikings, Bruce. So you, do you know what? if it was just Ooh. Minnesotans that were buying the pull tabs? Yeah. Good question. Visiting teams, I'm sure, as well. Electronic pull Humans. tabs. Humans. Created the money Damn it. that Minnesota this is gonna uses be business. Yep. Bruce, you need to sharpen your badge. Tough start, I Bruce. Know, pal. Polish it up yep. a little bit. Maybe get off the elephant or the donkey. I can't remember which one it is. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, <laughs> try to try to get better thoughts more. One was me. Uh, Beckham's son <laughs> is actually on loan to Brentford, so he's not Jeez. on Inter Oh, oh correcting oh, yourself. Geez. Hey, I like that. So I like that accountability. Yeah. Yeah. Probably going to be a lot of that. I might say the most wrong stuff. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I barely, no. Don't worry, Bruce. Get in that. No, 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 I just only speak when I'm wrong. No, no, Bruce, Bruce. You're the corrections officer. Yeah. 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 You're always right. Actually, not a bad bid. Or not a not a bad bit. Yeah. Having the corrections officer be more wrong than everyone. <laughs> yeah. Right? Kind of puts us as a baby face. We look smarter. Mm-hmm. Than the, but the whole, the Minnesotans paid back the money through the business of the Minnesota Vikings. Like, the Minnesota Vikings are supposed to make money to pay back that loan, not from people. Yeah, where do they get it? Well, it's just like a lottery. <laughs> like a lottery. <laughs> like, oh, the, we could yeah, give you a not- tax break because you guys lost so much on the lottery. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, oh. gotcha. Well, they Vikings- didn't add a tax, though. They didn't add an extra tax to all the taxpayers that don't care they about offered the Vikings. sweet service. Yeah, the Green Bay Packers fans, too, they're known to buy all those pool tabs. That's right. And the Colts fans, right? They're out there? Yeah, they were. Have you ever been to a Colts bar that has pool tabs? 
Uh, they, they are littered across so the fun. everywhere. Are those scratch offs like pull tabs? No, pull no, tabs are different than scratch offs. I just learned to pull tabs too out here in Indianapolis. They fucking love them out here. They're awesome. You, they make so much money off these things. You're literally just pulling tabs. At the gas station, though, same spot you get scratch offs no. at the gas station or what? No. Restaurants, bars. Yeah, bars. What oh. are the tabs, though? What you winning? Uh, money. Anything from yeah. 5 to $500. They're like this big, and you pull them. How much are they? How much you pay? Yeah, 10, like a dollar 15, a tab. Dollar. Yeah, sometimes. throw in twenty bucks. Yeah, those, get 20. I can see how those are fun. And then it has a dollar amount on them if you win. Bro, people are stacking them like crab legs at an all-you-can-eat crab, like thing. Yeah, oh, you, yeah. Get, you get you a bucket. You get to cash them in though. You get and like a bucket. Cash them or they lose them. Yeah, but True. I mean, I've seen people walk out like real winners. Oh yeah. And they're the worst, you know, because the next time they're chasing a dragon. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's like I don't know if you're gonna hit it two times in a row. Yeah, no. But maybe next time. Then next time, guess what we're doing. We're chasing that dragon again. Exactly. There it is. And they'll get you. They'll get there you. you. They don't have a two dollar one though. They pull, go. Pull tab bars are uh, very, I think, very prolific business. Yeah. So the Minnesota Vikings doing that to earn that money back quickly should be something that all these stadiums think about doing. You would yes. think. Hundred percent. It's kind of fun too. To... Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah you can burn through them because you can rip off. Do they have fifty fifty too? Probably right. Definitely. I love fifty fifty. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm sure they pay probably some of that money. You ever win one? A fifty fifty? Yeah. No. You got to give it back if you win it. Probably, no, you yeah. don't. Says who? No, Probably. you do not. I've never won. Have I've you ever won one? I've never won. Nope. Man, I've always bought one. I've always. But I've always been like, well, if I win, I gotta. No, you do not take it all. Yeah, as they're announcing the winning number, there's almost a little anxiety. Like, so best case scenario here, I win. Then everybody sees that I win. Oh, I'm asshole if I don't. I gotta donate this. If you're at a charity golf tournament, sure you give like half back or whatever. But if you're at an NFL football game, nobody has a fucking clue that you won. You I buy a sleeve. I, I buy an arm length all, every time. Every time. Every time. <laughs> I'm never gonna win it. No, I no. kind of realized that last one of the last home games we went to. I was like, you know what? I'm just getting slicker right here. What the hell am I doing? A lot of people in there. We need to just do one of them. Yeah. For the entire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Sure. Or you buy, you know, five, and then you wait ten minutes. You go find the lady or the guy who's selling them, and by that time they've sold a bunch. So now you're at a different section of the of the lottery or the raffle, if yeah. you will. This is like the birds thing and the flat earth thing. Mm. What no, we're you need runners everywhere. What we're saying yeah, is that's this what, is, is a fugaze. Yeah. Uh, we're never going you're to not going to win. They pull a number that nobody has. No, somebody's winning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you're one in. What seventy thousand at least? Oh yeah, uh -huh. and the person who's spending a thousand bucks or a hundred bucks, five hundred bucks, they're never winning. It's the person who's spending five bucks and just getting one of them, and they're it's just their lucky day. I'll say this: we win the one, we're giving away all of it. Okay, and we're gonna win nice. it. So we, we all, all of us. Yep, you're giving away your part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear? Him? He said he's got runners. To go meet up with these fucking mm -hmm. people, yeah. these sales people yep. in different sections. Yeah, you get so he sections. gets a, he gets a ticket from the suite section. Yep. He gets a ticket from around. 105. Mm -hmm. He gets a ticket from 207. Yep. Boom. 315 on the other side. Exactly. Right. He's got every single gas station covered in this uh, mega millions operation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Smart. Smart. Put You're everyone win. at the time of a clock. Hey, if you win, you don't have to give away because you put in real effort. You earned it. Exactly. I beat the game. Hell yeah. Sorry. Don't blame me. What happens when you lose 10 straight games here? Yeah. You, 11 is going to be a winner. Nice. Right. Good attitude. Did you think like that? Yeah. And now Jim Irsay is now the owner of the Luke Soul Stadium. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And yep. that's him. And thank you to Connor. Yeah. Yep. No problem. Indianapolis citizen. Yep. Still right. paying taxes on that stadium. Fucking Bruce. Uh, actually, the. So it's basically like if you. <laughs> 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 so they paid it off, just a correction, but it wasn't like their money. <laughs> they got it. It was at one point, I guess. I did, but I before it, that, it was somebody else's money. Yeah. And Same. then they did, uh, they did business. Mm -hmm. so like, is there a difference if they use like money from people buying hoodies, like Viking hoodies? <laughs> <laughs> that is real, though. That's a good question. I think material that would be fungible there, right? That would be yeah. a, a fungible asset that they paid for. Some of those uh, pull tab people walked out of there. Oh. Losers. Yep. A lot of Most losers of yeah. in the pull tabs. Got to build the allure. Mm -hmm. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Big thanks to Alex Rodriguez and Joseph Newgarden. I didn't like how that went with uh, Robert. There. Yeah. Tony Miola. Tony Miola was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How about... What with Ro Robert? Bob from what Florida. Bob from Florida. Oh, oh, the caller. My bad. Gotcha. Yeah, just like, hey, sorry you're not going to be able to talk about it. How? How are we not going to talk Says about who? Are we just about... Oh! Ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let's do it. Okay. A re reset. Okay. <laughs> so we're doing. We're all doing ayahuasca. This would be sweet. We should actually do this. Getting a cool. full mental reset. Yes. So we can just blank canvas this thing, like Tony <laughs> Mueller said. The U.S. Men's National Team is. Yep. Whenever we're going on ESPN. Mm -hmm. I'm down. That's a hundred percent why they would pay us for our show. Yep. Yeah. Strip it down to nothing. Yeah. Change the mental. Open it up completely to what we can make it, mm -hmm. and then boom, you're off and running. Let yes. us mold you like clay. Let's go. <laughs> Sweet. We just got to go to the jungle, right? You know, where, where are we going? Somewhere. Are we going to do this for the first uh, episode on ESPN when it goes uh, over there? We're, we're before. Gonna Alaska. before. We're going to be properly emptied <laughs> mm -hmm. before we get onto the air. And then whatever comes up on the ticker, we read. First yeah. day, we're clones. Bingo. Bang. I believe we can go to Puerto Rico as well. They're doing There's a lot of places. Oh, that was good. Good to, I thought go to was a garage Peru. in LA. That was you can go anywhere now. What's that? <laughs> go to a garage in LA and have some dude with a ponytail give it to you. That happens. <laughs> they oh, have yeah. doctor's offices. We learned about ayahuasca. Uh huh. Oh, you want to trust those? Is yeah. this just DMT or ayahuasca? Controlled. Ketamine. Ketamine. A uh, doctor's office do that. Controlled ceremony. I've seen this ketamine thing pop up in my. Uh, in some of my Scary. scrolls, what is it? What is ketamine? What is this? It, it's like ketamine. I forget what it is. It's like a horse, horse, not a tranquilizer, it, whatever it is. In, People do it to get over like depression and different things. I know. Mm -hmm. Really? Holy shit! Oh, I, I looked oh, yeah, into. Doctors uh, it. I certainly looked into what Chuck was talking about. Yeah. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Manjabo. Let's have a great fall. Yeah. <laughs> we should look into what Jeremy Piven was. If it works the way Chuck says it works, like yeah, it just works. Manjaro. Hell not? yeah. Why not? I just took the shot. I'm down. Once a week. What's it doing? He starts laughing in the face of us. No idea. I have no clue. I'm just losing it. Tell me, just do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get down 270. I'm going to stop doing it. <laughs> and then I'll just balance it out. Yeah. Sweet. Start gaining again. Guess what I'm doing? Shot right back in. Yep. What every human's going Because don't we have an obesity issue? Are you talking about your corgi? Is this your corgi, Chuck? All right. Charles Barkley, you fucking Jeez. asshole. You don't always got to 270. Fuck. I thought 270 was too heavy for him. I didn't think he was that heavy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, All right. Jay. You son of a bitch. I am so disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> there will be none of that on ESPN. No, 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 no way. No, no, no. Body shame. I'm, getting out. I'm getting out now. Yeah. Body shame and Chuck is not going to fly on ESPN. Mm -mm. Barkley no. or the dog. Definitely not Barkley. We would never do that. No, never. <laughs> too strong, too strong. Oh, oh, oh. Bonus ball, bonus ball. That would have been crazy. Um, oh. That one looked good. It right felt there. good, too. Yeah. Oh. Bonus ball. This last one, AJ. Wrong ball. Go you on. got it. It's in. It's in. Nah, fuck. Oh. oh. This guy robbed. sucks, dude. Maybe tomorrow. Got a big show tomorrow. Big show tomorrow. Show tomorrow. Big show tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Actually, shoot, big show tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. You got to. Some great Ooh. people. Ooh, Bill, Walton, Bill Walton tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I was going to be on today, but needed a change of time. The time that he wanted to come on or could come on, Alex Rodriguez is on. Mm -hmm. So we said, we're so sorry. They said tomorrow's even better. Okay. Let's go. All works out. Is his son still coaching? Is Luke still coaching somewhere? He was Ooh. with the Lakers, right, at some point? Yeah. Yeah. Then the Kings, he was as well. I don't know if he's the head coach right now. I don't think he is. All right. Maybe he's up for another job. Speaking of jobs, Nick Nurse, Philadelphia. Congrats. Yep. Congrats. Hey. Hey. Good basketball. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. See you guys tomorrow. Massive show. Wish I would have been able to hit something to win you guys some merch. I've been doing too much working out. You know what yeah, I mean? Of course. Been it's hard to shoot when you do that, when you jack up so yeah. much weight. Way harder. Legit, dude. I've been trying to become properly jocked for this upcoming fall. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. You look good. If we can get that, thank you. It means a lot. If we can get that thing that just I don't eat, yeah. I think, is what it does. Yeah, Easy work. game. What shoes are those? Ah, I got them on Amazon. I think they're the Griffey. They? they are sweet. Are those the Scotty Pippins? From back in the day? I don't think so. I think I used there. to call them the Scotty Pippins. I don't know what they are. Mm. They're just sweet. I believe that Trader did wear those. Who? Scotty did wear those, that Trader. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he came he was, out. He was talking to his. Uh, he Good does. thing I got Jordan socks on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on yeah. top. Hey. Uh, got him. Uh, uh, got him. I actually, Scotty Pippen was really cool to us. He was. Yeah, he's very nice guy. Very yeah. nice guy. Very nice guy. We got to drink a little if bit. If I ever see him, I'm going to smack him right in the mouth. Best Bud Light I ever had. He did, he say, did say that. that. Mm -hmm. And we shotgun a beer together. Yep. He, um, I don't know why we're doing it. Just doesn't feel like, but he must have a reason. Yeah. yeah he's, yeah. well, I think it's, well, 
It's probably uh, Jordan's his, son. Because his son is uh -huh. he's piping his ex-wife. <laughs> no, well, that's no. actually exactly what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like Scotty Pippen's doing okay too. Yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Still, Scottie's, I'd say still got a, just fine. Yeah. yeah, still has to hurt a little. Scotty's yeah. doing oh, great. Over in the locker room. Mm -hmm. That was that, that rim really moved. That one was the best one. Yeah, that. We're not gonna have one. I thought that one was it. Scotty's over it. He knew what he signed up for. Oh yeah. Aq said it was yeah. Griffey's. Griffey's, right? Yeah. Thank you, Alan. Oh, okay, yeah. They were trying to put me in Scotty Pippins. Yeah. No offense, Scotty. <laughs> Ken Griffey's are much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a fucking asshole you are. But Mitt said they're the Pippins, so. Oh, jeez. Oh, he is a sneakerhead, dog. <laughs> so it might be one and the same. Yep. Maybe they collabed. There it is. Hey! Oh, oh, rim geez. unkind. Okay, like now I'm reading it. Ah, fucking AJ Pippins. <laughs> but then AQ <laughs> said with the Griffey Nike patch on him. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the the Nike, the, Nike. the swoosh oh, it's the a inside. combo. Yeah, the inside is just the Marcus Jordans yeah. now. Bro, these are so cool. Yeah, that'd be the only shoes I like. To see. So what are these? Are these are both of them. Yeah, yeah. Scotty, yeah. Scotty Griffey Jr. Yeah, yeah, but Ken kind of stole them. Yeah, Ken, Ken made it better. Ken kind of tagged them. Yeah, Ken has yeah. his own. Ken, you know sweet what? You, some, I've seen people wear the Griffies in there. Don't you have a pair of the Griffies? Problem. I don't know the name of any of these things. <laughs> yeah, me I just know. Yeah. They look cool. Yeah. I'm like, oh, those, are cool. those shoes look cool. Yeah. I'll take those. And I'll get some people tweeting me, bro, sick, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. like, Thank you. Sure. I love them too. You know it. Yeah. I have, shout out to David Mulligetta. He got me some of the uh, Travis Scotts. Mm -hmm. Those are sweet. And the Herb Street family. Oh. Got me the all black Travis hey. Scotts as well. Here we okay. go. Big, big thanks to both of them. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Herbies. I'm a I've always had shoes. I don't think I've ever thrown away a pair of shoes. Like I just have so many shoes. Really? So many. Pairs. I'm in the middle, I of just, a, middle of a move. So I did. I went through quite a bit. It, it hurts, but sometimes you got to do it. That's some good times in a lot of those shoes. Yeah, I wear shoes for one to two years. Well, throw them out, get a new pair. When I yeah, you dress like an asshole. For like, exactly. <laughs> and I wear a tank top for three years. years. Exactly. What's I, like, I, I looked at pairs and I was like, I haven't worn you for like three years. So I got to. Yeah. I got time. That would be a tough decision for me. Yeah. You wear those slides every single day. So you, yeah. Yeah, they're cool, though. You got them for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to wear. Yeah. I, I use the shoes that are that I have. I don't. I don't have any Just, shoes that go unused. I know. I think they look sweet, and you look cool in them. We all appreciate. With it. that being said, the the the, the, <laughs> the slides were for outside shoes. To yeah. Like Thunderdome shoes in mm -hmm. locker. Just hey, here you go. Got some six slides for you to wear. Yeah. So you don't have to track in all the shit from outside mm -hmm. to get in the locker to put your shoes, whatever shoes you want to wear. Yes. And you say, you know what? These are my Thunderdome shoes. Yeah, Thunderdome shoes are Hawkeye shoes. That that's where I use my Thunder. My oh, I Thunderdome got you. Shoes. So in the dojo, you got those. Yeah, and why would I get another pair of shoes? Hawkeye is pumping. Sink it. The Hawkeye is active. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Hey, yeah. we got a we got a fit fam over here, dude. Yeah. It was packed. Is Bill this still is Bill still bounding around in there? Yeah, he's no, back. Yeah. Remember, he almost got his face caved in, and then he yep. came back and uh, mm -hmm. squat three hundred pounds. Got some lifting yeah. gloves, and I mean, nope. pe people gather around to watch Bill yeah. do his squats this morning. Was the bar bending? Oh, yeah. No, not yet. Nobody wants to be a fat fuck on torrential TV. Do you ever wipe that thing down, Bill? Torrential? torrential? Is it torrential raining? Torrential TV. Torrential? It's coming down. Torrential TV. What, what's the word? It's raining down every mm -hmm. airport, mm -hmm. restaurant. Yeah, you got it. Terrestrial. He's got a digs. What is it? Oh, oh Thank you, Correctional Officer Bruce. C-O-B. <laughs> Corn on the cob back there. <laughs> everybody, everybody relax. Yeah. Nobody freak out. Is this what I think it is? Pitbull, Ricky Martin, and Enrique Iglesias are doing a trilogy tour. Yes. Okay? Are Come you on! I don't know how many tickets this is going to sell, but I assume all of them. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Holy Dale! shit. Yeah. Zito was very urgent in my ear about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot wait to see the turnout. How is... uh? Everything, uh, that was a lie, yeah. With yeah. Ricky and Enrique, was what, it all? What did I don't remember what they, they do. Ricky's was a lie, yeah. Ricky's was not real, okay. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. living la vida loca. Top of life, obviously, Pitbull's the headliner here, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm you, thinking they put him on the far right for a wrong reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this might be a triple headline, to be honest. Yeah, I was going to say three-headed right. lead liner. Yeah. <laughs> I like how Pitbull was kind of snarling because he put him on the right side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just had a shot of fireball. What's his bullshit? Fireball. <laughs> da, 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 da. I'm happy Ricky's wasn't. That's good yeah. news. Yeah. yeah, that was a crazy story. Yeah, because Cup of Life is my go-to karaoke song if mm -hmm. I'm going to be forced into karaoke. -ing. You're Don't like karaoke. -ing. Don't want to karaoke. But if in a setting where every human is karaoke, -ing, Cup of Life is the song. Good one. To karaoke. Don't have to actually sing. Just have to do a little bit of energy. Yep. And then you win the night. Here we go. Everybody loves singing. Every drunk person loves singing. Oh, yeah. It's great. Total Eclipse of the Heart's a good one. Yeah. Old school. Yeah, you got a real sing, though, for that, don't you? Mm -hmm. Well, you can just throw in a bunch of fucks like that guy does, and then. What about the ping pong people song? Love Enrique. It. What song is that? Oh, it was to do. You it. Give it a shot. Give it a well, shot. Oh, wait. For us. We got nothing but time. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it feels like? Here we go. Do it. Do the ping pong. Loving no. someone. No one? Sounds yeah, amazing. No. No. I have no idea. Do you know what it... Yeah, that's it. Pat, do you know this? No, no, no. Thank you, Pat. Madonna like a prayer. Do you know what it feels yeah, like? One. There you, go. you guys got to actually sing Great these song. things, yeah. the I just didn't know one. the lyrics. Man. You Any, know Enrique, uh, Wrecker? Oh, yeah. Really? Okay. Enrique, Enrique was a dog. What's the other one? He has the other one that's like, Don't stop, baby. Don't stop, baby. <laughs> Uh, you keep no, on no, something no, you love. I'm not going to move my truck. <laughs> yeah, I yep. can be your hero, baby. No, oh, that's yeah, a band. That's a no. yeah. all right, all right, I like that. Yep. I know that one you were just singing, Fox. Baby, yeah, I, just, I like it. Yeah, it's the way you move, move on the floor. Oh, yeah, I like yeah. it. That's Enrique? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's like the rhythm take, take you over by the wall. That's Enrique? Yeah. Yeah. Holy wow. shit, that's why he's in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yep. no. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Wow. What's this at? Chicago? Mm -hmm. I have, yeah. yeah, hold the phone. Whoa, Tour. that's not that Everyone. far. See at Soldier Field. Jeez. I don't know if that's gonna be enough seats. True. No. It's already sold out. It's already sold out, they said. Hey Jay, let's find some what? tickets for Sea Geek. Yeah. We got yeah, we go to Sea Geek. You're right. They'll tell us they'll you give us green, red, all of that. We'll give away two tickets. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> yep. The way I'm all reading right, this article, it might be sold out already. T trilogy. What? Ah, shit. Well, hey, maybe we we we'll, have we'll give away two tickets to the trilogy tour. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> bonus ball, bonus ball. Fuck. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a little bit more information. Okay. The trilogy tour is coming to 19 different cities. Oh, oh my baby. God. Here we go. Hey, it'll be a night. November 1st is Chicago. Is there any other United States cities? Gotta, Indianapolis. gotta be doing Miami. Oh, okay. Have to do Miami. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Indianapolis. Yeah, but there was a conversation sure. happening about United States cities. I believe this is probably gonna be international if I had to guess. Wow, okay. Uh, we will give you two tickets to one of the shows in the United States. Oh, here we go. With airfare. What? Mm hmm. And hotel. Wow. wow. Damn. Wow. And two hundred and fifty dollars to spend on pool tabs right. in the stadium <laughs> or booze. All I gotta do is make a shot into that hoop right there. They'll be in DC, they'll be in Boston, New what? York, New York, Chicago, Detroit, Orlando, Miami, yeah. Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Las Vegas, Phoenix, LA, San Jose, Seattle, and then they're up there in Vancouver. This tour is gonna be electrified. Yeah. Hell yeah. Gumpy gets to go. Hell yeah, Gumpy will be nice. there. You get to go alongside Gumpy. Mm -hmm. If you choose the Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Right. Ah. I thought that was it. Wasn't meant to be. We'll try again tomorrow, though, because that tour's too good to be. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. you're right. Dude, imagine that ball goes in. We send two people. Can I oh. enter? Can I win if you make the shot tomorrow? Yeah. I'm entering. All you had to do is repeat. Uh... I'm entering for sure. Herbo, can you talk to the phone call? <laughs> Nice pass. That Herbie. chest pass? Yeah. Are you kidding me, Herbo? <laughs> <laughs> nice chest pass. Is that the first time you've ever thrown a chest pass? Good, in he your had me life? right in a boom. That what are you was, talking about? That was not a good pass, and you know it, okay? What? We gotta, great. We got to keep, we gotta keep this here? kid on his toes. All right. Yeah, well, Herbie. Great pass, wasn't it, AJ? We saw yeah, him shoot awesome the other here. day. Basketball is not his sport. No. Well, his jumper not. He works the paint, though. He works. He the does paint. work the paint, but we're going to be needing to do a couple chest pass drills after the show. That was a good pass. He got it to me. Didn't hit a camera. Shout out to you, Herbo. <laughs> bonus ball, bonus ball, bonus ball. Uh, we will potentially be giving away. Yep. 
two tickets to the trilogy tour mm -hmm. to a show of your choice. Oh. Airfare for both people, hotel, and $250 spending. For Enrique Iglesias, Why? Pitbull, Why? and Ricky Martin. Why? A tour that is guaranteed to melt your face off. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Oh, wasn't meant to be. Sorry, nobody's was going. Not, no. Tickets aren't going to be available anyways. No. no, no. <laughs> all right, we'll be back tomorrow. Big time Thursday. Can't thank you all enough for allowing us to do this for a living. You're the best humans on earth. We're in the middle of a... A little bit of a sports news de uh, uh, desert. Big mm -hmm. time. But tomorrow there's going to be a big old piece of water. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. That's a little oasis. Yeah, we are. We're going to happen upon some mm -hmm. water. There's going to be big time stories tomorrow. There's going to be big time conversation. And sport tips off one of its finals tomorrow evening. Let's go. So there'll be a lot to talk about. We can't thank you enough for allowing us to do this. Be a friend. Tell a friend something nice. Might change their day. Goodbye.